You may have clicked here to find something important. It may be a maintenance thing. It may be an emergency thing. Here's the things I think are the most important and where to find them in this video. I always promise to keep you guys updated on the most important and newest Fisker Ocean things that appear in my eye line. And thanks to a viewer, I've been introduced to the owner's manual. Let's introduce ourselves to it right now. I'm going to read the manual for you. If at any time there is a hyperlink in the manual referencing another location, I'll put the timestamp for that location beside of it. So no matter what device you're watching with, you should be able to navigate the manual very easily. And I'm going to go through the entire owner's manual front to back with chapters. So if you want to skip ahead or look for something specific, feel free to do so. A message from Fisker. Congratulations. Welcome to your place in EV history. Thanks for choosing the Fisker Ocean and joining our vision of a clean future for all. Our guiding philosophy of combining design, sustainability, and innovation inspires every decision we make here at Fisker. You have made the choice to go all electric. Purchasing an electric vehicle shouldn't mean you need to give up your desire for a beautiful vehicle. We have designed the Fisker Ocean so that it's lines, curves, and proportions evoke an unforgettable feeling and an emotional response. This manual guides you through getting to know your Fisker Ocean. We've designed the ocean to be exciting to drive, easy to maintain, and convenient to service. Our mission is to create the world's most sustainable vehicles. We design zero emission EVs sourced from responsible suppliers and use upcycled materials. Every day we are reimagining the way you move. We use advanced and upgradable technologies to make eco-friendly driving more engaging, more connected, and more fun. Welcome to your all-electric future with the new Fisker Ocean. We can't wait Wait to see you out on the road. Using this guide, locating and referencing information. This guide contains a great deal of information you need to know about your Fisker Ocean. We advise you familiarize yourself with the vehicle before driving. For your safety, follow the instructions and warnings contained in this guide. Ignoring them could result in damage to the vehicle or personal injury to you or others. Vehicle damage caused by failure to follow these instructions is not covered by the Fisker Ocean warranty. References to the left or right side of the vehicle assume you are seated in the vehicle facing forward. This owner's guide applies to all 2023 model year Fisker Ocean vehicles and is updated regularly to reflect current updates to your vehicle. However, in some cases, recently released features including software updates, may not be described in this guide. The latest version of the owner's guide is accessible via the Fisker app and on the Fisker website with up-to-date information. See direct access owner's information. Illustrations. Illustrations are provided for the purposes of locating components or features described in the accompanying text. Dependent on vehicle specification, software version, region of purchase, and specific settings, your vehicle may appear slightly different. However, the essential information that the illustrations are showing is correct. Correct. Errors or inaccuracies. All specifications and descriptions are known to be accurate at the time of publishing. However, because continuous improvements is a goal at Fisker, we reserve the right to make any changes at any time without notice and without obligation. Symbols Glossary. For important information, the following symbols used within this guide call your attention to specific types of information. The red triangle with an exclamation point is a warning. It indicates either an instruction which must be followed precisely or information that should be considered with great care in order to avoid the possibility of personal injury or injury to others. Caution, which is the yellow triangle with an exclamation point, indicates either an instruction which must be followed precisely or information that should be considered with great care in order to to avoid the possibility of damage to your vehicle. Environmental, that's your green three arrows in a triangle. This symbol identifies instructions that should be observed in order to avoid unnecessary damage to the environment. Trademarks. Fisker, Fisker Ocean, and the Fisker logo are registered trademarks of Fisker Inc. All other trademarks contained in this guide are the property of their respective owners and their use herein does not imply sponsorship or endorsement of their products or services. The unauthorized use of any trademark displayed in this guide or on the vehicle is strictly prohibited. Let's move down to information about this vehicle. First, we've got driving advice. Utility vehicles handle differently than other types of vehicles and are designed to be operated on multiple road surfaces as well as off-road. These vehicles have a higher ground clearance and hence a higher center of gravity, which has been associated with an increased risk of a vehicle rollover. Utility vehicles are not designed to corner at the same speeds as passenger cars. Utility vehicles have a significantly higher rollover rate than other types of vehicles to reduce the risk of serious injury or death from a rollover or other collision 
and you must, avoid sharp turns and abrupt maneuvers, drive at safe speeds for the conditions, keep tires properly inflated, never overload or improperly load your vehicle, and make sure every passenger is properly restrained. In a rollover incident, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to die than a person wearing a seatbelt. All occupants must wear seatbelts, and children and infants must use appropriate child restraints to minimize the risk of injury or ejection. Quality control. You may have noticed a few miles and kilometers on the odometer when you took delivery of your vehicle. This is a result of the comprehensive process used to ensure the quality of your vehicle. This process includes extensive inspections during and after production. The final pre-delivery inspection includes a road test conducted by a trained Fisker technician. Vehicle modifications. Fisker does not recommend installing unauthorized parts and accessories or performing unauthorized vehicle modifications. Doing so can negatively affect your vehicle's performance and the safety of its occupants. The warranty will not cover any damage caused by using or installing unauthorized parts or accessories or performing unauthorized modifications. Warning, Fisker disclaims all liability for death, injury, or damage that occurs as the result of using or installing unauthorized parts or accessories or making unauthorized modifications. If you have a disability which may require modification to the vehicle, please contact Fisker via the Fisker app before any modifications are made. Body repairs. If your vehicle is damaged in a collision, it is important to make sure your vehicle is repaired at a Fisker certified collision center using only Fisker Genuine Parts. Electric Vehicle Precautions. Warning, your Fisker Ocean is a 100% electric vehicle utilizing high voltage DC and AC systems as well as a 12 volt system. Both the DC and AC high voltage systems are potentially very dangerous and can cause personal injury, severe burns, electric shock, and even fatal injury unless appropriate precautions are taken. Labels containing this warning symbol are affixed to a number of the high voltage components found on your vehicle to alert you to any possible risks. Always observe and obey the instructions on labels attached to components on the vehicle. They are there for your safety. Warning! Do not touch or attempt to remove or replace any high voltage parts wiring identified by the orange outer sleeving or connectors. If the vehicle is involved in a collision, do not touch any high voltage wiring or the components connected to the wiring. If a vehicle fire occurs, evacuate the vehicle immediately and contact the emergency services only if safe to do so. Try to extinguish the fire with a Class D powder type fire extinguisher. Contact emergency services immediately if you notice leaks from or damage to the lithium ion battery. Lithium ion fluids are dangerous and potentially toxic. Avoid contact with any battery leaks or fluids. If the battery fluid contacts skin or eyes, immediately wash it off thoroughly with water and seek immediate medical attention. The vehicle contains a sealed lithium ion high voltage battery. If the lithium ion battery is destroyed, disposed of improperly, there is a risk of severe burns and electrical shock that may result in serious injury or death, and there is also a risk of environmental damage. Exterior Overview 1 is tires and wheels, 2 is exterior lights, 3 is charge port door, 4 is camera, 5 is exterior door handle, 6 is lift gate, 7 recovery eye attachment point, 8 is the hood, 9 is exterior side mirrors. Interior overview, lift gate release, power windows, exterior mirror controls, interior door handle, exterior lights, parking brake, left control stock, washers, turn signals and high beams, driver camera, steering wheel, left controls. I've also got an infotainment video that goes over the entire infotainment system. For the Fisker Ocean. If you want to see more on this part, you can check out that video in the description. Instrument panel, horn, steering wheel, right controls, gear selector, central touchscreen, button bar, and passenger taco tray. Let's move on to the overhead console overview. Emergency call, that's Europe only. Hazard warning lights, rear overhead light switch, reading light switch, front overhead light switch, power lift gate window, open sky, California mode, Fisker account, settings and preferences for vehicle profiles are saved to the associated Fisker account for future use. Vehicle Profiles. A guest profile comes pre-configured on the vehicle and is associated with the key fob supplied with the vehicle. Under the currently active profile, you can save preferences for seat position, steering wheel position, and exterior mirror position. The ability to save additional preferences will become available with future updates. 
Additional profiles can be created via the vehicle's central touchscreen or by using the Fisker mobile app with a registered Fisker account. Your profile can be accessed by selecting Profile on the central touchscreen when the vehicle is in park. Creating a profile. To add a profile on a vehicle, the key fob must be present in the vehicle and the vehicle must be in park. Using the central touchscreen, select the Settings wheel, Profile. Touch the Edit button alongside Profile. Touch the Start button on the Add Your Profile screen. Use the Fisker app to scan the QR code displayed on the central touchscreen. If the Fisker app is not installed on the phone, scan the QR code with the phone's native camera app to be directed to the Fisker app download. The vehicle downloads and connects your Fisker account to the vehicle. A notification displays to confirm that your profile has been added to the vehicle. Deleting a profile. To delete the profile from the vehicle, a key fob must be detected in the vehicle and the vehicle must be in park. Using the central touchscreen, select the settings wheel, profile. Touch the delete icon on the profile to be deleted. The guest profile cannot be deleted. Touch the yes button to confirm you wish to delete the profile. Settings and preferences for a profile save to the associated Fisker account for future use. Touch the yes button to complete deletion of the profile. Let's move on to opening and closing. Here's your keyless entry system. Let's look at the fob. Using the fob. Warning. The keyless entry system uses low-frequency radio transmissions that might interfere with implanted medical devices. To avoid any possibility of interference, keep such medical devices away from transmitters. Warning! To avoid accidental operation of the vehicle systems by other occupants, do not leave a key fob in an unattended vehicle. To ensure your vehicle is left in a secure state, remove all key fobs from the vehicle before leaving it unattended. Key fob range. The key fob communicates with receivers in the vehicle via Bluetooth, low energy, and low frequency radio communication. While it is not necessary to point your key fob at the vehicle, it must be within operating range to work. The key fob operating range may vary depending on environmental factors, other nearby radio transmitters, example amateur or CB radios, radio or television stations or airports, may interfere with communications between the key fob and the vehicle. Therefore, the ranges listed in this information are approximate. In cases of interference, it may be necessary to move closer to the vehicle than usual to operate the key fob. The key fob can be operated manually Annually, once it is detected within 164 feet or closer, all doors automatically unlock and door handles extend if a key fob is detected within 7 feet. When leaving your vehicle, all doors automatically lock after all key fobs leave the 20-foot radius. Opening and closing windows with the key fob only works at a distance of 20 feet or less from the vehicle. Key fob operation. Upon coming within 164 feet 50 meters or closer to the vehicle, the key fob should be within range. Once within range, the key fob operates as follows. If equipped with California mode, press and hold for two seconds to open all power windows. Press once to unlock all doors. Press and hold to open all four door windows. Press once to lock all doors. Press and hold to close all four door windows windows. Press and hold to fully open or close the lift gate window. Press and hold to open the lift gate. Key fob troubleshooting. If the key fob does not respond when pressed, try operating the key fob as closely to your vehicle as possible. Other radio equipment operating in a similar frequency may interfere with the signals from your key fob, or the key fob battery may need to be replaced. If you are still unable to unlock your vehicle with the key fob, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Replacing the key fob battery. Warning! The key fobs supplied with your vehicle contain a coin button type battery. These batteries contain toxic and corrosive substances. Batteries are a chemical burn hazard and should never be ingested. If a battery is swallowed, it can cause serious internal burns and may even lead to death. Keep new and used batteries out of the reach of children. If you think batteries have been swallowed or placed inside any part of the vehicle, seek immediate medical attention. Warning, if the cover for the key fob will not close securely, stop using the key fob and keep it out of reach of children. Contact Fisk via the Fisker app for a replacement key fob. Warning, there is a risk of explosion if an incorrect battery is installed. Only install a battery which is identical to the battery specified in this information, which is the key fob battery type CR2032. It lasts about one year, depending on how often it is used. To avoid complications with the vehicle systems, it is important to replace a low key fob battery as soon as possible. To replace the key fob battery, remove the battery cover by rotating the cover 45 degrees in either direction. Remove the old battery 
Avoid touching the flat surfaces of the new battery if possible, as finger marks can reduce battery life. Wipe the battery clean before installation. Fit the battery with the plus side facing upwards. Replace the battery cover. Environmental note. Please dispose of used batteries correctly as they contain substances that are harmful to our environment and refer to your local regulations. Caring for the key fob. Caution to protect the electronic circuitry inside. Do not expose a key fob to impacts, liquids, high temperatures, waxes, salt or abrasive cleaners. Replacement key fobs. If you lose a key fob, please contact Fisker immediately to disconnect your key fob from the vehicle via over-the-air action. A replacement key may also be ordered at this time or through the Fisker app. About connected app features. You can use the Fisker app on your phone to do the following. Power on the vehicle, operate the lift gate, lock or unlock all the doors, and operate all the windows. Fisker app functionality may not be available at launch. It will be updated via over-the-air software updates when available. On to the doors. Opening doors from the outside. Opening doors. The door handle extends when a valid key fob is detected within 7 feet, 2 meters, of the vehicle. The key fob is used to unlock the doors, or the Fisker app is used to unlock the doors. Once a handle extends, pull to open that door. If a door handle is not opened within 30 seconds of presenting, it retracts. Use any of the opening methods in this section to extend it again. In the event of a collision, all exterior door handles present. If there is still a available power and the door units are not damaged. Closing doors. All doors automatically lock when all valid key fobs leave the 7 foot 2 meter detection radius of the vehicle. The fob is used to lock all the doors or the Fisker app is used to lock all the doors. Close the door manually by pushing it until you feel the power cinch motor take over and pull it closed. On to windows. Window safety. Warning. Only operate the windows when the operator has a clear view of the vehicle and can verify that nobody could be trapped by the moving vehicle windows, including the roof. Warning. Children, other passengers, or objects can be trapped by the moving windows. Always operate the windows with caution. Do not allow children to play with the window switches. Never stick objects or body parts through an open window. Warning. On hot days, the temperature in the vehicle interior can rise quickly. Exposure to these high temperatures for even a short period of time can cause heat-related injury or death. Small children and animals are particularly at risk and should never be left unattended in a vehicle. Opening and closing windows. The power windows can be operated when the vehicle is powered on. The driver's door window switches control all windows in the vehicle, pull up or press down on a switch to raise or lower the associated window. To automatically lower or raise a window fully, push or pull the switch past the resistance point and then release it. Pushing or pulling the switch again will stop the motion. To partially lower or raise a window, gently push or pull the switch up to the resistance point. Release when the desired position is reached. Each passenger door contains a window switch for its associated window. The windows automatically stop closing and open slightly if an obstruction is detected. Inhibiting rear window operation. Warning, whenever children are seated in the rear seats, the window locks should be activated for their safety. There is a risk of death or serious injury if a child operates the rear windows. Warning, never leave children unsupervised in a vehicle. The rear windows can be operated from the switches on the rear doors when the window lock has not been activated. To prevent prevent passengers from operating the rear window switches, the window lock feature can be activated from the switch panel on the driver's door. Press the rear window lock button to activate or deactivate this feature. The indicator on the switch illuminates when the rear window switches are deactivated. Here's your open sky. The sliding roof is controlled by a switch on the overhead console, which operates as follows. Tilt open, gently pull up to the resistance point, then release. The sliding roof automatically opens to the tilt position. Auto open, pull past the resistance point, then release. The sliding roof fully opens automatically. Auto close. Gently push up to the resistance point and release to auto close from the tilt position. Push past the resistance point and release to auto close from the fully open position. Pulling or pushing the switch again during any operation stops the motion of the sliding roof. The sliding roof can also be fully opened by either of the following methods. If equipped, press the California mode button on the key fob. This also opens all the power windows on the vehicle. Or use the Fisker app. Fisker app functionality may not be available at launch. It will be updated via over-the-air software updates when available. 
For safety reasons, OpenSky will not operate at a temperature of negative 25C or negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit or below. On to doggy windows. The doggy windows can only be opened and closed using California mode. California mode, if equipped. When this optional feature is equipped to your vehicle, you can use California mode to universally open or close all windows on the vehicle, including the liftgate window, rear quarter windows, and the sliding roof. Using the key fob, the button on your key fob illustrated above is is used exclusively to operate California mode. Press and hold for two seconds to open or close all windows. Using California mode, activate California mode using any of the following methods. Pull the California mode switch on the overhead console to open all windows or push to close. Use the California mode button on the key fob or use the Fisker app. The power lift gate window, if equipped. Open or close the power lift gate window using any of the following methods. Pull and hold the illustrated switch on the overhead console to open all windows or push and hold to close. Press and hold the liftgate window button on the key fob to open and close the power liftgate window. Using the key fob or overhead console switch, you must hold the button or switch as the window is moving. There is no one press up or down feature on the rear window. Liftgate opening and closing. Warning. Be aware of the risk of serious injury when operating the liftgate. Before opening or closing, make sure that no one is in the path of the liftgate who could be injured by its movement. Caution! When operating the liftgate manually, open and close it slowly. If you encounter resistance, do not use force. This could lead to damage and loss of function. The vehicle must be in park to allow the liftgate to operate. If the liftgate is not fully closed when the vehicle is shifted out of park, the red door ajar warning indicator illuminates on the driver display. An electric switch for opening and closing the liftgate is located on the lower edge of the liftgate. If a valid key fob is in range, pressing the switch automatically opens the liftgate to the currently programmed opening height. Press the switch again to close, opening the liftgate. The liftgate can be unlocked and opened by any of the following methods. Pull the interior liftgate opening switch located on the driver's door near the storage pocket. Press and hold the key fob button within 50 meters, 164 feet of the liftgate. Pull the liftgate switch on the overhead console, use the exterior liftgate switch, or use the Fisker app. Closing the liftgate. To close the liftgate, do one of the following. Press and release the exterior liftgate switch. Manually pull the liftgate down until the power cinch engages and pulls it closed. Automatic movement stop. If anything obstructs the liftgate with enough force to prevent it from opening or closing, it will reverse directions. If the liftgate stops moving due to an obstruction, remove the obstruction and try to open or close it again. If it cannot be opened or closed a second time, try to operate it manually. Setting the liftgate opening height. The liftgate opening height can be programmed to your preference. Open the liftgate using one of the methods previously described in this section. When the liftgate reaches the desired height, press and hold the exterior liftgate switch for three seconds. This position will now be stored in the memory. Resetting the liftgate height. To reset the liftgate opening height back to the highest position, select the settings wheel, doors and mirrors on the central touchscreen. Under liftgate, tap reset to full height. The central touchscreen notifies you when the reset is completed. Accessing the lower cargo area with flat and fold cargo floor, if equipped. Caution! Overloading your vehicle can cause severe damage. Never load more than 352 pounds, 160 kilos, onto the flat and fold cargo floor into the lower cargo area. The flat and fold cargo floor is not attached to the vehicle and can be folded back or removed completely if necessary. To access the cargo area inside the luggage compartment, pull up on the handle of the flat and fold cargo floor and fold it into the stowed position. When the flat and fold cargo floor is in the upright folded position, hooks are available to support cargo. Now let's do the retractable cargo cover. The retractable cargo cover is designed to conceal items stored in the luggage compartment from outside viewing. This cover can be retracted or removed to allow extra storage space. Retracting the cargo cover. Unhook the cargo cover from the trim on both the right and left side of the upper cargo area. Allow the cover to retract automatically into the cassette. Expanding the cargo cover is the reverse of the retraction process. Removing the cargo cover. To remove, Push both the left and right cassette end caps inwards until the springs are fully compressed. Lift the cassette upward and remove the cover from the vehicle. Installation is the reverse of the removal process. Anti-theft system. Caution! While the security systems described in this section are designed to help prevent vehicle theft, 
They do not guarantee absolute security against all vehicle thefts. Do not modify, remove, or replace a security system. If a system is modified, removed, or replaced, its proper operation cannot be guaranteed. Your vehicle is fitted with an anti-theft system, which is automatically disarmed when the vehicle receives an unlock command from a valid key fob or the Fisker app. If the doors or lift gate are not opened within 30 seconds of receiving the unlock command, all doors and the lift gate automatically lock again and the anti-theft system is armed. Intrusion alert. When a valid key fob is not in range, the intrusion alert system monitors for attempts to access or tow the vehicle. If the system is triggered, it activates the warning sequence. The alarm sounds for 28 seconds, pauses for 12 seconds, and continues with this cycle. The headlights flash in sequence for 180 seconds, pause for 20 seconds, and continue with this cycle. The system disarms the intrusion alert system, and the warning sequence stops immediately if the vehicle is unlocked using a valid key fob or the Fisker app. Fisker app functionality may not be available at launch. It will be updated via over-the-air software updates when available. Remote Vehicle Locator, or Find My Fisker. If you need to locate your vehicle, for example, you need help remembering where you parked, simply log into the Fisker app and select Find My Fisker. This displays a map indicating your vehicle's location and your proximity to it. If you own multiple Fisker vehicles, they can all be located simultaneously on the same map. Some Fisker app features may become available in future releases. Remote Flash lights. For visual assistance in locating your ocean, such as a dark parking lot, you can flash the headlights remotely using the Fisker app. Once activated, the exterior lights on your vehicle flash once. Press as many times as needed to spot your vehicle. Some Fisker app features may become available in future releases. Vehicle monitoring. Using the Fisker app, you can monitor the following. Battery status, door lock status, door ajar status, and lift gate status. Some Fisker app features may become available in future releases. Let's move on to seating and safety restraints. Seats. Correct seating position. The seat, head support, seat belt, and airbags work together to maximize your safety. Using these correctly ensures greater protection. To reduce the risk of injuries in the event of a collision, observe the following. The driver and front passenger should position their seats so the seat belt can be worn at the optimum position. Sit upright with both feet on the floor and the seat back, reclined no more than 30 degrees. Make sure you can easily reach the pedals and that your arms are slightly bent when holding the steering wheel. The distance between the driver's chest and the center of the airbag should be at least 10 inches. Grasp the steering wheel on the steering wheel rim. Hold your hands at the three and nine o'clock positions to keep the risk of injury to your hands or arms as low as possible when the airbag is triggered. Place the shoulder section of the seat belt midway between your neck and your shoulder. Fit the lap section of the belt tightly as low and snug as possible around the hips, not the waist. Warning, when the seat is in the reclined position, the shoulder belt and lap belt will not provide proper protection in the event of a collision. You could be thrown into the shoulder belt and receive neck or other serious injuries. You could also slide under the lap belt and receive serious internal injuries. Correct passenger seating position. As the driver of the vehicle, it is your responsibility to make sure every passenger is sitting correctly in their seat and maintaining the seating position while driving. Make sure that every passenger in the vehicle has adjusted their seat correctly. Every passenger in the vehicle has their head restraint adjusted. Every passenger in the vehicle has their safety belt fastened correctly. The activation status of the front passenger's airbag is suitable for the passenger in the front passenger's seat. Children are secured in the suitable child safety seats that are secured to the appropriate vehicle seats. And read and observe the important safety information pertaining to the use of child safety seats. Adjusting the front seats. Warning. Do not adjust the driver's seat while the vehicle is in motion. Doing so increases the risk of a collision. Before adjusting the seat, check that the area around the seat is free of obstacles. The position of the front seats can be adjusted using the seat-mounted switches. Forward and backward moves the seat forward and backward. Up and down moves the seat up and down, and the backrest inclination adjusts the angle of the seat back. Driver's seat memory. The driver's seat automatically adjusts to the current active driver profile when the gear is in park and the brake pedal is pressed. Power seat reclining, if equipped. Warning, do not recline a rear seat that has a child safety restraint installed. Doing so can interfere with the restraint's effectiveness in the event of a collision and could result in death or serious injury. Caution, do not recline a rear seat that has a child safety restraint installed. Doing so could damage the vehicle. The rear seats on some vehicles feature power reclining. Press the top of the associated switch to recline a rear seat. Press the bottom of the switch to return the seat back to its upright position. The rear seats are 60-40 split, with the left switch controlling the left and center seats and the right switch controlling the right seat. Rear seats folding. Warning. 
Always ensure that objects carried within the vehicle are secured properly. Unsecured items can cause death or serious injury in the event of an impact or sudden maneuver. The split rear seat allows you to fold forward all or part of the seat backrest to increase the load carrying area. Before folding down a seat, ensure that any items on the seat or in the rear footwell are removed and the rear head restraints are in the lowest position. The front seats may need to be moved forward to enable the rear seat to fold fully flat. To fold down a rear seat, pull the corresponding release handle. After you feel the latch release, pull the seat backrest forward and down until you feel it lock in place. Try to move the backrest up and down to ensure it remains locked into position. Raising. To return the seat to its upright position, pull the release handle and push the backrest upright until you feel it lock into place. Make sure the backrest is locked into position by trying to pull it forward. Warning. When the seat backrest is raised, make sure that the locking mechanism is fully engaged. Failure to do so greatly increases the risk of death and serious injury in the event of a collision or heavy braking. When returning the seat to its upright position, make sure that the seat belts are not trapped behind the backrest. Seat heating if equipped. Both front seat seats and the outer rear seats have integrated seat heaters. Seat heating controls can be accessed via the central touchscreen by pressing the climate icon. Press the corresponding seat heater icon to control the desired seat. The indicators next to the icon illuminate to indicate the current heating level. The seats can be heated at three different levels. Press once to operate at the highest level, three indicators illuminate. Press twice to operate at the medium level with two indicators. Press a third time to operate at the lowest level with a single indicator. And press a fourth time to turn off the selected feature. All indicators extinguish. Rear seat heating can also be controlled via the central touchscreen and the rear climate control panel when equipped. Let's move on to head restraints. Head restraints overview. Warning, if the seat is equipped with an adjustable head restraint, the seat occupant must adjust the head restraint correctly before every trip. Having head restraints that are not adjusted correctly or not installed in the vehicle increases the risk of a neck injury during sudden driving or braking maneuvers or if the vehicle is involved in a collision. Your vehicle is equipped with head restraints for each seating position. Only the head restraints for the rear seating positions are adjustable. Correct head restraint position. Warning, in the event of a collision, you may want the head restraint to contact your head first, not your neck. Improper positioning can result in serious personal injury. Like seat belts, head restraints are an important safety feature that, when used properly, can reduce the risk of personal injury, such as whiplash, in a collision. When adjusting the height, the bulk of the headrest should stand directly behind the person's head at ear level. Head restraints should ideally be positioned two inches, five centimeters, or less, from the rear of the person's head and never more than four inches or 10 centimeters. Adjusting a rear head restraint. Warning, do not position a rear head restraint to its lowest position for an occupied rear seat. The lowest rear head restraint position is a storage position to provide maximum visibility out of the rear window. Press the button at the base of the head restraint to move the head restraint upward to at least the first locked position when the seat is occupied. Pull and push on the head restraint after the button is released to ensure it is locked in place. Removing a rear head restraint. Warning, if a passenger's head protrudes above the top of the seat back, do not drive or carry passengers with the head restraints removed from the occupied rear seats. The absence of a correctly adjusted head restraint increases the risk of death or serious injury in the event of a collision. The head restraint must be removed from the vehicle seat when installing a child's safety seat, except backless booster seats, to ensure that the upper tether strap securely holds to the child's safety seat in place. To remove a head restraint, press the button at the base of the head restraint, then pull up until the head restraint slides out completely. Reinstalling a head restraint. Warning, any head restraint that has been removed from a seat must be reinstalled in order to properly protect the occupant of that seat. To reinstall a head restraint, insert the two head restraint bars into the head restraint locating holes, push the button on the side of a locating hole, then push the head restraint down until it locks. Adjust the head restraint height as needed for an occupant. Now it's on to seat belts. Ensure that all seat belts are worn correctly, an improperly worn seat belt increases the risk of injury or death in a collision. In a rollover incident, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to die from a person wearing a seat belt. Always wear the seat belt with the lap section of the belt as low as possible and snug across your hips. Do not wear the seat belt with any part of the strap twisted. Never wear the seat belt with the shoulder belt under your arm. Do not wear seat belts over hard, fragile, or sharp items in clothing. Pens, keys, eyeglasses, pressure from the seat belt on such items can cause personal injury. Each seat belt should only be used 
used by one occupant. Never attempt to use the seatbelt with a child or another person in your lap. Secure small children in a suitable child safety seat. If a seatbelt cannot be fastened securely because it is not long enough, only use Fisker authorized seatbelt extenders. The use of the seatbelt extenders may not allow the vehicle to determine whether a seatbelt is unlatched. Do not make modifications or additions to the seatbelt assembly that prevent the mechanism from taking up or removing slack. A slack belt greatly reduces the occupant's protection. Do not attempt to remove, repair, disassemble, or install seat belts. Any necessary repairs should be done by Fisker. Improper handling may result in the seat belts failing to operate correctly. Avoid contaminating the seat belt assembly with any liquids, chemicals, dirt, grit, or cleaning products. Contamination can affect the condition and function of the assembly. Seat belts showing signs of wear, such as fraying, or that have been cut or otherwise damaged, must be replaced by Fisker. If a seat belt fails to latch or does not fully retract when not in use, contact Fisker via the Fisker app to have the assembly inspected and possibly replaced. Any seat belts that were in use during a collision must be inspected or replaced by Fisker even if there is no apparent damage to the assembly. Take care not to damage the seat belt by allowing any part of it to become trapped in the door. Wearing seat belts. Warning. Seat belts should be worn by all occupants for every journey, no matter the driving distance. Failure to do so greatly increases the risk of death or serious injury in the event of a collision. Seat belts and child restraint systems are the most effective means of restraining vehicle occupants from impact forces, which in turn minimizes the danger of injury from interior impacts and the effects of whiplash. Therefore, wearing a seat belt is required by law in most markets. All seating positions are equipped with three-point inertia retractor seat belts, inertia retractor Tractor seat belts are tensioned automatically and allow freedom of movement during normal driving conditions. The seat belt retractor automatically locks, preventing movement of occupants whenever your vehicle experiences the force associated with hard acceleration, braking, cornering, or on impact in a collision. The retractor may also lock when driving on steep hills or slopes. Automatic locking retractors. Automatic locking retractors are dependent on the market configuration of the vehicle and may not be installed on your vehicle. To securely hold child safety seats, the front passenger and all rear passenger seating positions are equipped with an automatic locking retractor. When the belt is completely extended and then allowed to retract even slightly, the retractor locks so that it cannot be extended. To disengage the ALR, allow the belt to fully retract. Fastening the seat belt. Ensure the seat belt is correctly positioned. Pull the seat belt out smoothly, ensuring the seat belt lays flat across the pelvis, chest, and midpoint of the collarbone between the neck and shoulder. Insert the latch plate into the buckle and press down until you hear a click, indicating it is securely locked in place. Pull the seat belt to check that it is securely fastened. Pull the shoulder part of the seat belt towards the retractor to remove any excess slack. Seat belt height adjustment. The seat belt adjusters located on the B pillars can be used to adjust the height of the front front seat belts. After fastening a front seat belt, press and hold the button on the seat belt adjuster, then move the belt up or down between the four available positions. Adjust the seat belt to the appropriate position for the belt to rest midway between the shoulder and the neck on the collarbone. Releasing the belt. To release the seat belt, press the red button on the buckle. The belt retracts automatically. Seat belt reminders. Warning. Seat belts should be worn by all occupants. Never disregard or attempt to disable the seat belt reminder if it activates. If a seat belt on an occupied seat is not fastened, a red warning indicator, telltale, illuminates on the driver display. An intermittent chime sounds as a reminder if you shift out of park. To the right of the front seat belt indicator, there are three additional indicators for the three rear seating positions. These indicators illuminate as follows. Seat unoccupied, seat occupied not fastened, seat occupied, seat fastened. If any seat belt remains unfastened and the vehicle speed is greater than 16 miles an hour or 25 kilometers per hour, the corresponding warning indicator flashes and an intermittent chime sounds at one second intervals. If all occupants are buckled up, and a red warning indicator light stays on. Refasten all seat belts in use to ensure they are correctly latched. Remove any heavy objects, such as a briefcase, from any unoccupied seats. If the indicator still remains on, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Warning, pregnant women should always wear seat belts to protect themselves and their unborn child. Never place anything between you and the seat belt to cushion the impact in the event of a collision. The lap portion of the seat belt should be worn as low as possible across the hips, 
not the waist. Position the shoulder part of the belt between the breasts and to the side of the abdomen. Ensure that the belt has no slack and is not twisted. If you have any concerns about wearing seat belts, consult your physician. Seat belt pretensioners. Warning, if a seat belt pretensioner has been activated, it must be replaced. After an impact or collision, even if there is no obvious damage, always have the seat belts checked and, if necessary, replaced by Fisker. The seat belts for the front and outer rear seating positions are equipped with pretensioners that work in conjunction with the airbags in a severe front or side impact collision. A pretensioner only activates if the seatbelt is already buckled at the time of the collision. The pretensioners automatically retract the seatbelts, reducing any slack in both the lap and shoulder portion of the belts, thereby reducing forward movement of the seatbelt wearer. The seatbelt pretensioners can only be activated once before they must be replaced by Fisker. If a pretensioner has been activated, the airbag warning indicator illuminates on the driver display. Even if the pretensioners have been activated, the seatbelts still function as restraints and must be worn in the event that the vehicle remains in a drivable condition. Testing seat belts. Warning. Regularly check the condition of all belts. Replace seat belts if you notice any damage to the belt strap, fittings, retractor mechanisms, or buckles. Damaged seat belts may not operate properly in the event of a collision. Warning. When seat belts are not in use, they should be fully retracted and not hanging loose. If a seat belt does not fully retract, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. There are three tests you should perform when checking seat belts. One, with the buckle fastened, give the shoulder belt strap at the buckle a quick upward pull. The buckle should remain securely locked. With the seat belt unfastened, unreel the belt to its limit. Check that it unreels smoothly with no snatches or snags. Visually check the belt for wear. Allow the belt to retract, checking that the retraction is smooth and complete. With the belt half unreeled, hold the strap and quickly try to pull more strap out. The mechanism must lock automatically and prevent further unreeling. If a seat belt fails any of these tests, contact Fisker via the Fisker app immediately to have the seat belt replaced. On to child safety seats. Guidelines for seating children. Warning, do not use a child restraint on a seat with an operational airbag in front of it. There is a risk of death or serious injury when the airbag deploys. Collision statistics show that children are safest when properly restrained in a child or infant restraint system that is secured in a rear seating position. Warning, do not use a forward-facing child seat until the child using it is above the minimum weight of 20 pounds or 9 kilos and able to sit up unaided. Up to the age of two years, a child's spine and neck are not sufficient sufficiently developed to avoid injury in a frontal impact. Do not allow a baby or infant to be held or carried on the lap. The force of a collision can increase effective body weight by as much as 30 times, making it impossible to hold on to the child. At all times, children should be restrained in age and size appropriate child seats to reduce the risk of injury in a collision. The seat belts fitted to your vehicle are designed for adults and larger children. For the safety of infants and children under 12, it is very important that they are restrained in a suitable child safety seat appropriate for their age and size. You should only fit a child seat that has been approved for use in your vehicle. Ensure that the manufacturer's fitting instructions are followed exactly. You can contact Fisker for a list of approved child seats. The legislation which governs how and where children should be carried when traveling in the vehicle is subject to change. It is the responsibility of the driver to comply with all current regulations in force. Warning! Extreme hazard. Do not use a rear-facing child restraint on a seat protected by an airbag in front of it. This label is affixed to the dashboard on the passenger side to warn against the use of a rear-facing child seat when the front passenger airbag is operational. Choosing a child safety seat. Warning. All children age 12 and under should ride in the rear seats using a child safety seat suitable for the child's age and weight. Children should ride rear-facing and use the child restraints integrated five-point harness as long as possible. Check to make sure children riding in your vehicle are riding in the appropriate child restraint. Child restraints accommodate different ages, size, and weight ranges of children. Many child restraints are designed to allow children to ride rear-facing. The following tables will help you determine the best type of restraint for a child. There are also some general rules for each category. Child safety seat and restraint secured with seat belt. And you can see here the weight groups are 0, 0 plus, group 1, group 2, and group 3. The U stands for Universal Belt Rearward Child Restraint System. The UF stands for Universal Belt Forward Child Restraint System. And then you have your latch and isofix anchorage. You have once again group 0, 0 plus, 1, 2, and 3. IL is any semi-universal latch and isofix child restraint system, and IUF is any universal 
latch and ISOFIX child restraint system. Seating larger children. Make sure the child's head is properly supported by the booster seat or vehicle seat. The seat back must be at or above the center of the child's ears. Make sure the vehicle seat is properly fitted onto the child. The shoulder portion of the belt is away from the face and neck, and the lap portion of the belt lies across the child's lap, not over the stomach. When a booster seat is not in use, do not leave it loose in the vehicle. In a sudden stop or collision, it could strike the occupants or seat backs and cause serious injury. Secure the booster seat or remove it from the vehicle entirely. If a child is too big to fit into a child's safety seat but too small to safely fit into the standard seat belts, a booster seat appropriate for the child's age and size can be used. Carefully read and follow the instructions and warnings provided by the booster seat's manufacturer and on all labels attached to the booster seat. Always check and adjust every child's seat belt for every trip. Children who are big enough to wear the shoulder belt properly and comfortably and whose legs are long enough to bend over the front of the seat when their back is against the seat back should use the seat belt in a rear seat. Installing child safety seats. Warning, when installing any child safety seat, it is strongly recommended to always remove the head restraint from the vehicle seat. If a child's seat is not correctly anchored, there is a significant risk of injury to the child in the event of a collision or emergency braking. Warning, after a child safety seat is installed in the vehicle, do not adjust the vehicle seat, as this can loosen the safety seat attachments. Remove the safety seat before adjusting the vehicle seat position. When the vehicle seat has been adjusted, reinstall the safety seat. Not all child restraint systems are the same, and they do not install in the same way. There are two types of installations, those that you secure to the vehicle seats by the seat belts and those that you secure using latch or isofix child seat anchor points built into the rear seat frame. All new and most older types of child restraint systems also use an upper tether strap which attaches to an anchorage point on the back of the rear seat. Check the manufacturer's instructions to see which installation method to use. Some systems can be installed using either method. Always follow the child restraint manufacturer's instructions and recommendations. Installing seat belt retained child seats. First, make sure that the child falls into the correct weight range for the seat being used. The following is a general procedure for installing a seat belt retained child restraint. You should always read and follow the instructions provided by the manufacturer of the child safety seat you are installing. Place the child safety seat in the vehicle seat. Fully extend the seat belt to engage the ALR if equipped. Route the seat belt and secure the buckle in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Allow the seat belt to retract. Firmly push the safety seat into the vehicle seat and remove all slack in the seat belt. If the safety seat has an upper tether, attach it to the back of the vehicle seat. Check that the safety seat is not loose. Do this by holding the safety seat by the belt path and try to slide it side to side and front and back. If it moves more than one inch, 2.5 centimeters, from side to side or front to back, then it is too loose. If you cannot tighten the safety seat any further, then try a different recommended seating location or try another child safety seat. Installing latch or isofix child seats. Warning, child seat anchorages are not designed to only withstand the loads imposed by a correctly installed child safety seat. Under under no circumstances are they to be used for adult seat belts, harnesses, or attaching other items or equipment to the vehicle. Never attach two child safety seats to one anchor point. In a collision, one anchor point may be incapable of securing both seats. If the restraint is not correctly anchored, there is a significant risk of injury to the child in the event of a collision or emergency braking. The outer rear seats are equipped to accept latch and isofix restraints. Only a seat belt restrained child seat can be used in the center rear seating position to install a latch or isofix child seat. The lower latch or isofix anchorage points are located between the seat backrest and rear cushion, indicated by the child seat identification tabs on the seat. Unzip the covers to access the lower anchorage attachment points. Position the child seat on the vehicle seat. Attach the child seat latches onto the latch isofix lower anchor points following the manufacturer's instructions to connect and tighten them. Ensure the latches are securely connected and tightened. To do this, attempt to pull the child seat away from the vehicle seat and twist it from side to side. Even if the child seat appears secure, you should still check the anchor points visually to ensure correct attachment. If the child seat moves more than one inch, 2.5 centimeters, from side to side or front to back, then it is too loose. If you cannot tighten the latches any further, try a different recommended seating location or try another child safety seat. If the child's seat has an upper tether provided, make sure that it is fitted and tightened correctly. Lower 
Latch ISOFIX anchors should not be used with child seats or booster seats that have an integrated safety belt in situations where the combined weight of the child plus the restraint is more than 64 pounds or 29 kilos. In these situations, use the seat belt instead. Attaching upper tether straps. There are upper tether strap anchors provided for each rear seating position. To attach tether straps, remove the head restraint from the vehicle seat. Pass the tether strap over the top of the seat. Open the protective cover located behind the headrest. Attach the tether strap hook to the tether anchor point on the back of the seat. Ensure that the tether strap hook is facing the correct way according to the manufacturer's instructions and that the strap is not twisted. Tighten the tether strap according to the manufacturer's instructions. Child safety seat warnings. Warning, to ensure children are safely seated, follow all instructions provided in this guide and by the manufacturer of the child safety seat. Always check and adjust every child's safety harness or seat belt for every trip. Avoid dressing the child in bulky clothing, such as thick or puffy coats, and do not place any objects between the child and the restraint system, as these practices could introduce slack to the restraints and reduce their effectiveness. Children should never be left unattended in the vehicle, even when secured in a child safety seat. According to collision statistics, children are safer when properly restrained in the rear seats than in the front seat. Never use seatbelt extenders on a seatbelt that is being used to install a child safety or booster seat. Regularly inspect and check installation of all child safety seats. Replace any seats or harnesses that show signs of wear. Never use a child safety seat that has been involved in a collision. Have the seat inspected or replaced as described in the child safety seat manufacturer's instructions. On to airbags. Location of airbags and sensors. There's the impact sensor, the knee airbag, driver and passenger frontal airbags, door pressure sensor, occupant classification system, outer side airbag, inner side airbag, which is Euro spec only, curtain airbag, occupant presence switch, and the airbag control module. Airbags are located in the approximate areas shown in the illustration. The exact location of the airbag modules are indicated by the word airbag on the trim or a label sewn onto the seat cover. Airbag safety information. To minimize the risk of severe injury or death in the event of a collision, all occupants and including the driver should always wear their seat belts. Whether or not an airbag is also provided at their seating position. Do not attach or place objects on or near the front airbags, the side of the front seats, the headliner at the side of the vehicle, or any other location that could interfere with the inflation of an airbag. Objects can cause serious injury if the vehicle is in a collision severe enough to cause the airbag to deploy. In short, taco trays are stowed when the vehicle is in motion. Objects on open trays could interfere with the deployment of the airbags or be launched into the vehicle as an airbag inflates, causing serious injury. For the curtain airbags to deploy correctly, the roof lining and A-post trim must be undamaged and installed correctly. Any damage or suspect installation should be referred to Fisker for inspection. Front seat occupants should not place their arms over the airbag module as an inflating airbag can cause fractures or other injuries. Do not use seat covers in the vehicle. A seat cover could interfere with the deployment of a seat-mounted side airbag in the event of a collision. Airbags inflate with considerable speed and force. To reduce the risk of injuries, ensure that all occupants are wearing seat belts and are correctly seated, with seats positioned as far back from the front airbags as possible. Never use a child safety seat or seat young children on a seat with an operational airbag in front of it. Doing so can cause injury or death if the airbag deploys. To ensure correct inflation of the side airbags, maintain an unobstructed gap between an occupant's torso and the side of the vehicle. Occupants should not lean their head against doors. Doing so can cause an injury if a curtain airbag deploys. Do not allow occupants to obstruct the operation of an airbag by placing feet, knees, or any other part of the body on or near an airbag. Contact Fisker if you are planning to modify your vehicle for a person with disabilities in a way that may affect the airbag system. Airbag safety labels. Airbag safety labels can be found printed on the sun visors for the driver and front passenger. How the airbags work. Warning, the airbags are a supplemental restraint system providing additional protection in certain types of collisions only. They do not replace the need to wear a seatbelt. Occupants not properly restrained in designated seating positions are at high risk of death or serious injury in the event of of an airbag deployment. Do not use a child restraint on a seat with an operational airbag in front of it. There is a risk of death or serious injury if the airbag deploys. Airbags inflate when sensors detect an impact 
that exceeds deployment thresholds. These thresholds are designed to predict the severity of a collision in time for the airbags to help protect the vehicle's occupants. Airbags inflate instantly and with considerable force accompanied by a loud noise. The inflated bag, together with the seatbelts, limits movement of occupants to reduce the risk of injury. The front airbags are not designed to inflate as a result of rear collisions, vehicle rollovers, minor front impacts, or minor side impacts. Therefore, significant superficial damage can occur to the vehicle without the airbags inflating, or conversely, a relatively small amount of structural damage can cause airbags to inflate. Types of airbags Front airbags. The front airbags are designed to protect the head and chest of the driver and front passenger from impact with the steering wheel and dashboard panel components. The front airbags fitted to your vehicle are advanced airbags. This type of airbag has been designed to reduce airbag-related injuries to children or small-statured adults. Your vehicle has front seat position sensors. These help to ensure that, regardless of the severity of the impact, the airbag inflates with less force if the seat is closer to the airbag than if the seat was further away. Dependent on vehicle specification, there may also be an occupancy sensor built into the front passenger seat. If the front seat detects the weight of an infant or small child, the system automatically turns off the passenger's front airbag. However, Fisker does not recommend that you seat an infant or small child in the front passenger seat. If there is no front seat passenger detected, the passenger front airbag will not activate. Warning: Ensure that a gap is maintained between the side of the vehicle and the torso. This enables correct inflation of the seat-mounted side airbags. Do not use unauthorized seat covers or accessory seat covers on a front seat as these prevent the side airbag from deploying correctly in a collision. If in doubt, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Fisker recommend all repairs be performed by Fisker. Incorrectly performed repairs to the side airbag system could impair function and lead to serious injury. The side airbags are designed to protect the thorax region of the torso and pelvis and only deploy in the event of a severe side impact. They do not inflate as a result of frontal or rear impacts only. The airbags on the non-impacted side of the vehicle are not deployed. The installation of inner side airbags is dependent upon vehicle specification. Knee airbags. The knee airbags are designed to work in conjunction with the deployment of the front airbags. When deployed, the knee airbags limit the forward motion of the driver or front passenger by restricting leg movement, thereby positioning the occupants so that the front airbags work more effectively. Curtain airbags. Warning. Make sure that the passengers do not lean their heads against the doors. In the event of a collision, they may be injured when the curtain airbag deploys from the headliner. Never hang or attach heavy objects from the grab handles on the headlining. The hooks are only intended for lightweight garments, not for hard objects. The curtain airbags are designed to protect the head in the event of a severe side impact or rollover. They do not inflate as a result of frontal or rear impacts alone. Curtain airbags can help prevent occupants from being thrown from the vehicle in the event of a vehicle rollover. Over. Obstruction of airbags. Warning, do not allow passengers to obstruct the operation of the airbags by placing feet, knees, any other part of the body, or any other objects in contact with or in close proximity to an airbag module. Do not attach or position items on an airbag cover which could interfere with the inflation of the airbag or be propelled inside your vehicle and injure occupants. Never place your arm over an airbag cover. Deploying an airbag can cause serious fractures or other injuries. To ensure correct deployment of the airbag, it is essential that obstructions are not allowed to intervene between an airbag and the occupant. The following are examples of the type of obstructions that could impede correct operation of the airbags or jeopardize personal safety in the event of an airbag deployment. Accessories attached or obscuring an airbag cover, attached to the roof lining, door pillar trim, or the front seat backrests. Items of hand luggage or other objects placed on an airbag cover, feet, knees, or any other part of the anatomy in contact with or in close proximity to an airbag cover. Head, arms, or any part of the anatomy in contact with or in close proximity to a seat-mounted side airbag. Objects, such as items of clothing, hanging from the grab handles attached to the roof. Objects, such as items of clothing or cushions, draped over the part of the front seat containing the airbag. Unauthorized seat covers or accessory seat covers over a front seat, in particular, seat covers that have not been designed for use with seat-mounted side airbags. If in doubt, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Front Passenger Seat Occupant Classification System, OCS. Warning. Fisker strongly advises against seating a child on the front passenger seat, even if the passenger airbag is off 
all occupants age 12 and under should ride in the rear seats. The full weight of the front passenger seat should always be directly on the seat cushion. The passengers should never lift themselves off the seat cushion by using the armrest in the door or the center console, by pressing their feet on the floor, by sitting on the edge of the seat cushion, or by pressing against the backrest in any way that reduces pressure on the seat cushion. The passenger should never place anything such as a cushion between themselves and the seat. This could cause OCS to disable the front passenger's airbag. Deployment of the front passenger airbag is not always beneficial for small or lower weight occupants and could be harmful to children or infants in restraint systems. The front passenger seat is fitted with an occupancy sensor that controls the status of the front passenger airbag based on the weight of the occupant. The occupancy sensor system only controls the deployment of the front passenger and knee airbags and the front passenger seatbelt pretensioner. It does not affect the deployment of the passenger side airbag or the passenger curtain airbag. The occupancy sensor system meets the regulatory requirement of FMVSS208 and automatically detects when deployment of the front passenger airbag would be unnecessary or potentially harmful. A status message on the overhead console indicates whether the front passenger airbag is currently off. You should always check whether the passenger airbag status indicator is showing the correct status for the current seat occupancy. If you think the passenger airbag status is incorrect, check for the following. Objects lodged underneath the seat. Objects wedged between the seat cushion and the center console. Objects hanging off the back of the seat. Cargo interference with the seat. Rear seat passengers pushing or pulling on the front passenger seat. Any of these conditions listed above may cause the occupancy sensor to incorrectly interpret the weight of the occupant or object as either heavier or lighter than the real weight. Depending on the input received from the occupancy sensor, the passenger airbag status indicator operates as shown in the following table. If the front passenger seat is completely empty or low weight, the airbag will be deactivated. That's also the case with a child restraint seat with an infant or a child with or without a child's seat. If an adult is in the front passenger seat, the passenger airbag status will be activated. The front passenger airbag will also deactivate in the event of a system malfunction. And here are the exceptions for that chart. It is possible to receive an intermittent indicator status with an empty seat. This is part of the system's behavior and does not affect the status of the front passenger airbags. However, if the status indicator becomes permanently on when the seat is empty and the seat belt is unbuckled, contact Fisker via the Fisker app immediately. If you still believe that the airbag status indicator is incorrect, have your passenger ride in the rear of the vehicle and immediately contact Fisker via the Fisker app to have the system checked. Front passenger seat OCS precautions. Warning, failure to observe the following precautions regarding the front passenger OCS may cause death or serious injury. Wear the seat belt properly. Make sure the front passenger seat belt latch is not inserted into the buckle before someone sits in the front passenger seat. If an adult is seated in the front passenger seat and the passenger airbag off indicator is displayed, ask the passenger to sit up straight, well back in the seat, with feet on the floor, and with the seat belt worn correctly. If the passenger airbag off indicator remains displayed, either ask the passenger to move to a rear seat, or if that is not possible, move the front passenger seat fully rearward. Child restraint systems installed on the rear seat should not contact the front passenger seat back. Do not recline the front passenger seat back so far that it contacts the rear seat or an object in the rear of the vehicle. This may cause the passenger airbag off indicator to be displayed. Return the seat back to a position where it does not touch the seat or object. Keep the front passenger seat back as upright as possible when the vehicle is moving. Reclining the seat back may lessen the effectiveness of the seatbelt system. Make sure the passenger airbag off indicator is not displayed when using a seatbelt extender for the front passenger. If the passenger airbag off indicator is displayed, disconnect the latch plate from the seatbelt buckle and reconnect the seatbelt. If you continue to use the seatbelt extender while passenger airbag off indicator is displayed, the airbags for the front passenger will not activate correctly, which could cause death or serious injury in the event of a collision. Do not apply a heavy load to the front passenger seat. Do not put objects underneath the front passenger seat. Do not allow rear seat passengers to put weight on the front passenger seat by putting their hands or feet on the seat back. Do not let a rear passenger lift the front passenger seat with their feet or press on the seat back with their legs. Do not allow a passenger to kick the front passenger seat or subject it to a severe impact. This could cause the airbag SRS warning indicator to be displayed and prevent the system from operating correctly in an impact. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app if the warning indicator is displayed. 
Do not modify or remove the front seats. Do not modify, cover, or replace the upholstery on the front seat. Effects of airbag inflation. Warning, when airbags deploy, a fine powder is normally released. This powder can cause irritation and should be thoroughly flushed from the eyes and skin, including any cuts or abrasions. The powder may aggravate asthma for some people. Following inflation, some airbag components are hot, do not touch until they have cooled. After inflation, the airbags deflate to provide a gradual cushioning effect for the occupants and to ensure the driver's forward vision is not obscured. If airbags have inflated or if your vehicle has been in a collision, always have the airbags, seatbelt, and all associated components checked and, if necessary, replaced by Fisker. Safety features. Along with the inflation of the airbags, the following will also occur to assist you and any recovery personnel. Doors unlock, hazard warnings turn on, interior lights turn on, high voltage power is isolated. Airbag SRS warning indicator. You will be alerted of any airbag system malfunction by a red warning indicator or telltale on the driver display. The components monitored by the system include airbag warning indicator, airbag modules, seat belt pretensioners, airbag diagnostic control unit, collision sensors, and airbag wiring harnesses. When the vehicle is on, the airbag control unit monitors the readiness of the system's electrical circuits. You should contact Fisker via the app if the warning indicator fails to illuminate when the vehicle starts, the warning indicator fails to extinguish within approximately six seconds after the vehicle starts, or the warning indicator illuminates while your vehicle is being driven. Airbag service information. Warning. Do not attempt to service, repair, replace, or modify any part of the airbag system. This includes wiring or components in the vicinity of airbag components. Doing so may cause the system to trigger or render the system inoperative, either of which may result in death or serious injury. Warning, any notable damage to airbag components or covers, example tears, burns, holes, chemical or detergent damage or previous accidental damage, however produced, may cause the airbag module or modules to fail. Ensure that any damaged components are repaired or replaced by Fisker. If you need to dispose of an airbag or seatbelt pretensioner, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Incorrect disposal procedures could cause personal injury. Let's move on to driving and operating. Steering wheel. Adjusting the steering wheel position. The position of the steering column is adjusted using the central touchscreen. Select the settings wheel. Select general. Select adjust steering wheel. Use the steering wheel controls as prompted to adjust the steering wheel to your preferred position. Once an adjustment has been made, press done to save this position under the current driver profile. Press the X to close or cancel. Steering wheel heat if equipped. Steering wheel heat is controlled via the central touchscreen. Select the fan icon. Press the steering wheel heater icon to activate or deactivate the heating elements in the steering wheel. The icon illuminates when steering wheel heat is on. Steering response and sensitivity. The feel and sensitivity of the steering system is determined by the current drive mode selected for the vehicle. Steering wheel, left controls. The left controls relate to media, audio, and voice commands. The top is Alexa hands-free, back and previous, forward and next, your telephone control, and the scroll wheel indicates volume control. Scroll up or down to control media volume. Press to mute or unmute. Steering wheel right controls. The right controls relate to driving modes and assistance. Drive control, vehicle driving mode, Fisker intelligent pilot, adaptive drive control following distance, and the scroll wheel adjusts your drive control vehicle speed. Scroll up or down to adjust the vehicle speed with the drive control active. Press to confirm. Some driving features may not be available at launch. They will be updated via over-the-air software updates when available. And the horn. To sound the horn, press the center pad on the steering wheel. Let's move on to mirrors. Exterior mirrors. Warning. Dependent on the type of mirror glass fitted to your vehicle, distances may be difficult to judge accurately. Objects viewed in the mirror may be closer than they appear. The positions of the exterior side mirrors can be adjusted using the driver's door controls. Press to select a mirror to adjust. The indicator light on the switch for the selected mirror illuminates. If the mirror switches are not operated for 60 seconds, the indicator light for the selected mirror extinguishes and the mirrors can no longer be adjusted. Use the directional switch to adjust a selected mirror in the desired direction. Press and hold the directional switch for continuous movement or use short presses for smaller adjustments. Press to fold or unfold both mirrors. Mirrors can only be folded when the vehicle speed is below 19 miles per hour or 30 kilometers per hour. When the speed exceeds this threshold, the mirrors automatically unfold and the switch is disabled. Once an adjustment has been made, the new mirror position automatically saves to the current driver profile. Automatic folding and unfolding if equipped. 
The exterior mirrors can be set to automatically fold when the vehicle is locked after exiting and unfold when the vehicle is unlocked upon approach. To activate or deactivate this feature via the central touchscreen, select Settings, Doors, and Mirrors. Press to toggle Auto Fold on or off. Reverse Auto Tilt if equipped. When the Reverse Auto Tilt feature is activated, the glass in both mirrors tilts downward slightly when the gear is in reverse. This improves your view of the curb and other low-lying objects while reversing. To activate or deactivate this feature via the central touchscreen, select Settings, Doors and Mirrors. Press to toggle Auto Tilt Mirrors on or off. Heating and defrosting if equipped. The exterior side mirror defrost feature activates when the front or rear defrost buttons are activated. Digital rear view mirror. Warning. The digital display has a limited field of view. Portions of the road, vehicles, and other objects may not be visible. Take care when backing up to be fully aware of your surroundings. The rear view mirror can be set between a standard rear view mirror and a digital display that uses the vehicle's camera system. The digital display is not as effective as the mirror view when driving at nighttime or in low light conditions. Manually adjust the position of the rear view mirror for the desired view behind. The rear view mirror automatically dims in proportion to the level of glare detected from a following vehicle's headlight. This feature is disabled when the vehicle is in reverse to provide an unimpeded view in reverse. Switching mirror views. Flip back the lever on the bottom of the mirror to use the standard mirror. Flip forward to activate the digital camera display. Using digital mirror controls. Use the buttons at the base of the mirror to adjust the digital display. Menu button. Press to cycle through the possible adjustment modes. Brightness, roll, tilt, pan, and zoom. With an adjustment selected, the button performs as follows. Brightness up, roll left, tilt up, pan left, zoom in. With an adjustment selected, the right button performs as follows. Brightness down, roll to the right, tilt down, pan right, or zoom out. Warning. Intense light sources shining on the display surface reduce the display contrast making it harder to view objects on the display. On to the driver display. Driver display overview. The illustration below is for demonstration purposes only. The information displayed on your vehicle may have slight differences depending on the current software version and market region. Exterior lights, charge meter, estimated range, gear selector indicator, drive control indicator, turn signal indicators, vehicle warnings and alerts, speedometer, Fisker Intelligent Pilot Indicator, Navigation Widget, Information Widget, Drive Mode, Telltales or Warning Indicators, Front Seat Belts Reminder, Rear Seat Belts Reminder, and Drive System Ready Indicator. The brightness of the driver display can be adjusted via the central touchscreen. Warning Indicators or Telltales. The following icons may be displayed on the driver display to alert you to which features are operating or if there are any systems with faults. For further information, refer to the relevant section in this information. Warning indicators are specific to the vehicle specification and market configuration and may not be shown on some vehicles. Position lights on, low beam headlights on, high beam headlights on, auto high beam enabled, rear fog light on, drive control active, left turn signal active, right turn signal active, Fisker Intelligent Pilot available, Fisker Intelligent Pilot active, anti-theft system fault, Limp mode active. Charge cable connected. Vehicle charging reminder. 12 volt charging system fault. Drive motor fault. High voltage battery fault. System fault. Door ajar or open. Airbag fault. Seat occupied. Seat belt not fastened. Seat unoccupied. Seat occupied. Seat belt fastened. Ready to drive indicator. Parking brake enabled with a solid light. Park brake malfunction with a flashing indicator. Brake malfunction. Anti-lock braking system fault. ADAS fault or automated driver assistance system fault. Tire pressure wheel warning. TPMS or tire pressure monitoring system. Low tire pressure or system fault. Steering system fault. Drowsy driver. Grab steering wheel warning. Electronic steering assist active. Electronic steering assist off. Automatic emergency braking active or automatic emergency braking fault. Automatic emergency braking off. Lane departure warning active. Lane departure warning off. Electronic stability control active or electronic stability control fault. Electronic stability control off. Hill descent control active. Hill descent control malfunction. Auto hold active. Trailer hitch not locked in position warning. Trailer mode active. Bulb failure warning. Power usage. On the driver display, the background has a ripple effect that changes depending on whether the drive system is using or regenerating power. As you drive, the ripple changes as follows. When using power, the ripple is amber in color and moves outward. When gaining power through regeneration, the ripple is blue in color and moves inward. 
The ripple wavelength, for example, space between ripples, decreases as gained power increases, while the ripple amplitude, example height of the ripples, increases or decreases with the vehicle's speed. Battery state of charge indicators. On the driver display, the charge meter shows the current state of charge percentage of the high voltage battery pack, along with an estimated vehicle range based on the remaining charge. As you drive your vehicle or operate any of its features, the battery pack's charge is depleted, and these indicators reflect the change in state of charge and vehicle range. As the charge level approaches lower levels, the charge meter changes color. Between 100 and 21%, the state of charge will be white. Between 20 and 11%, the state of charge will be yellow. And under 10%, the state of charge will be red. When the remaining battery pack charge falls below 20%, a yellow low battery indicator illuminates on the driver display. If the state of charge falls below 20%, Fisker highly recommends that you consider finding somewhere you can charge the vehicle. Remember that the vehicle range is only an estimate and the actual drivable distance can vary according to environmental and terrain conditions. On to driver information. Vehicle information and alerts. Warning. Read all alerts and notifications carefully and follow any provided instructions as soon as possible. Do not drive the vehicle if you are cautioned not to do so. Vehicle alerts that immediately pertain to the driver display on the driver display, while lesser notifications appear in the upper left corner of the central touchscreen. Driver display alerts display using a round icon with a blue banner behind it. Driver display warnings display using a triangular icon. A yellow warning banner indicates a problem that the driver should attend to as soon as safely possible. Possible. A red warning banner requires the driver's immediate attention. Do not panic. Read and follow any listed instructions accordingly. If you are unsure of how to resolve your driver alert notification, contact Fisker via the Fisker app for assistance. Trip information. To view current trip information, select the lightning bolt icon, Trips. Current trip. Current trip displays distance traveled from when gear shifts to drive until gear shifts to park. Trip meter displays continuous distance traveled. To manually reset, press and hold the refresh icon. Odometer. The odometer displays vehicle lifetime distance. Onto the central touchscreen. Remember, I have a video on the infotainment system of the Fisker Ocean. If you'd like more detail on the central touchscreen, that video is in the description below. Central touchscreen overview. The status bar and main menu remain fixed on the center touchscreen. Other components of the display may resize depending on which features you are currently using. The following instructions provide a general layout as to where active features usually reside on the screen. Control mode. Status bar. ADAS and camera views. That's adaptive driver assistance systems. Main menu. Maps and navigation. Active window focuses on the currently selected feature, and media and phone. Hollywood mode, if equipped. Status bar, active window, focuses on the currently selected feature, main menu, and media and phone. Status bar, circle with initials is the current user profile. Circle with a slash is Alexa hands-free off. The cellular bars display your connectivity. And the Bluetooth icon displays your Bluetooth settings. Main menu, press an icon in the main menu along the left side of the central touchscreen, or the bottom, when in control mode, to view options. Home screen, maps and navigation, music, phone, charging, apps, climate, and settings. Button bar controls. The button bar located below the touchscreen contains an active touch display and physical buttons used to control certain climate and infotainment features. Driver temperature display, secondary function. Tap to activate or deactivate sync. When sync is activated, the temperate settings for the driver and passenger are synchronized to the setting on the display that initiated the sync. Fan speed display, secondary function, tap to turn the climate system on or off. Front defrost, rear defrost, volume display, secondary function, tap to mute or unmute the audio system. Passenger temperate display, secondary function, tap to activate or deactivate sync. Driver temperate buttons, if sync is activated, the buttons control the temperature for both front seating positions. Fan speed buttons, Home or Rotate button, press to return to the home screen on the central touchscreen. Press and hold to rotate the central touchscreen where equipped. Volume control buttons, passenger temperate buttons. Press and hold the buttons to rapidly change the temperature settings. If sync is activated, the buttons control the temperature for both front seating positions. Control and Hollywood modes if equipped. Where equipped, the central touchscreen can rotate 90 degrees between control and Hollywood modes. The central touchscreen can only be rotated when the vehicle is in park. To rotate between modes, press and hold the Fisker button on the button bar beneath the touchscreen. 
Caution. The central touchscreen can only be rotated by pressing and holding the button on the button bar below the touchscreen. Trying to manually rotate the touchscreen may damage the rotation mechanism or cause permanent damage to the touchscreen. When the central touchscreen is rotating, the steering wheel automatically moves to prevent a collision, then returns to its previous position. The ocean can only be shifted out of park when the central touchscreen is in control mode. If an attempt is made to shift gears while the central touchscreen is in Hollywood mode, the system sounds audible and visual alerts, and the gear selection does not change. Display brightness settings. To adjust the brightness of the displays, select the settings wheel, display. From this menu, you can select and adjust your preferred display theme and brightness level. The auto and automatic brightness options adjust these options automatically, depending on the currently detected light level. On to starting and powering off. Starting. Your vehicle does not require turning a key or pressing a switch to start it. If a valid key fob is recognized when the driver's door is opened, the driver display and central touchscreen power on, indicating the vehicle is ready to operate. Ready mode. Ready mode enables the driver to select D, drive, or R, reverse. You cannot put the vehicle into ready mode if a charging cable is connected to the vehicle. While sitting in the driver's seat, press the brake pedal to put the car in ready mode. The vehicle searches for a valid key fob. If one is detected, the vehicle is allowed to enter ready mode. If no valid key fob is detected, a message displays on the driver display. The ready indicator or telltale illuminates on the driver display when the key fob is detected and the brake pedal is pressed. Select a gear to drive the vehicle. Key fob not detected. If no recognized key fob is detected inside the vehicle when you press the brake pedal, a notification displays on the driver display. If the key fob is inside the vehicle and it is not being detected, try replacing the battery. If the vehicle still cannot be started, please contact Fisker via the Fisker app. A number of factors can affect whether the key fob is detected by the vehicle. These include a low key fob battery, interference from other devices using radio signals, and objects between the key and receiver. Key fob no longer detected. If your vehicle is in ready mode and the vehicle can no longer detect the key fob inside the vehicle, the vehicle will not power off immediately. The vehicle will power off after 15 minutes when a key fob is not detected and the vehicle is at a standstill. Example, not driving. Powering off. When you have finished driving and selected park, the parking brake engages and all systems remain operational. The doors automatically lock if you exit the vehicle and no keys are detected by the vehicle or after five minutes. Once locked, the vehicle powers off. On to selecting a gear. To shift out of park, the brake pedal must be pressed. Move the gear selector lever on the right side of the steering wheel up or down to change gears. The driver display displays the selected gear. If you try to shift into a gear that the current driving speed prohibits, a chime sounds and the gear will not change. Reverse. Pull the lever all the way up and release. You can only shift into reverse when the vehicle is stopped or moving less than 4 miles per hour, 7 kilometers per hour. The vehicle speed in reverse is limited to 15 miles per hour or 20 kilometers per hour. Neutral. Push the lever up or down to the first position and release to shift into neutral. Neutral allows the vehicle to roll freely. The vehicle automatically shifts into park when you open the the driver's door. Drive. Push the lever all the way down and release. You can shift into drive when the vehicle is stopped or moving less than 4 miles per hour or 7 kilometers per hour in reverse. Park. With the vehicle stopped, press the end of the gear selector to engage the parking lock in the front electric drive unit. Whenever the vehicle is in park, the electric parking brake applies when the driver's seat belt is unfastened and the driver's door is opened. If the gear is not in park when the driver's seat belt is unfastened and the driver's door is opened, the vehicle alerts you. On to drive modes. Your vehicle can be set to your preferred driving and regenerative braking modes. You can opt for more comfortable and less responsive vehicle controls in order to increase energy efficiency. The drive mode is selected via a button on the right steering wheel controls. Press the switch to cycle between drive modes. The current drive mode is displayed on the driver display to the left of the charge meter. Earth mode. Earth mode helps to lower energy consumption while driving. When activated, the driver experiences lower than average acceleration. Energy efficiency is maximized in this mode. Energy captured from regenerative braking is maximized in this mode. Fun mode. With fun mode activated, the driver experiences normal steering, acceleration, and energy efficiency. Regenerative braking is set to medium level in this mode. Hyper mode, if equipped. Hyper mode provides quick, powerful acceleration. Accelerator pedal has instant response and regenerative braking is set to the lowest level. Boost mode, if equipped. Warning, it is recommended that this mode is used only by advanced and skilled drivers in suitable environments. Caution, hard acceleration, including but not limited to using boost mode, increases the wear and tear on vehicle hardware. While hyper mode is selected, you can initiate a boost for a burst 
burst of maximum acceleration. To activate a boost, ensure that hyper mode is selected. Use the central touchscreen to select settings driving. Press to toggle boost on. To disable boost mode, press again to toggle boost off or select a different drive mode. Boosts are limited to protect the service life of the drive motors. The number of boosts remaining are displayed on this screen. When you have reached the maximum number of boosts, the central touchscreen notifies you and further boosts cannot be initiated. The vehicle automatically preconditions if needed. When boost is ready and it is safe to do so, reduce the level of speed to less than 4 miles per hour. Fully press and hold the accelerator pedal and feel the boost. If the vehicle preconditioning fails or if a boost is attempted before the system is ready, the central touchscreen displays a boost restricted notification and the boost will not activate. A boost ready notification displays when a boost is available. High Voltage Drive System Failure Driver display indicators, or telltales, related to the battery or drive motors are accompanied by warnings, information, and or instructions displayed on the driver display. High Voltage Battery Fault 12 Volt Battery Charging System Fault Drive Motor Fault System warning, for safety, a detected problem requires immediate attention or action. Warning, if any of the above telltales or notifications are displayed while driving, be prepared to slow down and stop the vehicle as soon as safely possible and call roadside assistance. On to drive control. Steering wheel controls. Drive control switch. Press to activate or deactivate drive control. Drive control speed dial. Scroll up or down to adjust vehicle speed with drive control active. Press to confirm. Drive control requirements. To enable drive control, the gear must be in drive. Drive control automatically cancels in any of the following situations. Brake pedal is pressed, parking brake is engaged, gear is shifted out of drive. Using drive control. Drive control is designated for your driving comfort and convenience. It is your responsibility to stay alert, drive safely, and be in control of the vehicle at all times. Watch the road in front of you and be prepared to take corrective action at all times. Failure to do so can result in serious injury or death. Do not use drive control on city streets or roads where traffic conditions are constantly changing. Do not use drive control on winding roads or icy or slippery road surfaces, or when weather conditions, example heavy rain, snow, or fog, make it inappropriate to drive at a consistent speed. Drive control allows you to maintain a set speed between 15 and 110 miles per hour, 20 and 190 kilometers per hour, without keeping your foot on the accelerator pedal. Drive control should be used for cruising on straight open highways. Drive control indicator. When drive control indicator is enabled, a blue indicator or telltale illuminates on the driver display with the current set speed listed beneath it. Enabling drive control. Press the drive control switch on the steering wheel. Accelerate to the desired cruising speed above 15 miles per hour or 20 kilometers per hour. Press and release the right steering wheel dial to set the cruising speed. The drive control indicator illuminates on the driver display to show the system is activated. Minimum speed 15 miles per hour. 20 kilometers per hour, maximum speed 110 miles per hour or 190 kilometers per hour. Drive control may not hold the set speed when you are going down hills. If your speed increases going down a hill, use the brakes to slow down. This cancels drive control. To resume set speed, press the drive control switch on the steering wheel. The indicator on the driver display illuminates again. Changing the set speed. You can change the set speed by using one of the following methods. Scroll up or down on the right steering wheel dial to increase or decrease the set speed, which adjusts accordingly beneath the drive control indicator. Press the accelerator pedal until you reach a new desired speed, then press the right steering wheel dial to set the new speed. Canceling and resuming cruising. To cancel drive control, press the drive control switch on the steering wheel. The system can also be canceled by tapping the brake pedal if it is safe to do so in the current traffic conditions. After drive control has been canceled, you can resume the previous set speed by pressing the drive control switch. Once once the vehicle is powered off, the drive control system does not save the previously set speed. It must be set again during the next driving cycle. On to exterior lights. Exterior lights controls. The exterior vehicle lights are controlled using the switch panel to the left of the steering wheel. Press to cycle between four exterior lighting states. The indicator next to the switch illuminates according to the selected state. Auto lights, low beams, position lights, or off. The exterior lights cannot be left on after the vehicle powers off. Auto lights. The low beam, headlights, taillights, and license plate lights automatically switch on when the ambient light falls below a predefined level. The lights switch off when the ambient light rises above that level. Position lights. The position or side marker lights indicator, or telltale, is displayed on the driver display whenever the position lights are on. Low beams. The low beam indicator or telltale is displayed on the driver display whenever the low beams are on. Light failure. 
If the vehicle detects that an exterior light is not working, a notification displays on the driver display. Daytime running lights. The functionality and operation of daytime running lights varies according to market requirements. In regions that require the vehicle's lights be on, even during the day, the daytime running lights automatically switch on when the vehicle is powered on and the exterior lights are off. The vehicle is powered on, the exterior lights are set to auto, and daylight conditions are detected. High beam headlights. The headlight high beams only operate if the low beams are on. To manually turn on the high beam headlights, push the left steering column lever away from you. To cancel, pull the lever towards you. The high beam indicator or telltale is displayed on the driver display whenever the high beams are on. Headlight high beam flash. You can flash the headlight high beams by pulling the lever fully towards the steering wheel and releasing it. Auto high beam controls. Warning. Auto high beam is an aid for selecting the best possible lighting based on prevailing conditions. The driver is still responsible for manually switching between high and low beam when traffic situations or weather conditions require this. Auto high beam is a feature that uses the vehicle's camera system to detect the headlights of approaching vehicles or the taillights of the vehicle directly ahead. When either of these is detected, the vehicle's headlights automatically switch from high beams to low low beams. The feature may also detect street lighting. When the camera sensor no longer detects an approaching vehicle or a vehicle ahead, the headlights return to high beams. To activate the high beam assist feature, the headlights must be operating in auto mode and then push the left steering column lever away from you. The auto high beam indicator or telltale is displayed on the driver display whenever the system is activated. If the system detects a fault, an indicator or telltale illuminates on the driver display and auto high beam is unavailable. Headlight high beams can still be operated using the left steering column lever. Automatic headlight adjustment. For your safety and that of other road users, your vehicle is equipped with automatic headlight adjustment. This system responds to changes in the vehicle's pitch, normally caused by factors such as vehicle load, acceleration and braking, and adjusts the headlight height accordingly. The system also automatically corrects their horizontal direction if the vehicle is driven in a country in which the traffic drives on the opposite side of the road than the vehicle's home country. With this feature, your headlights correct themselves instantaneously depending on the state of the vehicle, so that your lights do not distract or blind drivers in oncoming traffic. Rear fog light. Regulations concerning the use of fog lights vary from country to country. The rear fog light is considerably brighter than ordinary taillights and should only be used to help other road users see your vehicle in low visibility conditions such as fog or heavy snowfall. Press to turn the rear fog light on or off. The orange indicator light on the switch illuminates when the light is on. Low beams must be on in order to turn the rear fog light on. The rear fog light indicator or telltale is displayed on the driver display whenever the rear fog light is on. The rear fog light is automatically turned off each time the vehicle is powered on and should be manually turned on if required. Turn signals. The turn signals are activated by moving the left steering column lever down to operate the left turn signals or up to operate the right turn signals. The turn signals continue to operate until automatically canceled by the steering wheel or by returning the lever to the central position. When a turn signal is activated, the corresponding turn signal indicator or telltale flashes on the driver display. You can also hear a clicking sound when the turn signal is operating. Lane changes. To signal a lane change, momentarily hold the lever up or down against the spring pressure and then release. The turn signals flash three times to indicate a lane change. Hazard warning lights. The hazard warning lights can be operated even when the vehicle power is off and no key fob is detected. To turn on the hazard warning lights, press the switch located on the overhead console. All turn signals flash along with the turn signal indicators on the driver display. Press the switch again to switch off the hazard warning lights. You should only use hazard warning lights in an emergency to warn other road users of a breakdown or other potential danger. Remember to switch off when the hazardous situation has been resolved. Fisker Activate. The Fisker Activate welcoming sequence triggers when you approach the vehicle and unlock it. During Fisker Activate, some of the exterior lights, such as the ocean grill lamp and the puddle lights on the exterior mirrors, light up in an animated sequence. In addition, the door handles extend and the exterior mirrors unfold. On to interior lights. Interior lighting settings. To adjust interior lighting settings, select settings, lighting on the central touchscreen. Interior lamp delay. Press to set the time the interior lights remain on after all doors are closed before fading to off. Ambient lighting. When on, ambient lighting strips illuminate the dash, center console, and door panels whenever the vehicle is on. Brightness. Use the slider to customize the brightness of the interior lights to your personal preference. Overhead lights. The overhead lights automatically fade on when a vehicle door is opened and fade off when all the doors are closed. 
The overhead lights fade off after five minutes, even if the vehicle is off and a door remains open. The switches that manually control the front and rear overhead lights are located on the overhead console. Press a switch to turn the associated light on or off. Reading lights. Reading lights are available for the front seats and the rear outer seats. The switches that control the front reading lights are located on the overhead console. The rear reading lights are located on the roof rails near each rear outer seat. Tap the light to turn it on or off. Cabin lights. Various lights are positioned around the cabin to assist you in low lighting situations. These lights automatically fade on when a vehicle door is opened and fade off when all the doors are closed. The cabin lights fade off after five minutes, even if the vehicle is off and a door remains open. These lights illuminate the following locations. Front footwells, wireless charging pad, lower open storage area, floor beneath the rear of the center console. Depending on the options equipped to your vehicle, additional lights can be located in the door pockets and in the front cup holders. Trunk lights. Lights are located in the trim on the left and right sides of the trunk area. These lights fade on when the lift gate is opened via any command and fade off when it is closed. Depending on the options equipped to your vehicle, an additional light may be located on the lift gate trim. The trunk lights fade off after five minutes if the lift gate remains open, regardless of the vehicle's power state. On to wipers and washers. Wipers. Caution. Do not activate the wipers if they are frozen to the windshield. This could damage the wiper blades and the wiper motor. Caution. Do not activate the wipers on a dry windshield. This could damage or cause unnecessary wear to the wiper blades. If equipped, the wind Windshield wipers feature an automatic mode where the vehicle's rain sensor detects the rain on the windshield and activates the wipers as required. The wipers are controlled using the left steering column lever. Rotate the collar on the end of the lever to control the wipers as follows, starting with the lowest position. Off, automatic at low speed, automatic at high speed, low speed continuous wipe, high speed continuous wipe. Depending on the vehicle speed, the intervals between wipes reduces as the vehicle speed increases. Washers. Warning, operating the washers in cold weather could cause the fluid to freeze on the windshield, obscuring your vision and causing a collision. Use the windshield heater to warm the windshield to reduce the possibility of the fluid freezing. To spray washer fluid, press and hold the button on the end of the left steering column lever. The wipers operate with the washer. Release the button to stop the washer. After the button is released, the wipers make several extra sweeps. Caution. Do not operate the washers when the fluid reservoir is empty or frozen. This can cause the washer pump to overheat and fail. On to brakes. Braking systems. Warning. It is critical to occupant safety that your braking systems are always functioning properly. If you experience any issues with the brake pedal or receive any fault messages regarding the braking system, contact Fisker via the Fisker app immediately. Driving through heavy rain or water can have an adverse effect on braking efficiency. It is recommended that you lightly apply the brakes intermittently in order to dry the brake. Do not rest your foot on the brake pedal while the vehicle is in motion unless you are applying the brake pedal. The foot pedal hydraulically operated brakes are electromechanically assisted, but only when the vehicle is on. If the vehicle loses power when driving, you will need to apply more pressure on the brake pedal and you will experience longer stopping distances. If the red brake indicator or telltale illuminates on the driver display, a brake system fault has been detected. This is accompanied by a warning notification as to the specific fault. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app as soon as possible possible to have the brakes inspected. If the fluid in the brake reservoir drops below the recommended level, a warning notification displays on the driver display. Electronic Parking Brake, or EPB. Caution. In the unlikely event that your vehicle loses electrical power, you will not be able to select another gear and therefore will be unable to release the parking brake. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app for assistance. The electronic parking brake operates on the rear wheels only and is independent of the pedal-operated brake system. The parking brake automatically applies when park is selected and releases when the accelerator pedal is pressed in D or R. The driver's door must be closed and the driver's seatbelt fastened before the parking brake automatically releases. The EPB also applies automatically when the vehicle power is turned off. To manually release the EPB, hold the brake pedal and press the EPB switch on the dash to the left of the steering wheel. The red parking brake indicator or telltale is displayed on the driver display whenever the EPB is engaged. Caution. Always confirm the parking brake is applied, telltale illuminated, before leaving the vehicle. If the telltale is not illuminated, press the EPB switch. If the red parking brake warning indicator is flashing, a fault has been detected and the parking brake may not be applied. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app to have the fault repaired. Emergency use. Caution. Driving the vehicle with the EPB applied or repeated use of the EPB to slow the vehicle may cause serious damage to the brake system. In an emergency, pressing and holding the EPB switch gives a gradual reduction in speed. 
Releasing the EPB switch stops the deceleration if the vehicle's speed is less than 2 miles per hour or 3 kilometers per hour. The EPB automatically applies to bring the vehicle to a stop. Parking on a slope. Warning. In snowy or icy conditions, the rear wheels may not have sufficient traction to prevent the vehicle from sliding when parked on a slope. You are always responsible for parking safely. As an added precaution, if your vehicle is parked on a hill and facing uphill, turn the steering wheel so the front wheels are pointing away from the curb. If your vehicle is parked on a hill and facing downhill, turn the steering wheel so the front wheels are pointing towards the curb. Anti-lock braking system. Warning. Always maintain an appropriate stopping distance from the vehicle in front. ABS cannot overcome the physical limitations of trying to stop the vehicle in too short a distance, cornering at too high a speed, or the danger of hydroplaning, for example, where a layer of water prevents adequate contact between the tires and the road surface. The braking distance on road surfaces that are wet, slippery, or loose is always increased, even for vehicles equipped with ABS. Always drive with due care and attention attention to your surroundings and road conditions. ABS does not correct driver errors. Your vehicle is equipped with an anti-lock braking system that prevents the wheels from locking during hard braking or when braking on roads with reduced grip. During braking, the ABS monitors the speed of each wheel and varies the brake fluid pressure at each wheel to prevent the wheels from locking. This system helps maintain steering ability during maximum brake application. When ABS activates, you may experience the following conditions. Pulsations in the brake pedal, a slight drop of the brake pedal, clicking or grinding noises, or the ABS warning indicator flickering on and off as the system activates. These conditions demonstrate that ABS is operating and are not a cause for concern. Maintain a firm and steady pressure on the brake pedal while experiencing the pulsation. Emergency braking. Warning. Do not pump the brake pedal. This interrupts the operation of the ABS system and increases your stopping distance, which could lead to a collision. In an emergency, fully press the brake pedal even when the road surface is slippery. ABS warning indicator. The ABS indicator, or telltale, displays on the driver display, along with a notification message. If the indicator is flashing, a fault has been detected. If the indicator remains displayed, the system has been disabled. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app as soon as possible to have the fault repaired. Caution. If the ABS indicator is displayed, the foot-operated braking system remains operational. Be aware that braking distances may increase and wheels may lock under heavy braking. Regenerative braking. Warning. If driving the vehicle in reduced traction conditions, for example, icy or snowy conditions, the use of high regenerative braking level may cause the ABS to operate more frequently. Fisker recommends switching to standard level when driving in such conditions. Whenever the vehicle is moving and your foot is off the accelerator, regenerative braking slows the vehicle and feeds energy back to the high voltage battery. While you still could use the brake pedal whenever needed to stop safely, you can take advantage of regenerative braking by anticipating your stops and reducing or removing pressure from the accelerator pedal to slow down. If regenerative braking is aggressively slowing your vehicle, such as when your foot is completely off the accelerator pedal at highway speeds, the brake lights turn on to alert others that you are slowing down. When gaining power through regeneration, the background of the driver display displays a blue ripple that moves inward. The amount of generated energy being fed back to the high voltage battery can vary depending on the current state of the battery and the regenerative braking setting being used. For example, regenerative braking may be limited if the battery is extremely hot or cold or if the battery is already charged to its maximum allowable level. Regenerative braking level settings. Caution. While it is possible to change the regenerative braking setting while driving, Fisker recommends that this be done when the vehicle is in park. On the central touchscreen, select Settings, Driving. Then press to select between three levels of regenerative braking. Low provides the minimum amount of regenerative braking. When you release the accelerator, the vehicle takes longer to slow down and coasts further than if it is set to medium. Medium provides the standard amount of regenerative braking. High provides the maximum amount of regenerative braking. When you release the accelerator, the vehicle slows down faster, reducing the need to use the brakes. Brake pad wear. Warning. Neglecting to replace worn brake pads can damage the brake rotors and reduce the vehicle's braking efficiency. The brake pads installed on your vehicle are equipped with electronic pad wear sensors, which monitor the thickness of the brake pads. If the system detects excessive brake wear, the red brake indicator, or telltale, displays on the driver display and the notification, brake pad replacement recommended, is displayed on the central display. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app as soon as possible to have the brakes inspected. On to ride control systems. 
Electronic stability control. Warning. No electronic system can remove the need for safe driving practices. Although the ESC system can help to maintain control of the vehicle, it cannot prevent any accident which may result from the vehicle turning at too high a speed or from careless or dangerous driving techniques. The ESC system uses various sensors to monitor driver inputs and vehicle motion. Under certain driving conditions, the system helps perform the following functions. Controls brake pressure to reduce wheel slip on one slipping drive wheel so power is transferred to a drive wheel on the same axle that is not slipping. Controls brake pressure and traction motor output to reduce drive wheel slip based on vehicle speed. Controls brake pressure at individual wheels and traction motor output to help the driver maintain control of the vehicle in the following conditions understeering and oversteering. If the ESC system operates while driving, the indicator or telltale flashes on the driver display. ESC cannot be disabled by the driver. However, the level of control on monitored systems is reduced when the vehicle is in hyper mode. If the ESC system is disabled or a fault is detected, the indicator or telltale persistently illuminates, or no flashing, on the driver display throughout the drive cycle. Getting maximum range. Driving tips to maximize range. Remove any unnecessary cargo to reduce vehicle load weight. Ensure your tires are maintained at their specified inflation pressures. Keep all windows closed when possible to reduce drag. Avoid abrupt and or frequent acceleration. Try to maintain an even speed. When it is safe to do so, use less pressure on the accelerator to gradually slow the vehicle instead of using the brake. Switch to earth mode if road conditions allow and you are able to safely handle the vehicle's reduced control responses. Limit the use of heating and air conditioning controls when possible. Using seat heaters to keep warm is a more energy efficient alternative than heating the entire cabin. Cameras. Interior camera. The interior camera is located on the left A-pillar and is used solely to monitor the driver's attentiveness and alertness. Exterior cameras. Your vehicle is equipped with exterior cameras at the points illustrated above. The exterior cameras are used for rear view monitoring, as well as various driving assistance features. Selecting camera views. On the central touchscreen, tap a camera icon to activate a view. Automatic. Available in parking scenarios only. Uses obstacle detection to toggle between camera views based on object proximity. Front wide view, only available in drive when vehicle speed is below 10 miles an hour or 16 kilometers per hour. Vehicle must first exceed 10 miles per hour or 16 kilometers per hour in order to activate feature. Cross traffic view, available in reverse. Also in drive until the vehicle exceeds 10 miles per hour or 16 kilometers per hour. 3D surround view, if equipped. Available in drive and reverse when vehicle speed is below 10 miles an hour or 16 kilometers per hour. Rear view, available in drive and reverse when vehicle speed is between zero and 130 miles per hour or zero and 210 kilometers per hour. Camera system failure. In the event of a camera failure, the driver display displays a notification. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app to have the camera system inspected. On to heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Climate controls. Cabin heating, ventilation, and air conditioning are controlled by the central touchscreen, the button bar beneath the central touchscreen, and, if equipped, the rear control panel. Cabin climate controls will also be able to be controlled using the Fisker app with a later update. Central touchscreen climate controls. To open the climate control screen, select the fan icon on the central touchscreen. The power indicator turns all climate controls on or off. Sync. When sync is activated, the temperature settings for the driver and front passenger are synchronized. If sync is activated, using the driver or passenger temperature buttons controls temperature for both front seating positions. AC, press to turn air conditioning on or off. Auto, fan speeds, vent modes, AC, and circulation modes are all automated by the system based on the set temperature when the feature is on. The circulation function, press to turn recirculation on and cabin air continuously recirculates. Turn off to draw fresh air in from the outside. The fan icon, tap to turn a vent on or off. Press and drag to change the direction of the vent. Seat heater button, press to control seat heating for the corresponding seat. Rear lock button, Press to enable or disable the rear climate control panel where equipped. Button bar climate controls. These controls are located beneath the central touchscreen. Rear control panel, if equipped. When equipped, the rear climate control panel is located on the rear seat armrest. 
Fold the armrest down to access the panel. Turn all climate controls on or off. Displays the current temperature setting for the rear seating positions. Press minus or plus to adjust. Displays the blower fan speed setting for the rear seating positions. Press minus or plus to adjust. Displays the current enabled or disabled status of the rear control panel. The rear control panel can only be enabled or disabled by the central touchscreen. Press to control seat heating for the corresponding seat. Displays the current airflow state for the rear seats. Press the left or right indicator to cycle between settings. Rear audio volume control. If the windshield defog or defrost is turned on via the front controls, the rear control panel climate controls are paused. Once the windshield defog or defrost is turned off, the panel controls are enabled. Seat heating and volume controls remain available when the rear control panel is paused. Depending on your vehicle's options, limo mode may be available for use with the rear control panel. Defrost. The exterior side mirror defrost feature activates when the front or rear defrost buttons are activated. Windshield defrost. To defrost the windshield, press the front defrost button on the bar below the central touchscreen. The icon highlights when activated. Once pressed, heat and fan speed switches to high settings and airflow is directed toward the vents at the base of the windshield. When front defrost is activated, any changes to the temperature controls via the central touchscreen cancel the feature. To deactivate, press the windshield defrost button again and the system reverts to the previous climate control settings. If the windshield defog or defrost is turned on, the rear control panel, if equipped, pauses the climate controls. Once the windshield defog or defrost is turned off, the rear panel controls are enabled. Seat heating and volume controls remain available when the rear control panel is paused. Rear window defrost. To defrost the rear window, press the rectangular defrost button on the bar below the central touchscreen. The icon highlights when activated. Once pressed, the heating elements in the rear window will turn on. Press the rear defrost button again to turn rear defrost off manually. The rear defrost automatically turns off after 15 minutes. Limo mode, if equipped. Your vehicle options may allow for limo mode to be enabled. This mode activates when a rear passenger uses the rear control panel. In limo mode, the rear control panel controls the climate and audio volume controls for the entire vehicle, not just for the rear seats. Limo mode does not disable the front climate and volume controls when activated. Limo mode can be overridden if the driver presses climate, rear lock on the central touchscreen to disable the rear climate control panel. It is also overridden by any input to the climate controls via the central touchscreen or the button bar. On to interior equipment, sun visors. To use a sun visor, fold it down from its stowed position. For your convenience, the sun visor can also be pivoted towards the side window by releasing it from the remaining clip, arrowed. Make sure the sun visor is secured by the retaining clip when returning it to its stowed position. An additional flap can be folded down to provide more shade and to access the mirror underneath it. Both sun visors have a covered mirror. Raise the cover to use the mirror. An integrated light automatically turns on when the cover opens and off when the cover is closed. An integrated light automatically turns on when the cover opens and off when the cover is closed. Cabin storage precautions. Warning, ensure all loose items are secured, all storage lids are fully closed, and all trays are stowed before shifting out of park. Loose items can roll under the foot pedals and interfere with their operation, resulting in loss of vehicle control and a collision. In a collision or during heavy braking, loose items can be thrown around the cabin at dangerous speeds, which could result in death or serious injury. Items sitting on trays during acceleration or braking can spill onto the driver, causing distraction and a loss of vehicle control. Center console. Open storage space is available beneath the center console. Pull the handle on the armrest cushion and lift up to reveal the storage storage space beneath. Taco trays. Warning, ensure all trays are stowed before shifting out of park. Objects on open trays could interfere with the deployment of the airbags or be launched into the vehicle as an airbag inflates, causing serious injury. Occupants could be injured if thrown into an open tray during heavy braking. Do not exceed the maximum load of 11 pounds or 5 kilos on a tray. Driver taco tray, if equipped. A fold-out tray for the driver is located within the center console to extend the tray for use. Open the armrest on the center console, then swivel the tray assembly fully upright. Close the armrest. 
fold the tray arm down towards the driver, pivot the tray towards the driver, and unfold the tray. Stowing the tray is the reverse of the extension procedure. Passenger taco tray. Press on the center of the tray edge to release. Pull the tray fully forward. To stow the tray, push it back into the slot in the dash until you feel it latch into place. Storage boxes, if equipped. Warning, ensure the storage boxes are closed and securely latched before driving the vehicle. Loose objects in the vehicle can interfere with the foot pedals, which can cause loss of vehicle control or a collision. Caution, do not exceed two pounds or one kilo when storing items in a storage box. Storage boxes are located underneath both front seats. To open a box, rotate the handle clockwise to unlatch. Pull forward and down on the handle. After closing a storage box, ensure the handle is fully rotated counterclockwise. Pull on the handle to make sure it is securely latched. Rear armrest. Warning, the rear armrest must not be used as a seat or booster cushion for small children. Children must be seated in a seat suitable for their size and weight to reduce the risk of injury in a collision. Use the tag to pull down the center armrest. Caution, remember to remove items and close the cup holders before folding the armrest up. Push the armrest up to close. Door pockets. All four doors have pockets for storing smaller items. Front seat back hooks. Hooks are located on the back of each front seat and can be used for hanging lightweight items such as a jacket. Cup holders. Cup holders are located in the front center console and the rear armrest. To access the cup holders in the rear armrest, fold the armrest down, then fold the front of the armrest forward. Caution, remember to remove items and close the cup holders before folding the armrest up. On to accessory connections, USB connections. Data transfer to and from the vehicle is available via the USB ports. USB ports can be found in the following areas. The storage compartment on the front center console contains one USB-A and one USB-C port. These ports support device charging and data transfer. Two USB-C ports are located on the rear of the front center console. Do not use a USB hub to connect multiple devices to any USB ports on the vehicle. This may prevent some devices from charging. Wireless charging. Dependent upon vehicle specification, one or two wireless charging pads are located in the center console. The Qi charging logo identifies where a charging pad is installed. To charge a mobile phone with wireless charging capability, remove the phone from its case and place the phone with the back of the phone in contact with the pad. Phones may not charge if certain protective cases or other accessories interfere with wireless charging abilities. Larger cameras on certain phones may also interrupt charging abilities. 12 volt socket. Warning. Close the 12 volt socket cover when not in use. If this outlet is mishandled, it may cause an electric shock. Do not use a socket with a missing or damaged cover. Caution, the 12 volt socket should not be used with a cigarette lighter. Lighters could potentially cause heat damage in the socket. A 12 volt socket is located in the trunk. Power is available through this socket when the vehicle is on. Although the 12 volt socket is primarily provided for use with the tire repair kit, it can also be used for other accessories requiring up to 10 amps or a maximum of 120 watts. AC power outlet. Warning, close the 120 volt power outlet cover when not in use. If this outlet is mishandled, it may cause an electric shock. Do not use a power outlet with a missing or damaged cover. An AC power outlet is located in the trunk. Power is available through this outlet when the vehicle is on and enabled from the charging screen on the central touchscreen. The outlet can support accessories requiring up to 13 amps and a maximum of 1.5 kilowatts. External power outlet. Warning, disconnect the external power adapter and close the charge port when not in use. If this assembly is mishandled, it may cause electric shock. Do not use the external power adapter if it appears damaged. The external power adapter provided with your Ocean can be connected to the vehicle's charge port to be used as a power outlet for AC powered accessories. Once connected, this feature can be enabled from the charging screen on the central touchscreen. Pedestrian Warning System, Acoustic Vehicle Alerting System, or AVAS. Warning, the AVAS system does not replace your responsibility as a driver to stay alert and aware of your surroundings while operating the vehicle. Because electric vehicles run silently, this vehicle is equipped with an AVAS system that emits a continuous sound 
to warn pedestrians of its presence. Sound activates when the vehicle is in drive or reverse and the vehicle speed is less than 20 miles an hour. The sound is active even when the vehicle is stationary. Volume cannot be adjusted. AVAS cannot be disabled. On to trailer towing. General trailering information. Warning, never transport any people or animals in a trailer as there is risk of fatal injury. Your vehicle may come equipped with an optional tow package. This section contains many tips and safety rules on trailer towing or trailering that are important for the safety of you and your passengers. Read this entire section carefully before towing a trailer. Trailer mode. When your vehicle detects an electrical connection has been made with the trailer connector, it automatically enters trailer mode. This adjusts the drive mode for enhanced towing capabilities. The trailer mode indicator or telltale illuminates on the driver display when the vehicle detects a trailer attached to the vehicle's hitch. When trailer mode is activated, certain ADAS functions may be enabled or disabled depending on how they relate to pulling a trailer. If the trailer does not have brake lights or its lights are defective, the trailer will not be detected by the vehicle and trailer mode will not be activated. Driving characteristics and trailering tips. Warning, when towing a trailer, you can lose control of the vehicle if the proper equipment is not used, the trailer is not loaded correctly, or the vehicle is not driven properly. You and others could be seriously or even fatally injured. Caution, towing a trailer improperly can cause severe damage to the vehicle and the repairs are not covered by the warranty. Driving with a trailer. Warning, do not drive over 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour when towing. Exceeding this speed could cause loss of vehicle control. When towing, familiarize yourself with and obey all state and local laws that apply to trailer towing. These requirements vary from state to state. State laws may require the use of extended side view mirrors. Even if not required, you should install extended side view mirrors if your visibility is limited or restricted while towing. Adhere to local speed and weight requirements. The rear tire pressure must be increased at least 20 kPa or two tenths of a bar over the standard recommended pressure before driving. Before driving with a trailer, ensure correct installation and connection of the trailer's electronic connector to the vehicle and ensure that the trailer mode indicator is illuminated on the driver display. Do not drive over 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers per hour. Towing affects the handling, acceleration, braking, durability, and energy economy of your vehicle. To get accustomed to these changes, practice driving on a level road surface before driving on public roads. The trailer structure, the tires, and the brakes must all be rated to carry the intended cargo. Inadequate trailer equipment can cause the combination to operate in an unexpected or unsafe manner. Before driving, inspect all trailer hitch parts and attachments, safety chains, electrical connectors, lamps, tires, and mirrors. During the trip, occasionally check that the cargo and trailer are secure and that lamps are working. Trailering with electronic stability control. When trailering, the ESC system may activate, which is normal. This system reacts when the trailer affects vehicle movement. Following distance, to avoid heavy braking or sudden steering corrections, stay at least twice as far behind the vehicle ahead of you as you would when driving without a trailer. Driving on downhill grades. Before starting down a long or steep downhill grade, reduce your speed. If the brakes have to work too hard to slow the vehicle and the additional trailer weight, they may overheat and result in reduced braking efficiency. Turning. Caution. When turning a trailer, move more slowly and make wider arcs. Making sharp sudden turns could cause the trailer to contact the vehicle, resulting in damage that would not be covered under the warranty. Use your turn signals earlier than usual to alert other drivers. Make slower, wider turns than normal when towing. The outside edge of the trailer has to clear all curbside hazards while turning, example street signs, mailboxes, and trees. Avoid sudden braking or steering movements. Passing. Avoid passing on steep upgrades or downgrades whenever possible. Passing on level roads is safer and less prone to trailer sway. Use your turn signals earlier than usual to alert other drivers. Remember that your vehicle will not accelerate as quickly because it is pulling extra weight. More passing distance is needed due to the additional length of the trailer. And after you have passed a vehicle, make sure you allow for the extra length of the trailer before returning to the lane. Backing up. Caution. Avoid exaggerating exaggerated turns, as this can jackknife the trailer and cause damage to your vehicle, which would not be covered by the warranty. Always back up slowly. When you steer your vehicle in reverse, the trailer moves in the opposite direction. Holding the steering wheel at the bottom with one hand can help you to visualize which way the trailer will move. Move that hand to the left to steer the trailer to the left. Move that hand to the right to steer the trailer to the right. 
Longer trailers are less sensitive to steering adjustments than shorter trailers and can require wider turns. Use your mirrors and perform visual checks throughout your maneuvers to avoid collisions. Installing extended side view mirrors can help increase visibility of your surroundings. If possible, have another person guide you. To correct excessive turns, steer the vehicle the same way the trailer is moving or pull forward in drive and try again. Parking on slopes and hills. When parking a vehicle with an attached trailer, it is recommended to park on a level surface whenever possible. If you must park on a hill or slope, press and hold the brake pedal, then curb your wheels accordingly. Turn towards the curb if facing downhill or towards traffic if facing uphill. Have another person check the trailer wheels while you continue to hold the brake pedal. Gradually release the brake pedal to allow the chocks to absorb the load of the trailer. Press the brake pedal again and shift into park. Then apply the electronic parking brake. Release the brake pedal to leave the parking space. With the vehicle powered on, press and hold the brake pedal. Shift into drive and release the EPB. Release the brake pedal and drive forward slowly until the trailer is clear of the chocks. Use the brake pedal to stop the vehicle and have another person collect the chocks. Handling trailer sway. If you notice the trailer beginning to sway or fishtail while driving, immediately release the accelerator pedal. Do not apply the brake pedal. Hold the steering wheel straight in your lane. Attempting to correct the sway by steering will only make it worse. Allow your vehicle to slow down on its own. If cruise control is engaged, disengage it. Once you have regained control, pull over to a safe area. Check any cargo in the trailer to see if it needs to be secured or redistributed. If you begin driving again, maintain a slower speed. Stay at least 10 miles per hour, 16 kilometers per hour, under the speed at which you noticed the trailer sway starting. Have your hitch inspected by Fisker to ensure it is not defective. Replace if necessary. Some common causes of trailer sway include wind gusts, whether related or from passing high-profile vehicles, poor driving conditions, example uneven or slippery road surfaces, excessive speed, or low tire pressure. Maintenance when towing. The vehicle needs service more often when used to tow trailers. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app for information and advice on maintenance for vehicles that frequently tow trailers. Check periodically to see that all fasteners on the trailer hitch are tight. Trailer weight ratings. Warning, the maximum permitted tongue weight of the trailer drawbar on the trailer hitch ball head must not be exceeded. For safety, Fisker recommends always using the maximum permitted tongue weight, but do not exceed this weight. Having the tongue weight too low affects the vehicle's handling. Use a tongue weight scale, a bathroom scale, or a public way station to determine the tongue weight. Load distribution. Distributing the cargo in the trailer correctly helps to achieve the maximum permitted tongue weight. The following tips for maintaining a proper load balance can help stabilize the trailer and minimize sway during driving. The vehicle should always carry the heaviest possible load and the trailer should have the lightest possible load. Store cargo in the vehicle whenever possible. Distribute the trailer's load so that the heaviest objects are as close to the axle as possible. Secure all cargo so that objects do not shift in transit and utilize the maximum permitted tongue weight if possible. Towing equipment. Warning, never mount a weight distributing or load balancing trailer hitch. The vehicle is not designed for these types of trailer hitches. The trailer hitch can malfunction and the trailer can detach from the vehicle. Do not modify or attempt to repair the trailer hitch. Unauthorized modifications or repairs can lead to a malfunction and the trailer can detach from the vehicle. Connecting and disconnecting a trailer. Warning, ensure that the vehicle and trailer are stationary and secured. Example, trailer wheels chalked, vehicle brakes applied, before connecting or disconnecting them. Unexpected vehicle movement can result in death, personal injury, and property damage. The connection or disconnection of a trailer should take place when the trailer is stationary. An unwanted movement of the vehicle should be avoided. Before connecting or disconnecting a trailer, to avoid unexpected rolling, connection and disconnection of a trailer should be performed on level ground, not hills or slopes. Shift the vehicle into park once it is positioned and chalk all trailer wheels. Trailer hitch, if equipped, North America. Warning, to prevent injury or damage, always remove the ball hitch mount 
from the vehicle when it is not in use. Remove the two plugs on the underside of the hitch cover, then pull to remove. Only use a Fisker authorized trailer hitch with a removable ball hitch mount and ball hitch. The trailer hitch must be permitted for the vehicle, the trailer, and the permitted total weight of the trailer being pulled. Above all, it must be securely and safely attached to the trailer. Never mount a trailer hitch on the bumper. The trailer hitch must be mounted in a way that does not impair the function of the bumper. Do not make any changes to the brake system. Check regularly if the trailer hitch is securely mounted. Always follow the instructions given by the trailer hitch manufacturer. Electronic trailer hitch, if equipped, Europe. Warning, keep people and objects clear of the path of the trailer hitch when extending or retracting. To prevent injury or damage, always return the electronic trailer hitch to the stowed position when not in use. To extend the electronic trailer hitch, the following conditions must be met. Vehicle is stationary. Lift gate is open. Press the trailer hitch switch located on the right side of the trunk interior. When the previous conditions have been met, the LED on the switch illuminates. The indicator light will flash until the tow bar is moved into the saved position. Example working or parking. Ensure that the ball neck is locked securely and in the end position. If the switch is pressed a second time within four seconds while the indicator light is lit, the tow bar will unlock and then manually move to the working or parking position until locked. If no second press of the switch is performed within four seconds while the indicator light is lit, the indicator light is turned off. To unlock Unlock the ball neck. To move it to its stowed position, unplug the electrical connector and detach the trailer from the ball neck. Safety chains. Safety chains should always be attached between the vehicle and the trailer. Installation instruction for safety chains may be provided by the trailer manufacturer. Cross the chains under the trailer coupler to help prevent the tongue from contacting the road if it becomes separated from the hitch. Leave enough slack in the chains for turning tight corners, but do not allow them to drag on the ground. Trailer wiring harness if equipped. Caution. When attaching a trailer wiring connector to your vehicle, use only a properly fitting connector that works with the vehicle and trailer functions. A connector is available to bring the necessary power and related functions to the trailer you are towing. North America. The seven pin connector is located to the right of the hitch. It is accessible when the hitch cover is removed. Europe. The 13 pin connector is located on the hitch arm. It is accessible when the hitch is extended. On to advanced driver assistance assistance systems. Parking assist. Parking assist does not consider objects located outside the range of sensors or not visible to the cameras. Continually check your surroundings throughout your parking maneuvers. Be prepared to apply the brake and take control to avoid pedestrians, vehicles, or objects. This feature assists during parking maneuvers by providing visual and audible guides when reversing at low speeds. With parking assist enabled, the central touchscreen displays the steering path and obstacle graphics while reversing. Audible chimes indicate your proximity to detected obstacles in your path. Parking assist is only available at speeds below 12 miles per hour, 20 kilometers per hour. Parking assist settings. Select settings, driving assistance on the central touchscreen, then press to turn steering guide on or off when in reverse. 2D, 3D surround view system. Warning, the surround view system should not be used as a replacement for looking into the interior and exterior mirrors or looking over your shoulder when operating and parking the vehicle. Always inspect your surroundings with your own eyes. This feature uses the camera system to provide a real-time view of your vehicle's surroundings on the central touchscreen to help you navigate in tight spaces and avoid obstacles. Two types of camera views are available, 2D and 3D. Available on the central touchscreen depends on the current vehicle speed and gear selection. 2D view. 2D views are direct feeds from the associated camera. These views include front, as seen from the front of the vehicle, front wide, a wide angle view from the front of the vehicle, split, as seen from the side mirror cameras, rear, as seen from the rear of the vehicle, and rear wide, a wide angle view from the rear of the vehicle. 3D view. 3D views are composite views in which multiple camera feeds are stitched together. These views include left flank, 
view of the left side of the vehicle, right flank, view of the right side of the vehicle, and 3D surround, 360 degree surround view of the vehicle. Surround view system limitations. In addition to the limitations of advanced driver assistance components, the surround view system may not function correctly in these situations. The lift gate, the hood, or a door is not closed, or the side mirrors are folded. On to infotainment. Infotainment illustrations. Our goal at Fisker is to provide you with an incredible ownership experience. After you receive your vehicle, it will receive over-the-air updates as new features, technology, and experiences become available. Dependent on software version, region of purchase, and specific settings, your central touchscreen may display slightly differently from the illustrations in this section. If you have questions regarding the infotainment system, please check the Fisker mobile app for additional information or contact the Fisker customer assistance team. Before you begin, before diving into the many infotainment features and experiences available to you, Fisker recommends that you first familiarize yourself with the central touchscreen. Steering wheel media controls. The left steering wheel controls relate to media, audio, phone, and voice commands. Voice assistant, back or previous, forward or next, phone control, and volume control. Scroll up or down to control volume. Press to mute or unmute. Media and audio overview. On the central touchscreen, select the music note. From the main music menu, press to select between radio, Bluetooth, or streaming audio services, allowing you to directly control and personalize your apps. Many third-party media applications require a data connection and login information, and some services are subscription-based. Refer to the provider for more information. Not all music or audio streaming services are available in all markets. The player for selected media appears at the bottom of the central touchscreen when in control mode, and on the right side when in Hollywood mode. During active phone calls, any active media is paused and the player is replaced with the phone controls. Once the call is ended, media playback automatically resumes. Searching media content. Some audio experiences have a search bar you can use to find specific content. The on-screen keyboard will automatically appear when you tap the search bar field. Adding to favorites. Some audio experiences have the ability to favorite a song or station. If present, press the heart icon next to a song or station to add it to your favorites list for that audio application. Radio. Choose FM or select favorites to access your personalized list. Radio settings. Press the settings wheel in the upper right corner of the radio screen to customize your preferences. Audio streaming services integration. On the central touch screen, tap the music note for a list of available third-party media. Many third-party media applications require a data connection and login information, and some services are subscription-based. Refer to the provider for more information. Playing media from devices. The infotainment system can also play Play media from devices paired to your vehicle via Bluetooth. Select Bluetooth to browse to your connected device, then press it to open options. When interacting with third-party media applications, you are subject to the application's use and privacy policies associated to your account with the third-party media provider. Audio settings. On the central touchscreen, select the settings wheel audio to access your vehicle's audio settings. Select from three customized equalizer presets, then touch and drag the slider to adjust a setting. Swipe up on the screen to scroll down and access sound stage. From here, you can select the area where you wish to direct the sound system output. If equipped, you can also press to turn DJX 3D Surround on or off. Maps and Navigation Navigation Overview To access maps and navigation, select the pin icon on the central touchscreen. This screen will display your current location on the map according to the vehicle's GPS. Navigating For some live navigation features, enrollment into Fisker Connected Services is required and a data connection must be present. To navigate to a location, you can select a destination in several ways. Tap in the search field to bring up the on-screen keyboard and enter an address. Tap on the map to select a location. Tap home to select your home location. Tap the star icon to select a location from your favorites list. Tap the charging icon to locate nearby charging stations. Tap the food and drink icon for a listing of nearby food and drink locations. 
When you select a location, you can press Route to view the selected route and press Drive when you are ready to begin navigating. At this point, audible and visual turn-by-turn -turn navigation begins and is displayed on both the central touchscreen, as shown above, and on the driver display. Some navigation features require enrollment into Fisker-connected services and a data connection must be present. Adjusting the map. The map centers around your current location by default. The map can be rotated or zoomed in and out via the central touch screen. Use the icons around the map as follows. Tap the settings wheel to open navigation settings. Tap the volume icon to mute or unmute audible navigation directions. Anytime the map is manipulated, tap the arrow to return to your current position. Tap X to stop navigating. Setting home and favorite destinations. Frequent destinations such as your home or workplace can be designated accordingly in the system, allowing you quick access within the navigation menus. Tap home to enter and save your home location. Tap home thereafter to select it as a destination. Tap the star icon to bring up your list of favorite destinations. Tap the add favorite button at the bottom of the list to enter a new destination. Then tap the save button to add it to the list. Tap the three dots next to a favorite to edit or delete that entry. Offline mode. When your vehicle does not have an available wireless internet connection, the navigation system will pull from any existing map data that was previously downloaded. Any results resulting information displayed will not include live traffic conditions. Map updates. When a data connection is present, updated maps are automatically downloaded to your vehicle as they become available. To ensure your system has the latest information, make sure your vehicle is regularly connected to a network. Navigation settings. Tap the settings wheel on the navigation screen for options. Map settings. Buildings in 3D. Tap to toggle on or off. Downloaded maps. Tap to view a list of maps downloaded to your vehicle. Planning and travel settings. Use this menu to select features you wish to avoid on your route. Bluetooth compatibility. When in operating range, you can pair a Bluetooth capable phone with your vehicle for hands-free use. To use your phone with the vehicle, you must pair it first. Up to 10 devices can be paired to the vehicle, and two devices can be connected simultaneously. Paired devices can be prioritized to sync phone and or audio information to the vehicle. Other Bluetooth capable devices can also be paired to your vehicle for use, such as an iPad or Android tablet. Pairing a Bluetooth device. Pairing a phone to your vehicle enables you to place and receive hands-free calls and to access your phone's contacts, messages, recent call list, and compatible apps. Once a phone is paired to your vehicle, it will automatically connect whenever it is in range. To pair a device. Ensure that the device to be paired is in hand, powered on, and has Bluetooth enabled. On the central touchscreen, tap Settings, Connectivity. Set Bluetooth to on, then tap Available Devices. The system will scan for Bluetooth-enabled discoverable devices in range. Tap your device's name when it appears. If your device's name does not appear when the scan has completed, check that the conditions in Step 1 are met and press Scan for Device to scan again. When the pairing process begins, you will be prompted as shown. Compare the six-digit pairing codes displayed on your device and the central touchscreen. If they match, tap Confirm to continue. Tap to toggle on or off your sync preferences, then tap done to continue. Permissions may be required from the mobile device for these features to work correctly. The mobile device will prompt you with its own dialog. These settings can be updated later if you wish to change them. Tap done when pairing is successful. Tap yes if you wish to allow Alexa access to your device's contacts and SMS messages, or cancel to disallow and continue. The prompt above is only shown when you are already signed into Alexa on the vehicle. Otherwise, skip to the next step. When pairing setup is completed, your device's name will appear under paired devices on the connectivity screen. Device Syncing and Preferences. Under Settings, Connectivity, you can edit your preferences for devices listed under Paired Devices. Tap the phone icon or the music icon next to a device to receive calls and or audio from that device through your vehicle. Tap the three dots to access more options. Sync Preferences. Tap to turn that device's sync options, phone calls, contacts, text messages, and music on or off. Disconnect, Unpair, and Rename.
Tap to edit the name of the device as it appears on the central touchscreen. Connecting and disconnecting Bluetooth devices. When a paired phone enters or exits the range of your vehicle, it will connect or disconnect automatically. If you wish to connect to a different paired device, select the settings wheel, connectivity. Alternately, tap the Bluetooth icon in the status bar. Tap the three dots next to the device you wish to connect or disconnect. Tap connect or disconnect. Unpairing a Bluetooth device. If you no longer wish to use a device with the vehicle, select Settings, Connectivity. Tap the three dots next to the device you wish to unpair. Tap Unpair. At the prompt, tap Yes to confirm unpairing or cancel to return to the connectivity screen. Using the phone app. Warning. Distracted driving can lead to loss of vehicle control and a collision, which can result in serious injury or death. Fisker strongly recommends that the driver stay focused on the road at all times while driving. Safe operation of the vehicle is the driver's primary responsibility. Always ensure that you are following all applicable local laws regarding the use of phones while driving. This includes, but is not limited to, laws that prohibit texting and require hands-free phone operation at all times. Tap the phone icon on the central touchscreen to access your connected phone. From here, you can select from the following options. Recents. View a list of recent calls to and from a synced phone. Tap a listing to initiate a call. Contacts. View a synced device's contact list. Tap a contact to call their primary number. Tap the arrow to view their information. Keypad. Open the keypad to make manual calls. Making a phone call. Initiate a call via any of the following options. Select from your contacts list and tap the name to call that contact's primary phone number. To call a secondary phone number, tap the arrow next to a contact to reveal their details, including associated phone numbers. Tap the number you wish to call. Tap a number in your recents list to initiate a call. Open the keypad and dial the number you wish to call. If voice assistant is enabled, you can say, Alexa, call, name of contact, and Alexa places the call. Contact syncing for Alexa must be enabled. If it is safe and legal to do so, you may also make a call using the phone you have paired to your vehicle. Receiving a phone call. Incoming calls display as notifications on the central touchscreen. If your phone contacts have been synced to the vehicle, any contact information for that caller will be displayed. Press the hang up icon to decline or the answer icon to accept the call. Press the preset message to text a reply to that contact. Press the answer button on the left steering wheel controls to accept the call. Your phone may prompt you to select the audio output for the call, depending on the type of phone and last output used. In call options, calls display in place of media content on the central touchscreen. During an active call, press the microphone icon to mute or the muted microphone icon to unmute. Press the keypad icon to access the keypad. You can also use the left steering wheel controls, scroll the dial to adjust the call volume, or press to mute or unmute. Press the hang up button to end the call. Using messages. Warning, distracted driving can lead to loss of vehicle control and a collision, which can result in serious injury or death. Fisker strongly recommends that the driver stay focused on the road at all times while driving. Safe operation of the vehicle is the driver's primary responsibility. Always ensure you are following all applicable local laws regarding the use of phones while driving. This includes, but is not limited to, laws that prohibit texting and require hands-free phone operation at all times. Incoming messages display as notifications on the central touchscreen. If your phone contacts have been synced to the vehicle, any applicable contact information will be displayed. Press the play button to have the message read aloud. The button will toggle to pause if you wish to stop playback. Press the answer phone icon if you wish to call that contact. Press the preset message to respond to the sender with the listed automated response. On to apps. On the central touchscreen, select the apps icon to view available apps. Select your preferred streaming service to get started. Login information and streaming service subscriptions are required for some apps. Video streaming is only available when the gear is in park. If another gear is selected, the video will pause until park is selected. On to connectivity. Cellular connection. Your vehicle has a built-in cellular connection to provide access to data services when not on Wi-Fi. Your phone and vehicle must be actively connected to cellular service to allow the Fisker app to communicate with your vehicle. Add a Wi-Fi network. Your vehicle can be connected to a Wi-Fi network in order to send and receive data, which is often faster than cellular network. 
networks. Fisker recommends leaving Wi-Fi enabled and connected to a network whenever possible, so as to receive software updates in a timely manner. To add a new Wi-Fi network, on the central touchscreen, select Settings Connectivity. Ensure Wi-Fi is on, then tap Add Network. At the prompt, enter the network name and password. If the connection succeeds, the network name appears under Wi-Fi. Using your vehicle as a hotspot, you can set up a password-protected Wi-Fi hotspot on your vehicle so that other devices can use its data connection, subject to fees, restrictions, and data limits of Fisker Connected Services. Creating a hotspot. On the central touchscreen, select Settings, Connectivity, and tap Create Wi-Fi Hotspot. Enter a name for the hotspot and a password of your choosing, then press Create. Passwords must be at least eight characters with one uppercase and lowercase letter, one number, and one special character. The new hotspot will appear in the Wi-Fi hotspot list. Using a hotspot. On the connectivity screen, you can tap to turn the hotspot on or off. To connect a device to the vehicle, you can manually enter the hotspot name and password on the device, or scan the QR code displayed on the central touchscreen. Deleting a hotspot. To delete an existing hotspot, tap the recycle bin icon next to its name and confirm when prompted. Alexa built-in. Alexa is a cloud-based voice service that can help you with your tasks, entertainment, general information, and more. Alexa is often personified as her or she. Whether you're at home or on the go, Alexa is designed to make your life easier by letting you voice control your world. Using Alexa is as simple as asking a question. Just ask her to play music, read the news, control your smart home, tell a joke, and more. Alexa is happy to help. Alexa is integrated into your vehicle and can be used when you sign in with your Amazon account. Alexa, Amazon Echo, Amazon, and all related logos and motion marks are trademark of Amazon.com Incorporated or its affiliates. Use of Alexa is subject to Amazon's use and privacy policies. Alexa Settings. Select Settings Voice Assistant to access Settings. From here, you can sign in to Alexa and customize your experience. In addition to using voice commands, you can also enable Push to Talk allowing you to activate Alexa by pressing a button on the steering wheel. For examples of available voice commands, press Things to Try. Using Alexa. Alexa's status is indicated by the colored bar running along the top of the central touchscreen. A blue bar with a cyan highlight indicates that Alexa is listening or thinking. When Alexa speaks, the bar will brighten to cyan. Any answers or options that she may display will appear in the notification area. If the bar flashes red, this indicates that Alexa hands-free is not enabled or an error has occurred. Ensure that Alexa hands-free is enabled under Settings, Voice Assistant. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app if errors persist. Using smart home devices with your vehicle. If you use Amazon Echo and Alexa smart home devices, these can be accessed via your vehicle if you are signed into Alexa and have an active data connection across devices. On to vehicle information. Viewing vehicle information. On the central touchscreen, select Settings, Vehicle and Service to view your vehicle's model name, model year, Edition Number, and VIN. The VIN can also be found at other locations on the vehicle. Direct Access Owner's Information. On the central touchscreen, select Settings, Vehicle and Service, then tap Owner's Manual to view. This information is saved to your vehicle and can be viewed offline. It is recommended that you keep Wi-Fi connected when viewing in order to receive the latest version of this information. The owner's information can also be viewed within the Fisker app and on the Fisker website. On to software updates. Over-the-air updates. Your vehicle supports wireless software updates, giving you continued access to new features and improvements. Fisker recommends installing these updates as soon as they become available. Prerequisites for updates. Do not leave passengers or pets in the vehicle during updates. The door locks will be inoperable. The interior temperature of the vehicle can quickly rise to dangerous levels which can result in death or serious injury. Your vehicle must be shifted to park before starting an update. Because some updates can take a few hours to install, the vehicle battery must be charged to at least 30% before installation. Charging is paused during the update installation process. Unplug the charging cable before starting an update. Ensure that your vehicle has an internet connection with a strong signal in order to receive updates quickly and without interruption. 
All occupants must exit the vehicle and lock the doors before the update begins. During the update, the vehicle locks and doors will be inoperable, and the gear selection will be locked in park. In an emergency, pull twice on an interior door handle to unlock that door. Do not leave valuables in the vehicle while it is updating. Downloading over cellular data. If your vehicle will not be within range of a Wi-Fi network at the time of an update, you can opt to use the vehicle's cellular data. Select the settings wheel software on the central touchscreen. Under download options, press the toggle button to turn cellular data usage for software downloads on or off. Update notifications. When a software update becomes available, a notification appears on the central touchscreen. Press to schedule the update at 2 a.m. the next morning or tap dismiss to schedule at a later time. Ensure that all update prerequisites will be met at the scheduled time. View available updates. On the central touchscreen, select Settings Software. If a software update is available, the update information and estimated installation time will be displayed here. Tap Schedule to schedule the update at 2 a.m. the next morning. Ensure that all update prerequisites will be met at the scheduled time. Tap Install Now to begin the update if you are ready and update prerequisites have been met. View scheduled updates. When schedule is selected from the update notification or the settings software screen, you can view the scheduled installation time under software, along with the estimated installation time. From here, you have the option to cancel the scheduled installation or tap install now to begin. Install an update. When a scheduled update begins or you tap install now on the central touchscreen, a five minute timer displays. Ensure that all occupants have exited the vehicle and the doors are locked before the timer ends. The update installation begins five minutes after the timer ends. The installation process is displayed on the central touchscreen. If an update fails to install, if a failure was due to a prerequisite not being met, resolve the issue and try installing again. If a failure was due to another reason, contact Fisker via the Fisker app for assistance. Viewing release notes. Fisker strongly recommends that all users read the release notes for every software update. They can contain important information about your vehicle, including safety information or new operating instructions. Release notes relate to the most current available software version. To view release notes, on the central touchscreen, select Settings Software. Then tap the Release Notes button to view the release notes. On to rebooting and resetting systems. Rebooting infotainment. There may be a time where you find it necessary to reboot the infotainment system, example if an error occurs in an app. This can be done without turning the other vehicle systems off and on. Rebooting the infotainment system does not sign out of any apps or delete any saved information. To reboot the infotainment system only, press and hold the two inner steering wheel buttons as shown until the central touchscreen turns black. If rebooting the infotainment system does not resolve your issue, contact Fisker via the Fisker app for assistance. Rebooting the vehicle. In rare instances, you may find it necessary to reboot your vehicle. Example if an error occurs. This process essentially turns the vehicle off and on without having to remove any keys from the area. Rebooting the vehicle does not delete any saved information such as profiles or vehicle settings. To initiate a vehicle reboot, press and hold the brake pedal. Continue holding throughout the process. Shift the gear into park. Press and hold the two bottom steering wheel buttons as shown until the driver display and central touchscreen turn black. If rebooting the vehicle does not resolve your issue, contact Fisker via the Fisker app for assistance. Resetting the vehicle. A situation may arise, such as when selling your vehicle, where you wish to wipe all personal information from the vehicle and restore it to its default factory settings. When a factory reset is performed, if a profile has been saved to the vehicle, it is deleted. The guest profile is active after the reset. The guest profile returns to its default factory settings. All apps and services are signed out. All vehicle settings are restored to their factory defaults. Once a factory reset is performed, it cannot be undone. To initiate a factory reset, shift the gear into park. On the central touchscreen, select the settings wheel, software. Then tap the reset vehicle settings button. You will be prompted to confirm your choice. Tap the reset button to continue. The reset will start five minutes after all occupants have exited the vehicle and the doors are locked. 
If a factory reset fails, a notification will display on the central touchscreen. If a failure was due to a prerequisite not being met, example battery state of charge was too low, resolve the issue and try resetting again. If a failure was due to another reason, contact Fisker via the Fisker app for assistance. On to high voltage battery pack and charging. Electric vehicle components. High voltage components. Warning, the high voltage system in this vehicle has no user serviceable parts. Do not disassemble, remove, or replace high voltage components, connectors, or cables. High voltage cables are usually colored orange for easy identification. Warning, in the unlikely event that a fire occurs, immediately contact your local fire emergency responders. For your safety, always read and follow the instructions and warnings written on all labels attached to your vehicle. Power distribution unit, PTC heater, high voltage cables, photovoltaic integrated unit, AC power outlet, rear drive unit, high voltage battery, charging port, PTC heater, AC compressor, front drive unit. This symbol indicates risk of electrical shock if a component is mishandled. Proceed with caution when working in this area. On to battery information about the vehicle batteries. Warning, only Fisker should service the battery pack. Improper handling can result in death or serious injury. There are two types of batteries powering your vehicle. The 12 volt battery powers the standard low voltage systems, such as climate controls, door locks, and airbags. The high voltage lithium ion battery powers the propulsion system and recharges the 12 volt battery. Your vehicle has a high voltage to low voltage energy transfer feature that keeps the 12 volt battery charged by the high voltage battery. If the 12 volt battery level is low, the high voltage battery transfers energy to the 12 volt battery. Please recycle the 12 volt battery in accordance with local regulations. The high voltage battery should be recycled by Fisker. Battery pack care. Storage temperature. Avoid exposing your vehicle to ambient temperatures above 131 degrees Fahrenheit or below negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Prolonged exposure can greatly reduce battery pack life and performance. Keep your vehicle sheltered or parked in a garage whenever possible in extreme cold weather. Preserving battery pack health. When your vehicle is left idle and unplugged, the battery pack gradually discharges over time. Allowing the battery pack to completely discharge to 0% could cause permanent damage. Whenever possible, it is recommended to charge your vehicle while it is not in use, especially over long periods of time, such as when in storage. Battery pack life and performance are greatly improved by regular charging. When the battery pack's charge level falls below a certain range, the state of charge indicator on the driver display will change color to alert you. Go to the nearest charging station as soon as possible in order to avoid a vehicle shutdown. Above 20%, white or gray, below 20% amber, 10% or lower red. When the remaining battery pack charge falls below 20%, a low battery warning indicator illuminates on the driver display. If equipped, your solar sky roof harvests additional free energy from sunlight to support your vehicle's high voltage battery. On the central touchscreen, select the charging icon, Energy and swipe left to view the live solar energy draw rate, as well as solar sky energy gains by week, month, year, or lifetime of your vehicle. Some features may only be available in future releases. Charging instructions. Safety checklist. Warning. If you have any concerns with the condition of a wall outlet, the charge port, or the charging cable, do not use them. Seek assistance from a qualified electrician or contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Before charging your vehicle, check the following items. If using a domestic wall outlet, inspect the outlet and do not use it if it appears damaged or worn. Inspect the charging cable and connector for damage, including frays or cracks. If a part appears damaged, do not use it. If the charging cable is damaged, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Ensure that the charging cable is fully uncoiled before use. Check that the charging connector and charge port are clean and unobstructed. If you find any contamination or foreign object in either part, do not use them and contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Check that the charging cable and charge port are dry. Ensure your hands are dry and there is no water or other fluids in the surrounding area, such as puddles on the ground. 
Portable charging cable. A portable charging cable is available for your vehicle as an option, which is stored in the trunk, subject to late availability. Caring for the portable charging cable. Observe the following precautions to ensure your charging cable is not lost or damaged. Return the cable to its storage place in the trunk when not in use. Do not kink or place undue stress on the charging cable. Do not drop the charging cable or expose it to impacts. Do not use cleaners or solvents on the charging cable. Remove surface stains using a cotton pad dipped in a small amount of rubbing alcohol. Keep the charging cable out of reach of children. Do not expose the charging cable to flames or other heat sources. Only use the charging cable at temperatures between negative 22 Fahrenheit and 122 Fahrenheit or negative 30 C and 50 C and only store at temperatures between negative 40 Fahrenheit and 212 Fahrenheit, or between 40 and 100 degrees C. On to charge port door. The charge port door is located on the left side of your vehicle, above and slightly behind the front wheel well, opening and closing the door. The vehicle must be unlocked to open the charge port door. Press twice on the illustrated area to open the charge port door. Caution: If the charge port door has iced over in cold weather conditions, do not attempt to break the ice using blunt force. For example, hitting or chipping at it with a tool, as this could cause damage. If the charge port door has iced over, Fisker recommends pressing normally on the illustrated area above. The force of the charge port door opening is usually sufficient to crack the ice and open the door at least partially, enabling you to pry it open with your fingers. Charging the vehicle. Plug the charging cable into the charge port. During charging, the battery system's heating and cooling functions monitor the temperature of the battery pack and will turn on or off as needed to help maintain an ideal temperature. Clicking or fan noises are normal. Errors during charging. In the rare instance that an error occurs during the charging process, the charge port light will turn orange and flash. If this happens, details and instructions will be displayed on the central touchscreen. If following the steps in the displayed instructions does not resolve the error, contact Fisker via the Fisker app for further assistance. Stopping charging. If necessary, the central touchscreen can be used to stop charging before the process is completed. Select the charging icon, Charge. Then press the Stop Charging button. The screen indicates that charging has stopped. When stopping during AC charging, the button text changes to Resume Charging, should you wish to continue. Disconnecting the charging cable. Once charging is completed, press the button on the charging cable and pull to disconnect it from the charge port. The vehicle cannot be driven when the charging cable is connected to the charge port. If you attempt to shift out of park, You will receive a notification on the driver display that the cable is connected and the gear will not change. The vehicle can be driven while the charge port door is open, but you will receive a notification on the driver display indicating it is open. Emergency manual charging cable disconnect. Caution. Manually releasing the charging cable is only recommended in instances where the charging cable button will not release it from the charge port. If pressing the button on the charging cable will not release it, the vehicle has a manual disconnect. Open the driver's door and locate the manual release cable between the door and the A-pillar. In parallel, gently pull both the manual release cable and the charging cable. Caution: Pulling the release cable too forcefully could cause damage. Charging status. You can check the progress of the charging process via the light on the charge port and the central touchscreen. Charge port light. The charge port light indicates the current charging status. Refer to the following table to understand the meaning of each light color and pattern. Solid aqua blue is idle or charging stopped. Aqua blue flashing is communication. Solid green is charging in progress. Flashing orange is charging error. Flashing purple is discharging in process. When charging is completed, the charge port light will change to solid aqua blue. Once charging begins, the central touch screen displays the current charging status, including time remaining to completion. If you navigate away from this screen, you can return to it by selecting the charge icon, Charge. Setting Battery Saver Caution! Charging beyond the recommended level too often can cause battery pack degradation. At times, you may need to adjust the charge limit higher or lower according to your driving needs. A higher charge limit can be set to increase trip distance. Vehicles that are parked for extended periods should use a lower charge limit to maintain battery pack health. To set a charge limit, select the charge icon, Charge. Battery Saver. Use the plus and minus buttons to adjust the charge level. To extend battery life, Fisker 
Anchor recommends setting a charge level of 80% for daily usage. Max charging current. Use the plus and minus buttons to adjust the maximum amperage drawn by the charging system. This setting only applies to AC charging. Adjust this setting if you are concerned about overloading a shared domestic wiring circuit. For additional charging options, swipe left on the charge screen. Off-peak charging. To prioritize charging times and reduce energy costs, Press to turn this setting on, then use the set time buttons to set your starting and ending charging times. Minimum charge. To charge to a set minimum when the charge cable is connected, turn this setting on and select a percentage. This setting can be used when storing your vehicle for extended periods. Cold weather charging considerations. Caution. Do not allow your vehicle to be exposed to extreme temperatures for long periods without being driven or connected to a charging cable, as this can negatively affect battery pack life. When not driving your vehicle, it is recommended that the vehicle be plugged in and charging when the temperatures are below negative 4 Fahrenheit or negative 20 C. In very cold weather, the energy in the high voltage battery becomes limited and you may experience a reduction in range. If the high voltage battery is too cold to charge when a charging cable is connected, the central touchscreen will display a notification and the charging process will not start. DC charging precaution. Caution. Fisker recommends limiting the amount of DC charges. Frequent use of DC charging can negatively affect the efficiency and service life of the high voltage battery. Charging times can vary based on battery condition, charge level, and ambient temperature. You can charge your vehicle from an alternating current source or or from public direct current charging stations. Typical DC charging stations offer higher charging power and shorter charging times. Using public charging stations. Caution! For charging stations with an attached charging cable, it is recommended to perform a visual check of the station before use for obvious defects, such as damage to the charging cable. If a defect is observed or suspected, do not use the station, as it could damage your vehicle. Most public charging stations must be activated before the charging process can begin. Example, using a charging service mobile application, RFID card, or other authentication methods. Please refer to instructions instructions provided by the on-site operator for the charging station. Coming soon, power bank. Fisker Ocean is equipped with a bi-directional onboard charger which can enable the direct charging of another electric vehicle. This upcoming feature is known as vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle, or V2V charging. Check out the Fisker website for updates on power bank and more revolutionary future features. On to maintenance. Maintenance requirements. Your responsibility. The safety, reliability, and performance of your vehicle depends partly on how well it is maintained. Maintenance is the owner's responsibility and you must make sure the appropriate maintenance is carried out when required and according to the recommendations specified by Fisker. Scheduled maintenance. Fisker recommends entrusting a Fisker service center to perform the majority of the regular servicing and maintenance of your vehicle. Fisker service centers have the specialized knowledge and equipment necessary to ensure the best possible service and care for your vehicle. Fluid replacement. Fisker will replace the necessary fluids in your vehicle during your regularly scheduled service intervals. Owner maintenance. Warning. Some fluids used in electric vehicles are poisonous and should not be consumed or brought into contact with open wounds. These fluids include brake fluid, battery acid, battery coolant, and windshield washer additives. Always read and obey all instructions printed on fluid container labels. Any significant or sudden drop in fluid levels or uneven tire wear should be rectified immediately. In addition to scheduled maintenance performed by Fisker, you must carry out a few simple checks more frequently. Details are provided in the remainder of this section. Daily checks. Look for fluid deposits underneath the vehicle that might indicate a leak. A small puddle of water may collect under the vehicle if the air conditioning has been running, which is normal. Check the charge level level of the battery displayed on the driver display. Check the operation of the seat belts, horn, wiper and washer, turn signals and all exterior lights. Check the operation of the brakes and ensure that the electric parking brake automatically engages when the vehicle is in park. Check the windshield washer fluid level and top off if needed. Check the pressure, wear and condition of each tire. Check the vehicle mileage to determine whether the tires are due to be rotated. Warning: If you discover abnormalities during these checks, such as uneven tire wear or a sudden drop in fluid levels, contact Fisker immediately. Electrical and high voltage safety. Warning: Always disconnect the charging cable before working underneath the vehicle, regardless of whether or not it is charging. Some cooling fans operate even when the vehicle is powered off. Keep hands, hair, clothing, and tools 
clear of the fan blades at all times. While your vehicle was built with the safety of you and your occupants as first priority, it is important to be aware of the risk of injury associated with high voltage systems and protect yourself accordingly. Read and follow the directions on all safety labels attached to the vehicle. There are no user serviceable parts in your high voltage system. Do not attempt to access the high voltage system or disassemble, remove, or replace any system components. All high voltage cables are colored orange for easy identification. In the event of a collision, never touch any high voltage wiring, connectors, or components connected to the wiring, even if you think the vehicle may not be powered on. There is a risk of fatal injury by electrocution if the system's high voltage is still active. High voltage wiring and connectors are colored orange for easy identification. High voltage components have warning labels attached. Examples of high voltage warning labels. Should a fire occur, contact your local fire fire emergency responders immediately, as they possess the proper training and equipment to safely extinguish fires in electric vehicles. Only attempt to extinguish electric vehicle fires using a Class D powder type fire extinguisher. Multi-point inspection. Your vehicle should be given a full multi-point inspection service every six months or 6,000 miles, whichever comes first. The Fisker app will remind you when it is time to service your vehicle. This service includes inspections and checks for the following systems, general checkup and diagnostic work, tire check, rotation and balancing, and washer fluid refill. Your vehicle will also be given a road test to inspect its current driving condition, such as pedal operation, vehicle handling, and steering alignment, and to check for any abnormal operational noises. On to power unit compartment access. Opening and closing the hood. Warning, never work on a vehicle that is plugged in. Always remember to unplug the vehicle before working under the hood or underneath the vehicle. To maximize interior cabin and rear cargo space, critical vehicle systems are located in the power unit compartment. This compartment is designed to be accessed only by factory trained Fisker technicians and should be opened only in emergency situations. Opening the hood. Caution, improper tools or improper use of the trim removal tool could damage the service lid. Caution, use caution when removing the service lid to avoid damaging the paintwork. To open the hood and gain access to the power unit compartment, you will need a trim removal tool and a ratchet with adapter, minimum 150 millimeter and hex socket, 13 millimeter. Using a plastic trim removal tool, apply careful pressure to release the clips securing the service lid in place. Remove the service lid. Remove the two bolts securing the hood. Torque 19 Newton meters. Raise the hood fully and ensure the hood hinge lock on the left arm engages before releasing. Closing the hood. Caution. Failure to release the locking pin before closing may cause damage to the hood. Hold the hood with one hand. With your free hand, press the release lever on the left arm to disengage the hood hinge lock. Gently lower the hood. Before tightening the bolts, check and adjust the hood alignment to the other panels to ensure there are no gaps. Position the service lid and press it into place. Power unit compartment overview. Coolant reservoir. Low voltage battery fuse box. 12 volt battery. Brake fluid reservoir. Engine compartment fuse box. Checking brake fluid. The information provided in this section is provided for reference purposes only. It is strongly recommended that the servicing of all vehicles fluids be entrusted to Fisker. Low brake fluid warning indicator. Warning. If a brake fluid warning notification displays while driving, stop as soon as safety permits by gently applying the brakes. Do not continue driving. Contact Fisker immediately. If the fluid in the brake reservoir drops below the recommended level, you will receive a warning notification on the driver display. Checking the fluid level. Check the brake fluid level with the vehicle on level ground. Open the hood. Check the fluid level visually by using the outside marks on the side of the reservoir without removing the filler cap. The brake fluid level should always be between minimum and maximum marks. Although brake fluid levels drop slightly during normal use as a result of brake pad wear, it should not drop below the minimum mark. Excessive or frequent fluid loss may indicate a leak in the system. Topping off brake fluid. Warning, only use new fluid from a sealed airtight container. Never use previously used fluid or fluid from a previously opened container. 
Excess moisture in the brake fluid can cause a dangerous loss of braking efficiency. Warning, brake fluid is highly toxic. Keep containers sealed and out of the reach of children. If accidental consumption of brake fluid is suspected, seek immediate medical attention. Warning, do not allow brake fluid to come in contact with your eyes. If this happens, Flush your eyes with clean water for at least 15 minutes and seek immediate medical attention. To top off the fluid, clean the filler cap before removing to prevent dirt from entering the reservoir. Unscrew the cap and remove. Fill the reservoir to between minimum and maximum marks using a clean funnel and brake fluid meeting specification DOT4. Install the reservoir cap. Caution! Brake fluid will damage painted surfaces. Immediately soak up any spills with an absorbent cloth and wash the affected area with a mixture of car soap and water. Replacing brake fluid. The brake fluid should be replaced every 2 years or 24,000 miles, whichever comes sooner. Checking washer fluid. Check the level of the washer fluid monthly or more frequently if you use it often. If the quantity of the fluid remaining in the washer reservoir drops below the recommended level, you will receive an alert notification on the driver display. Operate the washers periodically to check that the nozzles are clear and properly directed. If a washer jet performs poorly, see cleaning washer jets. Topping off washer fluid. Warning, in temperatures below 4 degrees C or 39 degrees Fahrenheit, use a washer fluid with de-icer. In cold weather, using a washer fluid without de-icer can impair visibility through the windshield. Some national or local regulations restrict the use of volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. VOCs are commonly used as antifreeze in washer fluid. Use a washer fluid with limited VOC content only if it provides adequate freeze resistance for all climates in which you drive. The washer fluid reservoir is located at the base of the windshield. Press to open the cover. Fill the reservoir until the fluid is visible just below the filler neck. Close the cover. Caution! Washer fluid can damage painted surfaces. Wipe up any spills immediately with an absorbent cloth and wash the affected area with water. Checking coolant. The coolant in your vehicle will be checked and replaced when necessary by Fisker during your regularly scheduled service intervals. On to wiper blades and washer jets. Checking the wiper blades. Caution! Only use cleaning products which have been approved for use on automotive glass and rubber. Inappropriate products may cause damage, smearing, or increased glare on the screen. You should periodically check and clean the wiping edge of your wiper blade. Clean the blade edge using a soft cloth or sponge and isopropyl or rubbing alcohol or windshield washer fluid. Also, check the blade rubber for cracks, splits, or roughness. If any damage is found, replace the blade immediately to prevent damage to the glass. Replacing wiper blades. For optimum performance, replace the wiper blades at least every two years. Life expectancy of wiper blades can vary, depending on geographical area and frequency of use. Poor wiper blade performance can result in chattering, example skipping across the glass, or leaving behind marks, streaks of water, or wet spots. If any of these conditions are present, clean the wiper blades or replace them as needed. Caution: Only install wiper blades that meet the specification for that blade's position. Failure to do so can cause damage to the wiper system. On the central touchscreen, select Settings, Vehicle and Service. Under Windshield Wipers, press to toggle Service Access Position to On. The wipers move to a vertical position. Depress the locking tab while sliding the wiper blade away from the arm and remove. Installation of the new wiper blade is the reverse of removal. You should be able to hear and feel it click into place on the wiper arm. On the central touchscreen, press to toggle service access position to off. The wipers return to their normal position. Wiper blade specifications. Blade position, left or driver's side, 27.5 inches or 700 millimeters. Right or passenger side, 15.75 inches or 400 millimeters. Cleaning washer jets. Warning, do not operate the washer jets during cleaning. Windshield washer fluid may cause irritation to the eyes and skin. Always read and observe the washer fluid manufacturer's instructions. Washer jet nozzles are located at the base of the windshield. If a washer jet nozzle becomes clogged with debris or buildup, its performance can be reduced. There are several methods for removing any blockage. Dip a small, soft bristled brush, such as an old toothbrush, in warm water and scrub in and around the nozzle to clear away any dirt or debris. Use a can of compressed air to blow a concentrated stream of air into the clog to loosen it. 
and to blow away any debris from the nozzle. For more serious clogs, slide a thin piece of wire into the nozzle to clear any blockages. Replacing the cabin air filter. Your vehicle has a cabin air filter installed that prevents pollen, industrial fallout, road dust, and other particles from entering the vehicle via the vents. The cabin air filter will be replaced by Fisker when needed during your regularly scheduled service intervals. To gain the maximum benefit of the cabin air filter, it is suggested the filter is changed prior to the pollen season. If you operate your vehicle in an environment where there is more dust or sand in the air, the air filter may require replacement more frequently. Cleaning the exterior. Warning, never charge your vehicle while washing it. Unplug the charging cable and close the charge port cover. Liquids entering the charge port while the cable is plugged in could result in serious personal injury, as well as damage to the vehicle, charging equipment, or property. After washing the vehicle, wet brakes can result in longer stopping distances. To dry the brakes, drive the vehicle slowly while gently pressing the brake pedal a few times to warm up the brakes. Your vehicle should be washed regularly to preserve the finish and maintain its overall appearance. To protect the paint surfaces, wash your vehicle as soon as possible when mud, dust, soot, or dirt builds up on the surface, after driving on coastal roads or winter roads treated with salt, when corrosive contaminants such as tree sap, bird droppings, or bugs collect on the surface, or after rainfall to prevent possible damage from acid rain. Any paint damage attributed to environmental influence or the use of an unauthorized clean cleaning product, abrasive cleaner, car wash, buffing, or polishing is not covered by the vehicle warranty. Environmental. It is illegal to pollute drains, rivers, and waterways. Some cleaning products contain chemicals that are hazardous to the environment. Used toxic chemicals must be disposed of at authorized waste disposal sites only. Always take precautions to prevent fluids from spilling. Caution. Avoid using rough or tightly napped cloths, such as washing mitts, on the vehicle, as these can be abrasive enough to damage the finish. Caution. Avoid washing your vehicle in direct sunlight. Water and cleansers dry fast on a hot surface and can leave water spots or stains. When washing your vehicle by hand, follow these steps. Rinse the entire vehicle first to remove as much excess dirt and dust as possible and reduce the risk of scratches from washing. Wash using a clean, soft cloth or sponge and cold or lukewarm water mixed with a mild car soap. Rinse your cleaning tools often to avoid rubbing debris into the finish, especially if your vehicle is exceptionally dirty. Do not aim water hoses directly at window, door, or hood seals, or through wheel apertures onto brake components. After washing, rinse the vehicle thoroughly with clean, cool water until all the soap has been removed. To avoid leaving water spots on the finish, dry the vehicle thoroughly with a chamois or cotton cloth. Removing tar spots. Caution. Do not use acidic, abrasive, or petroleum-based cleansers, as these can damage the vehicle's paint and the plastic or metal parts. You can use denatured alcohol to remove tar spots and stubborn grease stains from paint. After cleaning, immediately wash the area with soapy water to remove the alcohol. Caution. Fisker strongly recommends against using automatic car washes on vehicles with matte finish paint. Do not use a car wash that applies cleansers containing acid. Acid can react with the plastic in some vehicle components and damage them. Always check with your car wash to confirm that acid is not used. Leave the windshield wipers in the off position while in a car wash to avoid damaging them. Fisker recommends using touch-free automatic car washes that do not bring brushes or other cleaning tools in direct contact with the vehicle body. Vehicle or paint damage caused by using an automatic car wash is not covered under the vehicle warranty. Pressure washers. Warning. Do not use a pressure washer on orange high-voltage cables or connectors or high-voltage components marked with a high-voltage warning label, lightning bolt on yellow background. Failure to do so could result in death, serious personal injury, and damage to the vehicle. Caution. Do not use a pressure washer with a circular jet or bristle attachment, as it could damage the surface finish of components. Caution. Pressure washers which have a pressure exceeding 1200 PSI or 82 bar can damage or even remove vehicle paint if used improperly. Do not use a hot or steam pressure washer with a temperature exceeding 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 48 degrees see, as this could remove paint and surface protection from exterior parts. Keep the nozzle at least 12 inches from the surface of the vehicle. Always keep the nozzle moving and do not concentrate the spray on a single area. Do not aim the pressure washer at any of the following. 
door or window seals, roof seals, ventilation intakes, plastic trim components, electrical components, exterior cameras or sensors, wheels, tires, or brake system components. Vehicle or paint damage caused by using a pressure washer is not covered under the vehicle warranty. Cameras and sensors. Caution. Do not use chemical-based or abrasive cleaners on cameras or sensors. Doing so can damage these components. Flush away accumulations of dirt or debris from exterior cameras and sensors with a garden hose. Use a clean microfiber cloth and a mild car soap to carefully wipe these components clean. Avoid rubbing in dirt or other abrasive substances as they can scratch the camera lenses. Underbody maintenance. If salt has been used on the roadways, such as during winter months, Thoroughly remove all traces of road salt. Use a hose to rinse salt from the underside of the vehicle. Flush away accumulations of mud in areas where debris easily collects, such as wheel arches and panel seams. Wheels. Caution! Do not use acid-based wheel cleaners, as these will damage coated wheels. Wash the wheels with warm, fresh water containing a good quality wash and wax shampoo. Thoroughly rinse the wheels to remove any soap residue. Windshield windows and mirrors. Caution. Mirror glass is particularly susceptible to damage. Do not use abrasive cleaning compounds. You should regularly clean all windows inside and out using a window cleaning solution. An automotive glass cleaner is recommended. After washing your vehicle with washing or waxing products, clean the outside of the windshield with glass cleaner. Wiper blades. You should clean wiper blades using isopropyl alcohol or windshield washer fluid. Do not use Use petroleum-based cleaners. Polishing paint and body repairs. Caution! Matte finish paint must not be waxed or polished as this can result in blemishes or a non-uniform paint finish. Always wash your vehicle before waxing or polishing. Do not polish or wax your vehicle in direct sunlight. Do not use wax or polish containing any harsh abrasives, cutting compounds, or cleansers that may damage the vehicle finish. If in doubt, when choosing a product, please contact Fisker for recommendations. Carefully read and follow all of the instructions provided by the manufacturer of the wax or polished product. Regular waxing helps to protect the paint surfaces from harsh elements and maintain their appearance. After the first year, Fisker recommends polishing your vehicle before reapplying wax. Polishing removes built-up residue and keeps the surface of the finish even. The exterior paint should be regularly checked for damage. Any minor scratches or chips should be repaired as soon as possible using touch-up paint. Contact Fisker for recommendations. Body repairs should only be performed by a body shop authorized by Fisker. Contact Fisker via the Fisker app for assistance in locating an authorized body shop near you. Using a car cover. Caution. Do not use a car cover when ambient temperatures are above 100 Fahrenheit or 38 C. Never use a car cover while DC fast charging, as this can prevent the battery from being adequately cooled during charging. To preserve the cosmetic appearance of the body when the vehicle is not being used, you may wish to use a car cover. Cleaning the interior. General cleaning. Warning. Exposure to chemicals in some cleaners can be hazardous and irritate eyes and skin. Always read and follow the manufacturer's instructions when using cleaning products. Warning. Do not splash or spill liquids in the vehicle as this could cause an electrical component malfunction or catch fire. Any spills should be immediately wiped up using a clean, dry cloth. Caution! Do not apply cleaning products directly to the surface being cleaned. Ingress of cleaning products into components may cause damage or impair their function. Caution! Avoid using solvents, including alcohol, bleach, citrus, naphtha, or silicone-based products or additives on interior components, as these can damage the appearance of the material. To maintain the look and appearance of the interior of your vehicle, you should inspect and clean the interior frequently. For general cleaning, it is recommended that materials and surfaces should be cleaned using a non-solvent-based cleaning wipe and dried with a microfiber cloth. If possible, try to wipe up spillages and clean marks as soon as they happen. This reduces the need for more extensive cleaning in the future. It is advisable that you test all cleaners on a concealed area before use. Interior glass and mirrors. Caution. Do not scrape surfaces or use abrasive cleaners or cloths, as this could cause damage to some surfaces, such as the heating elements. Use an alcohol-based commercial glass cleaner and a soft cloth, such as microfiber, to clean any glass or mirrored surfaces. Displays. Warning. Do not use polish or wax cleaners on the display screens. Polished surfaces are reflective and may interfere with the driver's view, resulting in a collision. Caution. Do not use statically charged materials, 
such as a cloth that was recently machine washed and dried on the displays. Do not use cleansers, such as glass cleaner, to clean displays. Display screens should only be cleaned using a soft, lint-free cloth designed for cleaning screens and monitors. Airbags. Warning. Airbag covers should only be cleaned using a slightly dampened cloth or cleaning wipe. The ingress of water or any other liquid into an airbag or its associated electrical wiring may cause the airbags to deploy or not function properly in a collision. Warning. Any damage or cracks on an airbag cover should be referred to Fisker for inspection. Seats. Warning. Never use steam or upholstery cleaners on the seats or any cleaning method that would saturate the seat with liquid. This can damage the occupancy weight sensor in the seat, which in turn can affect the operation of the airbag system and result in serious injury or death. For Fieldtech and Alcantara seats, to clean, use a soft, colorless cloth moistened only with warm water. Do not use polishes, oils, cleaning fluids, solvents, or detergents. Avoid vacuuming. Instead, use your moistened cleaning cloth to gently remove any loose particles. Application of a leather conditioner is not necessary to maintain the original condition of the seats. Seat belts. Warning, never allow any substance to enter the seat belt mechanism as this can negatively affect its performance in an impact. Extend the seat belt and clean using a cloth moistened with only water. Do not use any type of detergent or chemical cleaning agent. Allow the belts to air dry while extended, away from direct sunlight if possible. Chrome and metal surfaces. Do not use abrasive cleansers, rough cloths, or polish, as these materials can damage the finish of these surfaces. Plastic materials. Warning, do not use polish or wax cleaner on the upper surfaces of the dashboard. Polished surfaces are reflective and may interfere with the driver's view, resulting in a collision. You should clean heavily soiled plastic surfaces with warm water and non-detergent soap, then wipe clean with a soft cloth. Carpets and floor mats. Vacuum the carpets and mats thoroughly before cleaning to remove excess dirt and debris. Avoid overwetting the carpets. A diluted upholstery cleaner can be used on heavily soiled areas. Remove floor mats before cleaning to ensure that they dry properly afterwards. Clean using a microfiber cloth and water or a mild textile cleanser. Spot test any cleansers first to ensure they will not leave stains. Dry the mat thoroughly before reinstalling. Floor mats. Warning, loose or improperly fitted floor mats could interfere with the operation of the foot pedals, which could lead to a loss of vehicle control and a collision. Do not place additional floor mats over the existing ones. Warning, always install floor mats with the correct side facing up. Do not turn them over. Floor mats must be anchored to the floor with the studs to prevent movement and interference with the foot-operated pedals. Use only Fisker authorized floor mats to allow safe brake pedal operation. Mats should be maintained with regular cleaning and replaced if they become worn or damaged. Floor mats should be inspected periodically to ensure they are properly installed. The floor mats are retained onto the floor by studs. Lightly pull on the mat to check that it is securely fastened. Depress each foot pedal fully and reinstall the mats if any interference is felt. The rear floor mats must use a special non-skid backing to retain their position. To reposition, simply lift and move to the desired location. 12 volt battery. Warning, the correct and safe operation of driver assistance and vehicle autonomy features is dependent on the 12 volt battery. It is critical that the 12 volt battery in the vehicle is replaced only with identical parts or parts which are authorized by Fisker. Failure to do so could put safety of the vehicle and occupants at risk. Caution, your vehicle is equipped with a 12 volt battery. Due to the location of the battery, it is recommended that replacement of the battery is only carried out by Fisker. Your vehicle has a high voltage to low voltage energy transfer feature that keeps the 12 volt battery charged by the high voltage battery. If the 12 volt battery level is low, the high voltage battery transfers energy to the 12 volt battery, connecting a trickle charger. Warning, always wear protective eyewear and gloves when working with the 12 volt battery. The 12 volt battery in your vehicle is a lead acid battery, which contains electrolyte. The electrolyte contains sulfuric acid, which can burn skin. If skin comes into contact with electrolyte, wash and flush the area with water immediately. If electrolyte comes into contact with the eyes, immediately flush them with water for 15 minutes and seek medical attention. Warning. 
The 12 volt battery in your vehicle is a lead acid battery, which can emit explosive gases when charged. Protect the battery from sparks and flame and provide adequate ventilation. Caution, when connecting the 12 volt battery, always attach red connectors to the positive battery terminal and black connectors to the negative battery terminal. Reversing the polarity can cause significant damage to the battery. To avoid any short circuits when connecting a trickle charger, make sure that the charger clips are fully isolated the isolation is fully intact, and the charger clips are small enough to fit into the space available. If needed, it is possible to connect a trickle charger to the 12 volt battery. Open the hood. Flip open the access cover to the positive terminal by pulling up on the tab. The positive terminal and negative terminal are illustrated above. Light source replacement. There are no user serviceable or replaceable bulbs installed on your vehicle. All the exterior and interior lighting modules use LED technology in place of traditional filament bulbs. If a lighting module fails to operate, please contact Fisker via the Fisker app to have it replaced. Fuse box locations. Caution, some fuse boxes are behind paneling and your vehicle could be damaged if they are removed improperly. Fisker recommends entrusting the inspection and replacement of fuses to Fisker. There are four fuse boxes in your vehicle, two under the hood, one in the cabin, and one in the trunk. Power unit compartment fuse boxes. Open the hood to access the fuse boxes located in the power unit compartment. Low voltage battery fuse box. Power unit compartment fuse box. Cabin fuse box. The cabin fuse box is located behind paneling in the instrument panel to the left of the steering wheel. Fisker recommends having Fisker technicians access the fuse box if needed. Trunk fuse box. The trunk fuse box is located behind paneling in the right side of the trunk. Fisker recommends having Fisker technicians access this fuse box if needed. Replacing a fuse. Warning. Make sure the vehicle is powered off and unplugged from the charger before changing a fuse. Caution, only use Fisker authorized replacement fuses of the same rating and type or fuses of matching specification. Using an incorrect fuse may result in damage to the vehicle's electrical system and can result in a fire. If the replacement fuse blows after installation, the system should be checked by Fisker. Your vehicle uses a number of fuses to protect the electrical system from damage damage caused by short-circuiting or overloading. Fuses are a one-time protection device and must be replaced each time the corresponding circuit is overloaded. Using the fuse information shown on the following pages, identify the fuse protecting the affected circuit. Use a fuse puller to remove the required fuse. A break in the wire inside the fuse indicates that the fuse has blown. Always replace a fuse with one of equal current and voltage rating. Fisker recommends that owners do not remove or replace relays. Failure of any of these items should be investigated by a qualified technician. Low voltage battery fuse box specifications. These fuses are labeled MF. 01 has a 125 amp rating for the rear trunk fuse box. 02 has a 60 amp rating for the eye booster. 03 has a 150 amp rating for the power unit compartment fuse box. 04 has a 175 amp rating for the passenger compartment fuse box. 05 has a 300 amp rating for the PDU or DC DC. 06 has a 5 amp rating for IBS. Power unit compartment fuse box specifications. These are labeled EF. 01 through 08 are for the J case. 01, 60 amp for the ESP1. 02, 40 amp for ESP2. 03, 40 amp for CFM. 04, 60 amp for EPS. 05, 40 amp for Amplifier Extreme. 06, 60 amp for EPS. 07, 20 amp for Front Defrost and Heated Washer Nozzle Relay. 08 is 30 amp for EWM. 09 through 35 are mini. 09 is 15 amp for front defrost. 10 is 10 amp for heated washer nozzle. 12 is 10 amp for AHL or FBMs. 13 is 10 amp for thermal management system relay. 14 is 10 amp for emergency switch for EPS, ESP, and iBooster. 15 is 5 amp for SCM. 16 is 15 amp for horn relay. 17 is 10 amp for thermal management system relay. 18 is 15 amp. 
for battery EWP relay. 19 is 15 amp for heat EWP relay. 20 is 15 amp for front drive EWP relay. 22 is 15 amp for rear drive EWP relay. 23 is 5 amp for AGS. 24 is 15 amp for SCM. 25 is 5 amp for emergency switch for ESP or iBooster. 26 is 10 amp for rear first responder switch. 28 is 10 amp for siren. 29 is 7.5 amp for mini. 30 is 15 amp for the battery management system. 32 is 5 amp for brake pedal switch. 33 is 5 amp for front defroster and heated washer nozzle relay or horn relay or VSP. 35 is 15 amp for the washer pump relay. The next set of relays are labeled ERY. 01 is for rear first responder switch. 03, washer pump. 04, horn. 05, thermal management system. 06, battery EWP. 07, heat EWP. 08, front drive EWP. 09, rear drive EWP. 10, front defrost and heated washer nozzle. Cabin fuse box. RF01 is a mini with a 30 amp rating for the IGN one relay control. RF-02 is a J-case with a 30 amp rating for IGN-2 relay control. Fuses RF-04 through RF-38 are mini. 04 is 10 amp for the FCM IP switch or ETC. 05 is 15 amp for the VCU. 06 is 15 amp for the left FDHAs. 07 is 30 amp for the BCM interior lamps. 08 is 30 amp for the BCM2. 09, 30 amp BCM exterior lamps. 10 is 30 amp for BCM low or high 2. 11 is 30 amps for BCM3. 12 is 10 amps for DWSG. 13, 30 amps BCM low and high. 14, 20 amps left rear seat switch. 15, 10 amps ECC HVAC EXC 4WV. 16, 20 amps CL30s relay control. 17, 5 amps relay coil blower, rear defrost, PKC, NFC start. 18, 15 amps, PASC. 19, 10 amps, OBD, alcohol interlock. 20, 10 amps, RAC, RLS, TDS. 21, 5 amps, front USB. 22, 15 amps, ICC, T-Box. 23, 10 amps, CID cluster. 24, 30 amps, defrost relay control, rear and mirror. 26, 7.5 amps, OHC. 27, 15 amps, rear MCU. 28, 10 amps, CIM, GW. 29, 15 amps, front MCU. 30, 5 amps, GW. 31, 5 amps, CIM, GW. 32, 10 amps, front CMRRs, ACC relay feedback. 33, 10 amps, MRR and rear CMRRs. 34, 10 amps, ACU. 35, 10 amps, rear USB. 36, 15 amps, 12 volt trunk outlet. 37, 10 amps, mirror heat. 38, 15 amps, CS, SWH. RF 39 through 54 are J case. RF 39 is 40 amps for blower relay control. 40 is 30 amps for APRL. 43 is 30 amps for APFL. 44 is 30 amps for APML. RF 54 through 57 are mini. 54 is 10 amps RAC IP switch or PWCs. 55 is 5 amps ICC ECC T box. 56 is 7.5 amps BCM, RVM, and ETC. 57 is 5 amps VCU, CS, MFS, IGN2 relay feedback. Relay RRY01 is for IGN1 relay control. RRY02 is for IGN2 relay control. RRY03 CL30's relay control. RRY04 defrost relay control rear and mirror. RRY09 blower relay control. Trunk fuse box specifications. Fuse MF01 through 08 are micro. 01 is 15 amp right FDHAs. 02 is 15 amp RCM. 04 is 15 amp RSHM. 05 is 15 amp RSHM, 06 is 10 amp PLGM, 07 is 15 amp ADAS DC, 08 is 20 amp right rear seat switch, fuse NF01 through NF12 or M case. 01 is 20 amp for TRM, THM. 02 is 30 amp for AP, RR. 03 is 30 amp AP, MR. 
0430 amp DSMC, 0530 amp PSM, 0630 amp PLGM, 0730 amp for the amplifier, 0830 amp trailer socket, 0930 amp APFR, 1030 amp APRW, 1130 amp DSMC, 12 30 amp PSM. Vehicle Diagnostic Connector. The vehicle diagnostic port is located beneath the dashboard to the left of the steering wheel. The diagnostic port can be used to retrieve the vehicle identification number, read and clear fault codes, or set vehicle parameters by connecting a Fisker service diagnostic tool. On to parts and accessories. Parts, accessories, and modifications. Warning. Fisker does not recommend installing unauthorized parts and accessories or performing unauthorized vehicle modifications. Doing so can negatively affect your vehicle's performance and the safety of its occupants. The warranty does not cover any damage caused by using or installing unauthorized parts or accessories or performing unauthorized modifications. Fisker will not accept liability for death, injury, or damage that occurs as a result of using or installing unauthorized parts or accessories or making unauthorized modifications. Fisker Genuine Parts and Accessories are the best choice for your vehicle. Fisker has rigorously tested all of their parts to ensure they meet the highest quality, safety, and performance standards. Fisker Genuine Parts and Accessories can be purchased and professionally installed at a Fisker Service Center where qualified technicians can offer you the best advice on repairs, accessories, and modifications. Because they cannot assess products from other manufacturers or distributors, Fisker will not accept responsibility for any issues related to using non-Fisker parts or accessories on your vehicle. If you have a disability which may require modification to your vehicle, please contact Fisker before any modifications are made. Body Repairs If your vehicle is damaged due to a collision, please contact Fisker via the Fisker app for referral to an authorized body repair shop. This ensures repairs are performed by a quality qualified technician using proper equipment and Fisker genuine parts. Poorly performed collision repairs can compromise the performance and safety of the vehicle, and the resale value can be diminished. Some repair shops may suggest using other parts instead of those made by Fisker, including salvaged or refurbished parts, or aftermarket parts made by other companies. While these suggestions may cut repair costs, they are not recommended and are not covered by the warranty. Salvaged parts may maintain the vehicle's designed appearance, but their unknown history means they may have been damaged during the previous vehicle's life or while in storage. Refurbished or aftermarket parts have not undergone extensive testing by Fisker to assure their safety or reliability. Any vehicle failure related to salvaged, refurbished, or aftermarket parts is not covered by the warranty. Placing RFID transponders. Radio frequency identification transponders, also called RFID tags, can be used to automatically identify vehicles and are usually attached to the interior glass of the windshield or rear window. Some common examples of using RFID RFID tags are for accessing secured areas, example parking structures or gated communities, or automatic payments such as toll booths or car washes. When placing RFID tags, Fisker recommends placing the tag as high as possible on the interior glass of the windshield or rear window, out of the driver's line of sight. On to vehicle lifting points. Lifting the vehicle. Warning, never raise the vehicle when the charging cable is connected. Even if charging is not in progress, always disconnect the charging cable before raising the vehicle. Do not work on an incorrectly supported vehicle. Doing so can cause serious damage, bodily injury, or death. The lifting points for the vehicle are located at the positions shown below. Ensure that any non-Fisker repair facility servicing your vehicle is aware of these lifting points when raising your vehicle vehicle on a lift. Caution. These are the only approved lifting points for your vehicle. Lifting the vehicle at any other points may cause irreparable damage to the battery and vehicle. Steps for lifting the vehicle. Position the vehicle centrally between the lift posts. Position the lift arm pads under the designated body lifting points at the locations shown. Caution. Do not position the lift arm pads under the vehicle battery or side rails. Adjust the height and position of the lift arm pads to ensure that they are correctly located. With assistance, raise the lift to the desired height, ensuring the lift arm pads remain in their correct positions. Engage any lift safety locks. Follow the lift manufacturer's instructions. On to storing the vehicle. 
Storage guidelines. High voltage battery. Caution. At no time should the high voltage battery be allowed to discharge below 6% state of charge. Doing so could have a negative impact to the efficiency and service life of the high voltage battery. The high voltage battery discharges over time if not properly maintained while in storage. The easiest way to maintain it is to keep the vehicle connected to a charging location throughout storage. Using the central touch screen to set a minimum charge level during storage can help maintain overall battery health. If charging is not available at the storage location, Fisker strongly recommends to first charge the high voltage battery to a minimum of 10% state of charge per month of storage. Check the state of charge at least once per month to ensure it remains above 6% state of charge and charge the vehicle as needed. For example, if the vehicle is being stored for three months, the high voltage battery should be charged to 30% state of charge or higher. 12 volt battery. The 12 volt battery gradually discharges over time. The high voltage system maintains the 12 volt battery's charge level, but this in turn is a drain on the high voltage battery's state of charge. To maintain the 12 volt battery's charge level and reduce the power demand on the high voltage system, a trickle charger can be connected to the 12 volt battery during storage. Tires. To minimize the possibility and effects of flat spots during storage, the tires may be inflated to the maximum pressure indicated on the tire wall. Warning: The tire pressures must be reduced to the correct pressure before the vehicle is driven. Additional storage guidelines. While not required, Fisker recommends taking these additional steps to protect your vehicle's overall condition while in storage. Wash the exterior thoroughly. Particles or grease left on the paint surfaces can leave marks, become embedded, or speed up corrosion. Clean, dust, and vacuum the interior. Check all storage spaces and remove any perishable items. If the storage location's ambient temperature will remain below 100 Fahrenheit or 38 C, you can install a car cover to help protect the vehicle's exterior. Caution! Do not use a car cover when ambient temperatures are above 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees C. On to tires and wheels. Tire information. Understanding tire markings. Federal law requires tire manufacturers to place standardized information on the sidewall of tires. This information information identifies and describes the fundamental characteristics of the tire and also provides the tire identification number for safety standard certification and in case of a recall. Treadwear grade. This number indicates the tire's wear rate. Traction grade. This letter indicates a tire's ability to stop on wet pavement. Temperature grade. This letter indicates a tire's heat resistance grading. Tire category. P indicates the tire is a P metric type designed for passenger vehicles following the design standards of the U.S. Tire and Rim Association. Tires without the P designation are Eurometric type following the design standards of the European Tire and Rim Technical Organization. Tire width. This three-digit number gives the width in millimeters of the tire section as defined from sidewall edge to sidewall edge. Aspect ratio. This two-digit number, also known as the profile, gives the sidewall height as a percentage of the section width. So, if the section width is 205 millimeters and the aspect ratio is 50, the sidewall height will be 102 millimeters. Tire construction. R indicates that the tire is of radial ply construction. Wheel diameter. This two-digit number is the diameter of the wheel rim in inches. Load index. This two or three digit number is the tire's load index. It is a measurement of how much weight each tire can support. This number is not always shown. Speed rating. The speed rating, when stated, denotes the maximum speed at which the tire should be used for extended periods. The ratings range from 99 miles per hour to 186 miles per hour, 160 to 300 kilometers per hour. These ratings are listed in the following table. A Q rating has a 99 mile per hour speed rating, or 160 kilometers per hour. Hour. R is 106 miles per hour or 170 kilometers per hour. S is 112 miles per hour or 180 kilometers per hour. T is 118 miles per hour or 190 kilometers per hour. U is 124 miles an hour or 200 kilometers per hour. H is 130 miles per hour or 210 kilometers per hour. V is 149 miles per hour or 240 kilometers per hour. W is 168 miles per hour or 270 kilometers per hour. Y is 186 miles per hour or 300 kilometers per hour. Tire installation marking. This indicates the direction of wheel travel or the orientation of how the tire must be installed on the wheel rim. Maximum tire load. 
This is the maximum load which can be carried by the tire. Maximum permissible inflation pressure. The maximum inflation pressure for the tire. This pressure should not be used for normal driving. U.S. Department of Transportation Tire Identification Number. This begins with the letters DOT and indicates that the tire meets all federal standards. The next two numbers or letters are the plant code where it was manufactured, and the last four numbers represent the week and year the tire was built. For example, the numbers 1706 means the 17th week of 2006. The other numbers are marketing codes used at the manufacturer's discretion. This information can be used to contact consumers if a tire defect requires a recall. International tire approval marks. Tire composition and materials. The number of plies in both the tread area and the sidewall area indicates how many layers of rubber coated material make up the structure of the tire. Information is also provided on the type of materials used. International tire approval marks. Before products can be sold in many countries, tire manufacturers are required to test and certify they meet all applicable safety and performance standards, which can include physical dimensions, sidewall branding and durability, as well as high speed endurance, road noise, and or wet traction. Since many tires are sold globally, tires can be branded with more than one governmental approval code. United States, DOT or United States Department of Transportation. China, CCC or China Compulsory Certification Mark. China's compulsory certification mark for products being exported to or sold in People's Republic of China. Europe, E4 and E3, United Nations Economic Commission of Europe. The United Nations Economic Commission for Europe commonly referred to as just ECE symbol on a tire's sidewall, identifies that the manufacturer certifies the tire meets all regulations, including the load index and speed symbol that appear in its service description. The letter, lowercase e or uppercase e, and number code combination, positioned in a circle or rectangle, identify the country through which an approved tire was originally registered, followed by two digits indicating the regulation series under which the tire was approved, such as 02, or ECE Regulation 30 governing passenger tires, followed by digits that represent the ECE mark type approval numbers. Tires that have also been tested and meet the pass-by noise limits and wet traction can have a second ECE branding, followed by an S for sound and W for wet traction. Depending on the extent of tire testing completed, one or two ECE symbols may appear on the tire's sidewall. Uniform Tire Quality Grading The following information relates to the tire grading system developed by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, which will grade tires by treadwear, traction, and temperature performance. Note, tires that have deep tread and winter tires are exempt from these marking requirements. Quality grades where applicable can be found on the tire sidewall between the tread shoulder and maximum section width. For example, treadwear 180, traction AA, temperature A. In addition to the marking requirements, passenger car tires must conform to federal safety requirements. Treadwear. The treadwear grade is a comparative rating based on the wear rate of the tire when tested under controlled conditions on a specified government test course. For example, a tire graded 150 would wear one and a half times as well on a government test course as a tire graded 100. The relative performance of tires depends on the actual conditions of their use, however, and may depart significantly from the norm due to variations in driving habits, service practices, and differences in road characteristics and climate. Traction. The traction grade assigned to this tire is based on straight ahead braking tests and does not include acceleration, cornering, hydroplaning, or peak traction characteristics. The Traction grades from highest to lowest are AA, A, B, and C. These grades represent a tire's ability to stop on a wet pavement as measured under controlled conditions on specified government test surfaces of asphalt and concrete. A tire marked C may have poor traction performance. Temperature. Warning. The temperature grade for this tire is established for a tire that is properly inflated and not overloaded. Excessive speed, under inflation, or excessive loading, either separately or in combination, can cause heat buildup and possible tire failure. The temperature grades are A, the highest, B, and C, representing the tire's resistance to the generation of heat and its ability to dissipate heat when tested under controlled conditions on a specified indoor laboratory test wheel. Sustained high temperature can cause the material of the tire to degenerate and reduce tire life, and excessive temperature can lead to sudden tire failure. The grade C corresponds to a level of performance which all passenger car tires must meet under Federal Motor Safety Standard number 109. Grades B and A represent 
present higher levels of performance on the laboratory test wheel than the minimum required by law. Tire loading and information label. Note, this label is also known as the vehicle placard. The tire information label is located on the left B pillar and is visible when the driver's door is open. The label contains the following information. The maximum vehicle capacity weight in kilograms and pounds, the vehicle seating capacity, total, front, and rear, the size of the front and rear tires originally fitted to the vehicle, and the cold inflation pressures for the original specification of front and rear tires. The stated tire pressures provide the optimum vehicle ride and handling characteristics for all normal operating conditions. This label must not be changed, even if different wheels are fitted at a later stage. On to tire care and maintenance. Inspecting and maintaining tires. Warning, the tires should be regularly checked for wear and to make sure that there are no cuts, bulges, or exposure of the ply and cord structure. Do not drive with tires which are worn, damaged, or inflated to the incorrect pressure. The safety of the vehicle and occupants will be adversely affected. Always consider tire conditions when driving and regularly inspect the tread and sidewalls for any sign of distortion, bulges, cuts, or wear. Good driving practice will improve the mileage you obtain from your tires and avoid unnecessary damage. Always ensure that the tire pressures are correctly adjusted. Always observe the posted speed limits and advisory speeds. Avoid pulling away quickly or hard acceleration. Avoid making fast turns or braking sharply. Avoid potholes and objects in the road and do not run over curbs or hit the tire against the curb when parking. Caution, avoid contaminating tires with vehicle fluids that can cause damage. Tire wear. Warning, the tire wear indicators show the minimum tread depth recommended by the tire manufacturer. Tires which have worn to this point will have reduced grip and poor water displacement characteristics. Tires fitted as original equipment have tread wear indicators molded into the tread pattern. Triangles on the tire sidewall indicate the location of the tread wear indicators. When the tread has been worn down to approximately 2 seconds of an inch or 1.6 millimeters, the indicators start appearing at the surface of the tread pattern, producing the effect of a continuous band of rubber across the width of the tire. A tire must be replaced as soon as an indicator band becomes visible or the tread depth reaches the minimum permitted by legislation. Fisker will evaluate tire wear when servicing your vehicle. Wheel alignment and tire balance. Unbalanced wheels, sometimes noticeable as vibration through the steering, may affect vehicle handling and tire life. Even with regular use, wheels can get out of balance. Therefore, you should balance your wheels as required. If tire wear is uneven on one side of the tire only or becomes abnormally excessive, you should check the wheel alignment. Wheel and tire rotation. The top diagram is front wheel drive vehicles and the bottom diagram is all wheel drive vehicles. Rotating the tires is recommended to ensure the tires wear evenly. Rotate the wheels and tires from their current position to their new position shown in illustration applicable to your vehicle. This will allow the tires to have approximately the same length of service life. Fisker recommends rotating the tires every 6,000 miles. Winter tires may require rotating at different intervals. Use the tire manufacturer's recommended intervals. Punctured tires. Warning, do not drive the vehicle with a punctured tire. Even if the punctured tire has not deflated, it is unsafe to use as the tire may deflate suddenly at any time. Your vehicle is fitted with tubeless tires, which may not leak when penetrated, provided the object remains in the tire. If, however, you feel a sudden vibration or ride disturbance while driving, or you suspect your tire or vehicle has been damaged, immediately reduce your speed. Drive slowly while avoiding heavy braking or sharp steering, and when safe to do so, stop the vehicle. Inspect the tires for damage. If a tire is underinflated and does not appear to have any damage to the sidewall, try to repair it using the tire repair kit. If you cannot detect the cause or the tire is too heavily damaged, have the vehicle recovered to a tire repair center or contact Fisker via the Fisker app to have the vehicle inspected. A puncture will eventually cause the tire to lose pressure, which is why frequent checking of tire pressure is important. Punctured or damaged tires must be permanently repaired or replaced as soon as possible. Tire degradation. Tires in general are considered a wear item, as they will wear out and need to be replaced. Based on individual driving patterns, road conditions, vehicle load, and environmental conditions, tires will wear differently over time. 
it is recommended that the tires be checked and rotated at the specified intervals to maintain optimal tire longevity and performance. Tires can also degrade over time due to the effects of ultraviolet light, extreme temperatures, high loads, and environmental conditions. Tires should be regularly checked even if the vehicle is not being driven and be replaced every six years, but may require replacement more frequently. Check the tire manufacturer's recommendations for more information. Maintaining tire pressures. Warning. Tire pressures should be checked using an accurate pressure gauge when cold. Underinflation is the most common cause of tire failures and may result in severe tire cracking, tread separation, or blowout with unexpected loss of vehicle control and increased risk of injury. Each tire should be checked monthly when cold and inflated to the inflation pressure recommended by the vehicle manufacturer on the vehicle placard or the tire inflation pressure label. If your vehicle has tires of a different size than the size indicated on the vehicle placard or tire inflation pressure label, you should determine the proper tire inflation pressure for those tires. As an added safety feature, your vehicle has been equipped with an integrated tire pressure monitoring system that illuminates a low tire pressure indicator, or telltale, when one or more of your tires is significantly underinflated. In addition to the TPMS indicator, a second warning indicator illuminates, highlighting the affected tire or tires in amber. Accordingly, when the low tire pressure indicators illuminate you should stop and check your tires as soon as possible and inflate them to the proper pressure. Driving on a significantly underinflated tire causes the tire to overheat and can lead to tire failure. Underinflation also reduces battery range and tire tread life and may affect the vehicle's handling and stopping ability. Please note that the TPMS is not a substitute for proper tire maintenance and it is the driver's responsibility to maintain correct tire pressure even if underinflation has not reached the level to trigger illumination of the TPMS low tire pressure indicator. Checking tire pressures. Warning, pressure checks should only be carried out when the tires are cold. A hot tire at or below recommended cold inflation pressure is dangerously underinflated. If the vehicle has been parked in strong sunlight or used in high ambient temperatures, do not reduce the tire pressures. Move the vehicle into the shade and allow the tires to cool before checking. Do not exceed the maximum pressure stated on the sidewall of the tire. Overinflation could cause the tire to fail suddenly. Check tire pressures when the tires are cold. A cold tire is defined as one that has not been driven for at least three hours. Air pressure increases in warm tires and it only takes one mile of driving to warm the tires sufficiently to affect the tire pressures. If it is necessary to check the tires when they are warm, you should expect the pressures to have increased. Do not let air out of warm tires in an attempt to match the recommended cold tire pressures. The recommended cold tire pressures for your vehicle are shown on the tire and loading information label. Always inflate your tires to the pressures recommended by Fisker even if it is different from the maximum inflation pressure information found on the tire itself. Adjusting the tire pressure. The following procedure should be used to check and adjust tire pressures. Remove the cap from the valve, then firmly press the tire gauge onto the valve and measure the pressure. If required, add air to reach the correct pressure. Check the pressure by removing the tire gauge and then reattach it. Failure to remove and reattach the gauge to the valve could cause the gauge to show an incorrect reading. If the tire pressure is too high, remove the gauge and release air from the tire by pressing on the metal stem in the center of the valve. Refit the gauge to the valve and check the pressure. Repeat the process, adding or removing air as required until the correct tire pressure is reached. Refit the valve cap. If pressure was adjusted in one or more tires, reset the tire pressure monitoring system. It is an offense in certain countries to drive a vehicle with incorrect tire pressures. Tire valves. Keep the valve caps screwed down firmly to prevent water or dirt entering the valve. Check the valves for leaks when checking the tire pressures. Flat spots. If the vehicle is stationary for a long period when the ambient temperature is high, the tires may form flat spots. When the vehicle is driven, these flat spots will cause a vibration which will steadily disappear as the tires warm up and regain their original shape. Tire pressures during long-term storage. To minimize the possibility and effects of flat spots during storage, the tires may be inflated to the maximum pressure indicated on the tire wall. Warning: Tire pressures must be reduced to the correct pressure before the vehicle is driven. Replacing tires and wheels. Warning: For your safety, it is recommended that only wheels and tires that match the original specification are used on the vehicle. Specifications for authorized winter tires are available 
by contacting Fisker via the Fisker app. Operation of the integrated tire pressure monitoring system may be affected if the tires are replaced with a different specification from the originals. Wheel rims and tires are matched to suit the handling characteristics of the vehicle. Always check that replacement tires comply with the original specification. If tires other than those specified are used, ensure that the load and speed ratings, shown on the tire sidewall, equal or exceed those of the original specification. Specification. For the specification of the original wheels and tires installed on the vehicle, refer to technical data chapter of this guide. Ideally, tires should be replaced as sets of four. If this is not possible, replace the tires in pairs front and rear. When tires are replaced, the wheels should always be rebalanced and alignment checked. Fisker Original Equipment Tires Fisker Original Equipment Tires with the designation FSR on the tire sidewall have been specifically designed to have a low rolling resistance whilst providing a dynamic and stable driving experience. Fisker recommends only installing tires matching this original specification. Asymmetric non-directional tires. Warning. Vehicle traction and handling will be seriously impaired if the tires are incorrectly installed on the wheels. Your vehicle is equipped with asymmetric non-directional tires that have different tread patterns on the outer and inner edge of the tire. On the outside edge, the tread pattern exhibits large tread blocks which are designed to provide good dry traction and handling thanks to a larger contact area with the road. On the inside edge, the tread block is smaller to provide better wet grip and an increased number of grooves help disperse water and reduce the risk of aquaplaning on wet roads. This effectively means the tire is built to provide great all-around performance in both wet and dry conditions. Asymmetric tires must be mounted on the wheel with the correct sidewall facing outwards from the vehicle. The sidewall of the tire is marked with the word outside. When new tires have been installed, always make sure that the tires are correctly oriented to the wheel. Run flat tires. Caution. The installation of run flat tires is not recommended by Fisker. See Seasonal tire types. All season tires, dependent on market availability. Your vehicle may be originally equipped with all season tires. These tires are designed to provide adequate traction in most conditions year round, but may not provide the same level of traction as winter tires in inclement conditions. All season tires can be identified by A S and or M and S, mud and snow, on the tire sidewall. Summer tires, dependent upon market availability. Your vehicle may be originally equipped with high performance summer tires. Tires. Summer tires are designed for maximum dry and wet road performance but are not designed to perform well in winter conditions. Fisker recommends using winter tires if driving in cold temperatures or on roads where snow or ice may be present. Warning: In cold temperatures or on snow or ice, summer tires do not provide adequate traction. Selecting and installing the appropriate tires for winter conditions is important to ensure the safety and optimum performance of your vehicle. Winter tires. Warning: Always adhere to the tire manufacturer manufacturer's instructions, paying particular attention to the maximum speed at which the vehicle can be driven and the correct tire pressures. The traction provided by winter tires on dry roads may be less than your original specification tires. Use winter tires to increase traction when driving in sustained temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees C, or in snowy or icy conditions. When installing winter tires, always install a complete set of four tires at the same time. Winter tires must be the same diameter, brand, construction, and tread pattern on all four wheels. For recommendations on winter tires, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Driving in low temperatures. Tire performance is reduced in low ambient temperatures, resulting in reduced grip and an increased susceptibility to damage from impacts. Performance tires can temporarily harden when cold, causing you to hear rotational noise for the first few miles until the tires warm up. Snow chains. Caution. Follow the manufacturer's instructions when installing tire chains. Damage caused from using tire chains improperly is not covered by the new vehicle limited warranty. Caution. Wheel and aero covers must be removed from the wheel before installing snow chains. Snow chains improve both driving and braking in winter road conditions. For recommendations on tire chains, contact Fisker via the Fisker app and observe the following guidelines. Only Fisker authorized snow chains. Only install snow chains on 20-inch wheels. Installation of snow chains on 22-inch wheels may cause damage to the vehicle's body, chassis, and suspension components. Install snow chains to the following. 
front wheels for front-wheel drive vehicles, rear wheels or all-wheels for all-wheel drive vehicles. Check and adjust the seating of the snow chains after driving a few feet if necessary. Follow the instructions from the manufacturer. Note the maximum speed of 30 miles per hour, 50 kilometers per hour. Observe the local regulations. Remove the snow chains on roads without snow. Driving on roads without adequate snow cover could impair driving ability and damage the tires. Although authorized by Fisker, the use of tire chains may still be prohibited according to location. Check the local laws before installing tire chains. On to Tire Pressure Monitoring System, or TPMS. Warning, the TPMS is not a substitute for manually checking tire pressures. The TPMS only provides a tire pressure warning and does not reinflate the tires. The TPMS cannot register damage to a tire. Regularly check the condition of your tires. Do not use any tire liquid or aerosol tire sealant other than the one supplied with the vehicle. The tire pressure monitoring system indirectly monitors the pressure of the tires using information from the anti-lock braking system wheel speed sensor to detect underinflation. Installing tire sizes that are not authorized by Fisker may interfere with the TPMS system. There are no tire pressure sensors installed in the wheels. Tire pressure warnings are displayed on the driver display using an amber warning indicator. The tire pressure warning indicator will illuminate if a tire is underinflated. If the tire pressure warning indicator illuminates, stop and check your tires as soon as possible and inflate them to the correct pressure. If the tire pressure warning occurs frequently, the cause must be determined and rectified. Tire pressure information display. When the tire Tire pressure warning indicator or telltale illuminates, a second warning indicator highlights the affected wheel in amber. TPMS malfunction. Your vehicle has also been equipped with a TPMS malfunction indicator to indicate when the system is not operating properly. The TPMS malfunction indicator is combined with the low tire pressure telltale. When the system detects a malfunction, the telltale will flash for approximately one minute and then remain continuously illuminated. This sequence will continue upon subsequent vehicle startups as long as the malfunction exists. When the malfunction indicator is displayed, the system may not be able to detect or signal low tire pressure as intended. TPMS malfunctions may occur for a variety of reasons, including the installation of replacement or alternate tires or wheels on the vehicle that prevent the TPMS from functioning properly. Always check the TPMS malfunction indicator after replacing one or more tires or wheels on your vehicle to ensure that the replacement or alternate tires and wheels allow the TPMS to function properly. TPMS reset. The tire pressure warning indicator on the driver display and center display will not automatically turn off when wheel tire pressure is adjusted for all four tires. After the tires are inflated to the correct pressures, the tire pressure monitoring system must be manually reset via the central touchscreen. Select Settings, Vehicle and Service, then press Reset Tire Pressure. The vehicle gear must be in park to initiate a tire pressure reset. If another gear is selected, the option to reset will be unselectable. In the next prompt, press Reset to begin the process, or cancel to exit to the previous screen. When reset is pressed, the system will reset the TPMS system and prompt you when the process is completed. Press OK to finish. The calibration to update and display actual tire pressure information may take up to 20 minutes. Tire repair. Safety precautions. Warning. Under no circumstances should speeds of 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour be exceeded while driving with a repaired tire. Never drive with a deflated tire as vehicle handling and braking will be compromised. Always read the directions and warnings on the tire sealant before starting a repair. Follow the directions on the canister exactly and pay attention to the precautions. Always keep the tire sealant out of the reach of children. The tire sealant contains components which are harmful if consumed or inhaled. If swallowed, do not induce vomiting. Seek medical assistance immediately. If inhaled, breathe fresh air. If breathing is affected, seek medical assistance immediately. If the sealant comes into contact with the eyes, immediately flush them with water. If eye irritation persists, seek medical assistance. Do not breathe gas, fumes, vapor, or spray that may have emitted from the tire sealant. Inhalation can cause drowsiness and dizziness. Tire Repair Kit Overview Warning! The tire repair kit is intended as a temporary repair only. You are advised to have the tire repaired or replaced as soon as possible. Your vehicle has no spare tire. Instead, a tire repair kit is provided in the vehicle. The tire repair kit consists of a canister of tire sealant and a compressor. The canister contains enough sealant to repair one tire. For additional tire sealant canisters, contact Fisker. 
The tire sealant contains fibers, binders, polymers, and proprietary congealing agents. When injected into the tire through the valve, the sealant penetrates the puncture site and cures to form a temporary repair. The kit can only be used to repair small punctures in the tire tread. In the event of punctures larger than one quarter of an inch or six millimeters, severe tread damage, a damaged sidewall, ripped tires, or tires that have come off the rim, contact roadside assistance. Caution, never drive on a deflated tire as this can cause serious damage to the wheel and the vehicle. Contact roadside assistance to have the vehicle transported to a repair facility. Tire sealant expiration and replacement. Warning, do not use the tire sealant after the expiration date on the sealant canister. Doing so may increase the risk of tire failure. The tire sealant supplied as part of the tire repair kit has an expiration date printed on the outside of the canister. If the tire sealant has passed its expiration date, it may not work as expected when you need to use it in an emergency. Replacement tire sealant canisters are available from Fisker. Caution, always replace the canister with one of the same type and capacity. Only the tire sealant provided by Fisker has been authorized for use with your vehicle. Tire repair kit components, filling hose, sealant canister, speed restriction label, sealant canister filler hose connection, compressor, power on off switch, vent button, pressure gauge, power cable, the filling hose, and sealant canister cannot be reused. Using the tire repair kit. Warning, tire pressures should always be checked using an accurate pressure gauge when cold. The pressure gauge on the compressor should not be relied upon as being accurate. To avoid overheating, do not use the compressor continuously for more than eight minutes. Allow the compressor to cool for 15 minutes between uses. If the compressor runs slowly, it has overheated from excessive use. Switch off and allow to cool. Adding the tire sealant. When possible, stop in a safe place away from traffic. Always ask passengers to wait outside the vehicle in a safe area away from traffic. Switch on the hazard warning flashers to alert other road users, then follow these steps. If possible, position the wheel with the puncture at the bottom. Remove the speed restriction label from the sealant canister and affix it to a surface you can see while driving. This reminds the driver that the tire has a temporary repair and cannot exceed the recommended speed. Shake the sealant canister. Connect the filling hose onto the connector at the base of the sealant canister. Ensure that the vent button on the compressor is not pressed. Remove the valve cap from the valve stem of the wheel. Then connect the filling hose securely onto the valve. Caution, make sure the sealant hose is securely fitted to the valve, or the sealant may flow backwards and could clog the filling hose. Ensure that the compressor's power switch is off. Connect the sealant canister to the compressor, ensuring the canister is upright. Detach the power cable from the bottom of the compressor and plug it in to the vehicle's 12-volt power socket located in the trunk. Ensure the compressor is positioned on a level surface. With the vehicle powered on, switch on the compressor. Let the compressor run for approximately five to seven minutes to add the sealant and fill the tire up to the correct pressure. Warning, do not overinflate the tire. The pressure gauge may read higher than the actual pressure when the compressor is on. To get an accurate pressure, turn the compressor off. When the proper tire pressure has been reached, switch off the compressor. Warning, do not drive if the tire pressure remains below the recommended pressure shown on the tire information label. Doing so could result in a collision due to a sudden failure. Contact roadside assistance. Disconnect the filling hose from the tire valve. Wipe off any excess sealant from the tire valve and wheel rim. Then replace the valve cap. Return the tire repair kit to its storage location in the vehicle. Remember to replace the tire sealant canister. Distributing tire sealant. Once the tire sealant has been added and the proper tire pressure has been reached, immediately drive for about about 10 minutes uninterrupted or approximately 4 to 6 miles, 7 to 10 kilometers. If possible, do not fall below a speed of 12 miles per hour. Warning. While driving to distribute the sealant, observe the following. Do not exceed the maximum speed listed on the speed restriction label. If you experience any unusual vibration, noise, or other ride disturbance, reduce your speed and drive with caution until you can pull over to a safe location. Do not continue driving and contact roadside assistance. After driving for about 10 minutes uninterrupted, or approximately 4 to 6 miles, 7 to 10 kilometers, stop at a safe location. Use the compressor to adjust to the correct pressure. Reset the tire pressure monitoring system. Using the compressor. Warning, tire pressures should always be checked using an accurate pressure gauge when cold. The pressure gauge on the compressor should not be relied upon as being accurate. Caution, to avoid overheating, do not use the compressor continuously for more than eight minutes. Allow the compressor to cool for 15 minutes between uses. If the compressor runs slowly, it has overheated from excessive use. Switch off and allow to 
cool. Connect the filling hose to the compressor. Ensure that the vent button on the compressor is not pressed. Remove the valve cap from the valve stem of the wheel, then connect the filling hose securely onto the valve. Ensure that the compressor's power switch is off. Detach the power cable from the bottom of the compressor and plug it into the vehicle's 12-volt power socket located in the trunk. Ensure the compressor is positioned on a level surface. To add air, switch on the compressor and inflate until the desired pressure is reached. To release air, switch off the compressor and then press and hold the vent button until the desired pressure is reached. The pressure gauge may read higher than the actual pressure when the compressor is on. To get an accurate tire pressure, turn the compressor off. When finished adjusting the tire pressure, be sure to replace the valve cap on the wheel and store the compressor. Reset the tire pressure monitoring system. On to vehicle loading. Loading the vehicle. Warning. Overloading the vehicle will have an adverse effect on braking and handling characteristics, which could compromise your safety or damage the vehicle. It is important to understand the maximum weight rating for your vehicle and how much weight your vehicle can safely carry. The vehicle's gross vehicle weight rating is stated on the vehicle certification label located on the left B pillar. This weight is also known as the vehicle's maximum allowable total mass. This weight includes the curb weight of the vehicle, the weight of all occupants, cargo, and any additional equipment installed on the vehicle since it was manufactured. Caution. To prevent serious damage to the vehicle, never load the vehicle so that it is heavier than the GVWR. Carrying items. Warning. The trunk is the preferred place to carry objects. In a collision, during hard braking, or during sudden maneuvers, loose items carried in the vehicle's cabin area can be thrown around and cause injury to occupants. Caution. Heavy loads should be evenly distributed throughout the vehicle so as not to exceed the the gross axle weight ratings, or GAWR, shown on the vehicle certification label. Steps for determining correct load limit. Locate the statement, the combined weight of occupants and cargo should never exceed a given number of pounds or a given number of kilograms on your vehicle's placard. This is also known as the vehicle capacity weight. Determine the combined weight of the driver and passengers that will be riding in your vehicle. Subtract the combined weight of the driver and passengers from the given number of pounds or given number of kilograms. The resulting figure equals the available amount of cargo and luggage load capacity. For example, if the given amount equals 950 pounds, 430 kilos, and there will be five 150 pound or 68 kilogram passengers in the vehicle, the amount of available cargo and luggage capacity is 200 pounds or 90 kilos. 900 minus 750, five times 150, equals 200 pounds or 430 minus 340, 5 times 68, equals 90 kilograms. Determine the combined weight of luggage and cargo being loaded into the vehicle. That weight may not safely exceed the available cargo and luggage load capacity calculated in step 4. Example load limit calculations. The number and weight of passengers will affect the weight available cargo and luggage load capacity. The following are typical examples of calculated load limits. Example 1. Driver and passenger. Vehicle capacity weight, 950 pounds, 430 kilos. Subtract occupant weight, 2 times 150 pounds, or 68 kilos, which is 300 pounds, or 136 kilos. Available cargo or luggage weight is 650 pounds, or 294 kilos. Example 2, driver and 3 passengers. Vehicle capacity weight, 950 pounds, or 430 kilos. Subtract occupant weight, 4 times 150 pounds, or 68 kilos, totaling 600 pounds, or 272 kilos. Available cargo or luggage weight, 350 pounds, or 158 kilos. Calculations for the available cargo and luggage capacity. Assume that the passengers weigh 150 pounds, or 68 kilos. If the passengers weigh more than this, the available cargo and luggage load capacity will decrease. Roof racks, if equipped. Caution. The maximum weight limit for loads being carried on a roof rack is 165 pounds or 75 kilos. On to glossary of terms. Tires and wheels glossaries. Accessory weight, the combined weight in excess of those items replaced of items available as factory installed equipment. Bead, the inner edge of a tire that is shaped to fit the rim and form an airtight seal. The bead is constructed of steel wires which are wrapped or reinforced by the ply cords. Cold tire pressure. The air pressure in a tire which has been standing in excess of three hours or driven for less than one mile. Curb weight. The weight of a standard vehicle, including any optional equipment fitted and with the correct fluid levels. Gross axle weight rating. The maximum distributed weight that may be supported by an axle on the vehicle. 
gross vehicle weight rating. The maximum permissible weight of a vehicle with driver, passengers, load, luggage, and equipment. KPA or kilopascal. A metric unit used to measure pressure. One kilopascal equals approximately 0.145 psi. Maximum inflation pressure. The maximum pressure to which the tire should be inflated. This pressure is given on the tire sidewall in psi. Caution. This pressure is the maximum allowed by the tire manufacturer. It is not the pressure recommended for for use. Production options weight. The combined weight of options installed which weigh in excess of two pounds or one kilo more than the standard items that they replaced and are not already considered in curb or accessory weights. PSI, pounds per square inch, a unit of measure for pressure. Recommended tire inflation pressure. The tire inflation pressure established by Fisker, which is based on the type of tires that are mounted on the vehicle at the factory. This information can be found on the tire and loading information label located on the left B pillar. Rim, the metal support for a tire or tire and tube upon which the tire beads are seated. Tire pressure monitoring system, a system that detects when one or more of a vehicle's tires are underinflated and illuminates a low tire pressure warning telltale. Tread, the portion of a tire that comes into contact with the road. Tread wear indicators, the projections within the principal grooves designed to give a visual indication of the degrees of wear of the tread. Vehicle capacity weight, the number of seats multiplied by a given number of pounds or a given number of kilograms, plus the rated amount of load and luggage. This vehicle capacity weight is stated on the vehicle placard. On to technical data, vehicle identification. Vehicle identification number. You may be asked to provide the vehicle identification number when communicating with Fisker. The VIN can be found in the following locations. Top of dashboard. The VIN is visible through the lowest part of the left-hand side of the windshield. Chassis. The VIN is stamped into the chassis beneath the front passenger seat. Lift the flap in the carpet to view. On the central touchscreen, select Settings, Vehicle and Service to view the VIN. The VIN is also shown on the vehicle certification label and the tire and loading information label. Vehicle certification label. The vehicle certification label is located on the left B pillar, visible when the driver's door is open. The vehicle certification label states the following important information. Manufacturer of the vehicle, gross vehicle weight rating, the GVWR is the maximum allowable weight of the fully loaded vehicle. This includes all options, equipment, passengers, and cargo. Gross axle weight rating, the GAWR is the maximum allowable weight that a single axle, front or rear, can carry. And the VIN, or vehicle identification number. Warning, do not exceed the GVWR or the GAWR specified on the vehicle certification label. Exceeding the certification label vehicle weight limits can adversely affect the performance and handling of your vehicle. Overloading may also cause permanent damage to components, which could result in a loss of control of your vehicle, serious personal injury, or death. Do not use replacement tires with lower load carrying capacities than the original tires because they may lower your vehicle's GVWR and GAWR limitations. Replacement tires with a higher limit than the original tires do not increase the GVWR and GAWR limitations. Vehicle dimensions and weights. Exterior dimensions. Overall length. License plate included 188 inches or 4,774 millimeters. Overall width. Mirrors included 84 inches or 2,122 millimeters. Overall height. Front wheel drive, 64 inches or 1,631 millimeters. Overall height, all wheel drive, 64 inches or 1,629 millimeters. Overall height, lift gate open, front wheel drive, 80 inches or 2,030 millimeters. Overall height, lift gate open, all wheel drive, 80 inches or 2,027 millimeters. Overall height, hood open, 68 inches, 1,714 millimeters. Wheelbase, 115 inches or 2,921 millimeters. Front overhang, 36 inches or 911 millimeters. Rear overhang, 37 inches or 942 millimeters. Approach angle, front wheel drive, 15.8 degrees. Approach angle, all wheel drive, 15.7 degrees. Departure angle, 
angle front wheel drive, 15.6 degrees, departure angle all wheel drive, 16 degrees, ground clearance front wheel drive, 5 inches or 135 millimeters, ground clearance all wheel drive, 5 inches or 140 millimeters, vehicle weights, front wheel drive, gross vehicle weight rating or GVWR, 6,096 pounds or 2,765 kilograms, gross axle weight rating, Front, 3,020 pounds or 1,370 kilograms. Gross axle weight rating. Rear, 3,683 pounds or 1,671 kilograms. Trailer towing. Braked trailer up to 2,405 pounds or 1,091 kilograms. Non-braked trailer up to 1,653 pounds or 750 kilograms. Draw bar load up to 240 pounds or 109 kilograms. All-wheel drive. Gross vehicle weight rating, 6,603 pounds or 2,995 kilograms. Gross axle weight rating, front, 3,020 pounds or 1,370 kilograms. Gross axle weight rating, rear, 3,683 pounds or 1,671 kilograms. Trailer towing, braked trailer up to 4,012 pounds or 1,820 kilograms. Non-braked trailer up to 1,653 pounds or 750 kilograms. Draw bar load up to 401 pounds or 182 kilograms. On to wheels and tires. Wheel and tire specifications. 20 inch aero stealth wheel, which is standard equipment. 20 by 7.5 J. Offset 40 millimeter plus or minus 0 0.5. 22 inch slip stream. Optional equipment. 22 by 8.5 J. 40 millimeter plus or minus 0 0.5. 22 inch air glider. Also optional equipment. 22 by 8 0.5 J, 40 millimeter, plus or minus 0.5. 22 inch vortex, optional equipment, 22 by 8.5 J, 40 millimeter, plus or minus 0.5. Lug nut torque, 180 newton meters. Lug nut socket size, 19 millimeter. Tire specifications, the Alenza Sport tire is all season and standard equipment. The size is 255, 50 R20 with a 109 V speed rating and an XL load index. The Alenza Sport all season optional size is a 255 45 R22 with a 107 W speed rating and an XL load index. The Potenza Sport EU only is a summer tire and is standard with 255 50 R20, a 109 V speed rating and an XL load index. The optional Potenza Sport summer tire is a 255 45 R22 with a 107 W speed rating and an XL load index. The studless winter tire Blizzak LM005 is standard size 255 50 R20 with a 109 V speed rating and an XL load index and the Blizzak DM V04 studless is the optional winter tire with a 255 50 R20 109 V speed rating and XL load index. Recommend cold inflation pressures. Tire pressures may vary depending on the type of tires fitted to your vehicle. Refer to the tire pressures printed on the tire and loading information label. This label is located on the left door pillar and is visible when the front door is open. On to vehicle subsystems. Steering, type, rack and pinion with electronic power steering and speed dependent steering assist. 2.5 turns, lock to lock, 11.86 meters, turning circle, curb to curb. Brakes. The brake Brakes are hydraulically assisted disc brakes with regenerative braking function. The calipers in the front are a floating caliper with two pistons. In the rear, a floating caliper with one piston. Rotor diameter in the front is 350 millimeters. Rotor diameter in the rear is 360 millimeters. The front rotor thickness when new, 32 millimeters. The service limit, 30 millimeters. Rear rotor thickness when new, 26 millimeters. Service limit, 24 millimeters. Front brake pad thickness, 18.2 millimeters when new with a 9.5 millimeter service limit and rear brake pad thickness is 16.1 millimeters with a 9.25 millimeter service limit. Front suspension, McPherson suspension, alignment, front wheel drive, camber, negative 33 degrees, plus or minus 0.5, non-adjustable caster, 6.39 degrees, plus or minus 0.25, non-adjustable toe, 0.16 degrees, plus or minus one-tenth of a degree per corner. All-wheel drive, camber, negative 33 degrees, plus or minus 0.5 degrees, non-adjustable toe, 0.16 degrees, plus or minus 0.1 degrees per corner. Curb weight is the weight of the vehicle with correct fluid levels and tire pressures, no occupants, and no cargo. Rear suspension is a multi-link 
Front wheel drive, camber is negative 1.08 degrees plus or minus 0.5 degrees. Non-adjustable casters, 6.39 degrees plus or minus 0.25 degrees. Non-adjustable toe, 0.14 degrees plus or minus 0.1 degrees per corner. All wheel drive, camber, negative 1.08 degrees plus or minus 0.5 degrees. Non-adjustable toe, 0.14 degrees, plus or minus 0.1 degrees per corner. The curb weight is the weight of the vehicle with correct fluid levels and tire pressures, no occupants and no cargo. Motors, the layout is offset. The gear ratio is 11.349. Max input speed, 16,342 RPM. Max output speed, 1,440 RPM. Max output torque, normal. 3,972 nanometers boost, 4,297 nanometers. There's no decoupling or clutch integration on the front drive unit, and there's an output shaft level decoupling or clutch integration on the rear electric drive unit for all-wheel drive models. Park lock integration. The front electric drive unit has a rotor shaft level park lock integration. There is no park lock integration on the rear electric drive unit. Bearing concept. On the front unit, ball bearings, cylindrical roller bearing, and tapered roller bearings. On the rear, ball bearings, cylindrical roller bearing, tapered roller bearings, and needle bearing. Differential, 100 millimeters on the front, 90 millimeters on the rear. Cooling and lubrication. Oil lubrication without oil pump. Dry design, water cooled on the front. Oil lubrication without oil pump. Dry design, water cooled. Different main rotational direction on the rear. The rotation direction on the front drive unit is counterclockwise. The rotation direction on the rear drive unit is clockwise. The 12 volt battery, 50 amp hours with 20 hour rated capacity. Voltage and polarity is 12 volt negative ground. The weight is 15.5 kilos. The dimensions are 207 millimeters in length, 175 millimeters in width, and 190 millimeters in height. The high voltage battery, the touring range high voltage battery is lithium iron phosphate with 386.4 volt nominal voltage at one third C. Dimensions are 2,110 millimeters plus or minus 1.5 in length, 1,530 millimeters plus or minus 1.5 in width, 162.2 millimeters plus or minus 0.5 in height. The maximum operating voltage range is 300 to 438 volts. The weight is 1,153 pounds or 523 kilos. The hyper range high voltage battery is a nickel manganese cobalt oxide chemistry with 379.4 volts nominal voltage at one third C. 2,110 millimeters plus or minus 1.5 in length, 1,530 millimeters plus or minus 1.5 in width, 162.2 millimeters plus or minus 0.5 in height. Maximum operating voltage range of 255 to 443.7 volts and a weight of 1,296 pounds or 588 kilograms. On to roadside assistance and emergency information. E-Call Europe. Your vehicle is equipped with E-Call, an emergency call system that can be activated manually or automatically in emergency situations to connect you with emergency responders. If the airbag control module detects that an airbag has deployed, an e-call will be initiated. E-call will automatically attempt to connect to the nearest public safety answering point. Once a connection is established, you will be placed on a call with a PSAP operator who will receive a data report from the vehicle. This data can include vehicle identification number, time stamp of the incident, GPS location and direction of travel, and number of passengers. The PSAP operator will route your vehicle incident information and voice call to the appropriate emergency services. Even if the peripherals used to make the call, microphone, speakers, are damaged, In a collision, emergency services will still be contacted even if you cannot communicate with PSAP operators. When an e-call is in progress, all other audio sources are muted automatically. Once the e-call ends, you must manually unmute these items. Using e-call, to manually activate e-call, press the SOS button located on the overhead console. The button illuminates in red. The status displays on the central touchscreen. The SOS button is intended only for use in an emergency situation, such as a collision, illness, or a threat to the safety of the vehicle and its passengers. Do not use the SOS button for non-emergency situations, such as problems with the vehicle. Canceling e-call. Once the e-call 
system is connected to a PSAP operator, only the operator can end the eCall. eCall North America. eCall is not available in North America at the moment. If the button on the overhead console is pressed, a notification displays on the central touchscreen. Please use a connected phone to contact emergency services. Vehicle location. When contacting emergency services, it is beneficial to be able to provide the exact location of the vehicle. Under normal driving conditions, the vehicle's position can be determined using the navigation system to retrieve its GPS location coordinates. When speaking to emergency services, inform the operator if you know the vehicle's direction of travel, as this can assist them in getting to you as soon as possible. Roadside assistance. Fisker Roadside Assistance. Fisker provides emergency roadside assistance for six years or 60,000 miles, whichever occurs first. For details, please consult the Fisker Roadside Assistance policy at fiskerinc.com slash legal collections. Contacting Roadside Assistance. Fisker is committed to providing excellent service. Our roadside assistance program is available to you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. To contact roadside assistance, use the Fisker app. You will be asked to provide the following information. Vehicle identification number, license plate number, disablement reason, and your location. The Fisker roadside assistance program will always ensure that your Fisker vehicle is transported appropriately using a flatbed trailer, wheel lift, or transporter. Please provide the vehicle transporter with instructions on how to transport the vehicle. Disclaimers. Roadside assistance in Europe is limited to the following countries. And Andorra, Austria, Belgium, Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark, France, Germany, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Monaco, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. Instructions for transporters. Transporting the vehicle. Caution. Towing the vehicle with the wheels on the ground or on a suspended lift for a distance greater than 10 miles or 16 kilometers may cause serious damage to the vehicle and can generate high voltages in the vehicle's electrical components. The only methods approved by Fisker for recovering or transporting the vehicle are as follows. Long range, flatbed trailer or transporter. The flatbed trailer or transporter must have an approved load rating greater than the actual weight of your vehicle, including aftermarket accessories and cargo. Short range, a wheel lift truck may be used by having the front axle suspended and the rear axle on wheeled dollies. 10 mile or 16 kilometer radius. Damage caused by any other recovery method is not covered by the vehicle warranty. Preparing the vehicle for transportation. In the unlikely situation in which the vehicle's electrical systems are not functioning and the parking brake cannot be disengaged, wheeled dollies or skid pads must be used under the rear wheels to prevent damage to the vehicle. For flatbed transporters, skates or dollies are required on all four wheels. For front end suspension lift, Dollies are required on both rear wheels. Using skates, dollies, or wheel lifts. If you are unable to shift the gear into neutral, the wheels must be lifted onto skates, dollies, or a transporter wheel lift. Chalk the wheels to prevent the vehicle from rolling. Attach the vehicle to the transporter using the recovery eye or nylon straps. Lift the wheels using skates, dollies, or wheel lifts. For flatbed transporters, skates or dollies are required on all four wheels. For a front end suspended lift, dollies are required on both rear wheels. With the wheels off the ground, the vehicle can be positioned for loading onto the transporter. Pulling the vehicle onto a trailer or a transporter. Caution: The recovery eye should only be used for pulling the vehicle onto a flatbed trailer when it is on a level surface. Using the recovery eye for any other purpose may cause significant damage to the vehicle. Under no circumstances should the vehicle be towed using the vehicle recovery eye. Do not use the recovery eye to pull the vehicle out of a ditch or if the vehicle is in an angle. Failure to install the recovery eye correctly could result in the recovery eye pulling out of the mount on the vehicle, causing significant damage. Your vehicle is supplied with a vehicle recovery eye located in the underfloor trunk box. The recovery eye can be installed to either the front or the rear of the vehicle. To install the recovery eye, location of front attachment point, front attachment point, location of rear attachment point, rear attachment point. Release the cover from either the attachment point in the front grille or the rear bumper. Position the recovery eye through the bumper and rotate it clockwise into the attachment point on the body until it is fully seated. Attach the winch cable to the recovery eye. Pull the vehicle slowly onto the trailer or transporter. After using the recovery eye, remember to store it back in the trunk and to install the cover on the attachment point. Winching a vehicle with power. If the vehicle has power and the gear can be set to N, neutral, 
For the wheels to roll freely, use the toe eye to winch onto the flatbed, winching a vehicle with no power. If the vehicle has no power and the electronic parking brake is engaged, use skid pads or skates on all four wheels and nylon straps on the lower control arms. Recovering the vehicle from a ditch. Caution, never use the recovery eye to pull the vehicle out of a ditch. Doing so can significantly damage the vehicle. When recovering the vehicle from a ditch, use nylon straps attached to either the front or rear lower control arms. Securing the vehicle for transportation. When the vehicle is in position on the transporter or trailer, use chocks and tie-down straps to secure the wheels. The rear of the vehicle should be secured using tie-down straps around the lower control arms. To avoid damage, ensure that metal parts on tie-down straps do not contact the vehicle's painted surfaces or the face of any wheels. If wheel covers are installed, they must be removed before using wheel straps. Do not place straps over or through the vehicle's body panels. Caution: Attaching tie-down straps should only be used on the lower control arms in a towing scenario. Disabling the power system. Safety precautions. Warning, in the event of a fire, immediately contact local fire emergency services. In the event of a fire when the vehicle is connected to a charging station, treat it as an energized electrical fire until power to the charging station is confirmed as shut down. Warning, always assume that all high voltage components are energized. Cutting, crushing, or touching high voltage components can result in serious injury or death. High voltage cables and components may remain energized for up to two minutes after disabling. High voltage batteries can self-ignite even after extinguishing the initial fire. Airbags and SRS may remain powered up for two minutes after disabling. This vehicle does not have an internal combustion engine. Lack of engine noise does not mean the vehicle is off. Silent movement capability exists until the vehicle is fully shut down. Emergency responder cut loop. Warning, always double cut and remove a section from the emergency responder cut loop cable to prevent the ends of the cable from accidentally reconnecting. Caution, take care when loading or unloading components into the luggage compartment not to catch or damage the emergency responder cut loop. If the cable shows a sign of damage, please contact Fisker via the Fisker app. The emergency responder cut loop is located in the luggage compartment of the trunk near the accessory power socket. The emergency responder cut loop can be identified by a yellow label wrapped around it. Double cutting the emergency responder cut loop shuts down both the high voltage and the 12 volt battery systems. The emergency responder cut loop is a low voltage 12 volt cable. Disabling the vehicle's power for service. It is recommended that service and repair of your vehicle is entrusted to Fisker. However, if your vehicle is being worked on at an independent repair center, please make them aware of the following information. A service power disconnect is provided under the hood for when service and repair of the vehicle components is required. The service power disconnect disables both 12 volt and high voltage power to the vehicle systems. Open the hood. Locate the service power disconnect connector near the 12 volt battery. Press the red tab on the connector and slide the inner black part of the connector out of the housing. The inner part of the connector does not fully remove from the outer housing. Insert a padlock through the hole in the inner part of the connector to lock out the system while the vehicle is being worked on. On to vehicle fire. Firefighting. Warning, when fire is involved, the entire vehicle should be considered as energized. Always wear full personal protective equipment, including a self-contained breathing apparatus. If the battery catches fire, is exposed to high heat, or is generating heat or gases, use large amounts of water to cool it. It can take copious amounts of water applied directly to the battery to fully extinguish and cool down a battery fire. Always establish or request an additional water supply. If water is not immediately available, use dry chemicals, CO2, foam, or another typical fire extinguishing agent to fight the fire until water is available. Small fires that do not involve the high voltage battery can be extinguished using typical vehicle firefighting procedures. A burning or heated battery releases toxic vapors. Responders should always protect themselves with full PPE. 
including a self-contained breathing apparatus, and take appropriate measures to protect civilians downwind from the incident. Use fog streams or positive pressure ventilation fans to direct smoke and vapors. After knockdown, ensure any fires have been adequately knocked down before entering a hot zone. Heat and flames can compromise airbag inflators, stored gas inflation cylinders, gas struts, and other components which can result in an unexpected explosion. During vehicle inspections, always use insulated tools and do not make contact with any high voltage components. Use a thermal imaging camera to measure the temperature of a high voltage battery and monitor heating or cooling trends. Before releasing the vehicle to second responders, such as law enforcement or vehicle transporters, or otherwise leaving the incident, the battery must be completely cooled with no fire, smoke, or heating present for at least one hour. Always notify second responders of the risk of battery reignition. On to consumer information. Limited warranty information. Warrantor. The warrantor for this new vehicle limited warranty in the United States is Fisker Group Incorporated. 1888 Rosecrans Avenue, Manhattan Beach, California, 90266. The warrantor for this new vehicle limited warranty in Canada is Fisker Canada LTD. 1000 Rue de la Gouchetière, O number 2100. Montreal, QC H3B 4W5. For more information, see the new vehicle limited warranty document on the Fisker website at fiskerinc.com slash legal collections. Contacting Fisker. Please include the following information when contacting Fisker's customer assistance team as this information is important to answering your questions effectively and efficiently to resolve your concerns. Owner's name and address, owner's telephone number, owner's preferred email address, vehicle identification number, date of purchase, and current vehicle mileage or kilometers. The Fisker customer assistance team can be contacted by email at support at FiskerInc.com. Updates and additional information about your vehicle can be found in the Fisker mobile app. Reporting safety defects, United States. If you believe that your vehicle has a defect which could cause a collision or cause injury or death, you should immediately inform the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, in addition to notifying Fisker. If NHTSA receives similar complaints, it may open an investigation, and if it finds a safety defect exists, in a group of vehicles, it may order a recall and remedy campaign. However, NHTSA cannot become involved in individual problems between you, an authorized repair facility, or Fisker. To contact NHTSA, you may call the vehicle safety hotline toll-free or go to www.safecar.gov or write to Administrator, National Highway Traffic Safety, 1200 New Jersey Avenue Southeast, Washington, D.C., 20590. You can also obtain other information about motor vehicle safety from safecar.gov. Canada, if you believe your vehicle has a defect which could cause a collision or cause injury or death, you should immediately inform Transport Canada in addition to notifying Fisker. To contact Transport Canada, call their toll-free number or write to Transport Canada, Road Safety Branch, 80 Rue Noel, Gatineau, Quebec, J8Z0A1. United Kingdom, Europe, and Global Markets. If you believe your vehicle has a defect which could cause a collision or could cause injury or death, you should immediately inform Fisker. Disclaimers. California Prop 65. Operating, servicing, and maintaining a passenger vehicle or off-highway motor vehicle can expose you to chemicals including engine exhaust, carbon monoxide, phthalates, and lead, which are known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. To minimize exposure, avoid breathing exhaust. Do not idle the engine except as necessary. Service your vehicle in a well-ventilated area and wear gloves or wash your hands frequently when servicing your vehicle. For more information, go to p65warnings.ca.gov slash passenger dash vehicle. California Perchlorate Advisory. Warning. Certain components of this vehicle, such as lithium batteries, may contain perchlorate material. Special handling may apply for service or end-of-life disposal. See dtsc.ca.gov. Event Data Recorders. Your vehicle is equipped with an event data recorder. The main purpose of an EDR is to record, in certain collision or near-collision situations, such as an airbag deployment or hitting a road obstacle, data 
that can assist in understanding how a vehicle's systems performed. The EDR is designed to record data related to vehicle dynamics and safety systems for a short period of time, typically 30 seconds or less. The EDR in this vehicle is designed to record such data as how various systems in your vehicle were operating, whether or not the driver and passenger safety belts were buckled or fastened, how far, if at all, the driver was depressing the accelerator or brake pedal, and how fast the vehicle was traveling. These data can help provide a better understanding of the circumstances in which crashes and injuries occur. EDR data are recorded by your vehicle only if a non-trivial collision situation occurs. No data are recorded by the EDR under normal driving conditions and no personal data, example, name, gender, age, and collision location are recorded. However, other parties, such as law enforcement, could combine the EDR data with the type of personally identifying data routinely acquired during a collision investigation. To read data Data recorded by an EDR, special equipment is required and access to the vehicle or the EDR is needed. In addition to the vehicle manufacturer, other parties, such as law enforcement that have special equipment, can read the information if they have access to the vehicle or the EDR. The data belongs to the vehicle owner and may not be accessed by anyone else except as legally required or with the permission of the vehicle owner. Data and privacy. Your Fisker Ocean is an advanced connected vehicle with features designed to get the most out of the Fisker Ocean user experience. Your Fisker Ocean collects data related to vehicle features, trouble codes, charging events, VIN, acceleration, braking, direction, location, and other related information about your vehicle. Vehicle and personal data are collected, stored, analyzed, and may be shared with third parties to provide Fisker connected car services. This data may also be subject to your agreement with the third parties providing these services. Fisker may also utilize and share data collected from your vehicle and your personal data to analyze vehicle condition and use in the event of a non-trivial accident. Vehicle data may be transferred to Fisker and its service partners for the purpose of improving, diagnosing, and servicing Fisker vehicles, including providing information for preventative maintenance and over-the-air updates that may improve the functionality of Fisker vehicles or prevent issues before they occur. To learn more about how Fisker collects and processes data and personal information from your connected vehicle, please read our Connected Vehicle Privacy Policy, accessible at fiskerinc.com slash legal slash privacy policy. You may change your consent to certain information from your vehicle that Fisker collects, stores, and uses at any time through the central touchscreen by selecting the settings wheel profile. Please be aware that changing your consent to use of this data may affect your use and enjoyment of your vehicle, such as mapping and charging location services and providing preventative maintenance. FCC and ISED compliance. The ICC controller is Harman X297. The broadcast amplifier FM2 is Continental 1F59816V2C1. The broadcast amplifier FM1 DAB is Continental of the same model number. The GNSS antenna is also Continental 1F598. 16V1C1. The phone wireless charger is Aptiv 2AT JC FM29000. The mid range radar is Magna Electronics MRR ICONV01. The T box is Lear. Fisker 4G TCU. The devices listed above comply with Part 15 of the FCC rules. Operation is subject to the following two conditions. This device may not cause harmful interference and this device must accept any interference received including interference that may cause undesired operation. Changes or modifications not expressly approved by the party responsible for compliance could void the user's authority to operate the equipment. Radio frequency information. The devices listed in this section have been tested and found to comply with the limits for a Class B digital device pursuant to Part 15 of the FCC rules. These limits are designed to provide reasonable protection against harmful interference in a residential installation. This equipment generates, uses, and can radiate radio frequency energy and, if not installed and used in accordance with the instructions, may cause harmful interference to radio communications. However, there is no guarantee that interference will not occur in a particular installation. If this equipment does cause harmful interference to radio or television reception, which can be determined by turning the equipment off or on, the user is encouraged 
to try to correct the interference by one or more of the following measures. Reorient or relocate the receiving antenna. Increase the separation between the equipment and receiver. Connect the equipment into an outlet on a circuit different from that which the receiver is connected. Or consult the dealer or an experienced radio TV technician for help. Canada. The devices listed in this section contain license-exempt transmitter, receiver, or transmitters and receivers that comply with Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada's license-exempt RSS. Operation is subject to the following two conditions. This device may not cause interference. This device must accept any interference, including interference that may cause undesired operation of the device. On to vehicle recycling. High voltage battery recycling process. Warning, attempting to disconnect or remove the battery pack without the proper training, tools, and equipment is highly dangerous and could result in serious injury or death. Your vehicle is equipped with a liquid-cooled lithium-ion high-voltage battery pack. A battery pack must be properly recycled when it has been damaged or has reached the end of its useful service life. If the vehicle can no longer hold a charge or power on, or in the case of a collision or submersion, contact Fisker via the Fisker app immediately. Immediately. Have the battery pack removed from the vehicle by Fisker or a Fisker authorized technician as soon as possible. Do not attempt to disconnect or remove the battery pack yourself. Fisker service centers will manage the damaged or depleted battery pack and, in accordance with Fisker's requirements, contact a qualified recycling company for recycling and disposal. Environmental. Do not dispose of the battery pack yourself, as arbitrary disposal can cause pollution and harm the environment. Be sure to follow the information and requirements below. Personnel. The high-voltage battery removal operation must be performed by a Fisker service center technician or a Fisker authorized professional. Transportation. The battery pack is classified as a hazardous material under Class 9 dangerous goods. These must be labeled, documented, and transported by licensed vehicles that meet all requirements for transporting Class 9 dangerous goods. Storage. The removed battery pack should be stored in an environment that is protected from extreme temperatures and high humidity. Do not expose the removed battery pack to flammable materials, heat sources, water sources, or other hazards. For questions or further details on the recycling and disposal of a battery pack, please contact Fisker via the Fisker app. Driver Monitoring System Warning! Do not rely upon the driver monitoring system to warn you when you are not focusing upon the road or driving erratically. Drive cautiously to a safe area and park when you feel unable to focus on driving. The driver monitoring system evaluates the driver's state of alertness using the interior camera and alerts you audibly and or visually on the driver display when fatigue or distraction is detected. While this feature is always active, alerts can be disabled via the central touchscreen. Select Settings, Safety, Driver Attention Monitoring Alerts on the central touchscreen, then press to turn alerts on or off. Opening doors from the inside. Pull the interior handle to open a door. If a door is locked, pull the handle to unlock it. Pull a second time to open the door. Use the child safety locks to prevent occupants from using the interior handles to open the rear doors. All electrical unlocking and opening by the interior door handles is disabled when the vehicle is in motion. Door ajar warning. When any door or the lift gate is open, the red door ajar warning indicator or telltale illuminates on the driver display. Locking and unlocking from inside the vehicle. The doors and lift gate can be locked and unlocked from inside the vehicle using the master lock buttons on the front door switch panel. To lock or unlock all the doors, press the lock symbol on the switch to lock all doors, including the lift gate. Press the open lock symbol on the switch to unlock all doors, including the lift gate. The switch illuminates to indicate that the doors are locked. Child safety locks. Warning. For their safety, the child safety locks should be activated whenever children are seated in the rear seats. There is a risk of death or serious injury if a child operates the rear doors. Never leave children unsupervised in a vehicle. Your vehicle is equipped with child safety locks on both rear doors. This system prevents occupants from opening the rear doors using the interior door handles. The exterior door handles will still operate according to the current lock status of the vehicle. To engage or disengage this feature, open a rear door and manually move the child safety lock to the locked or unlocked position. Do the same for the other door. Automatic locking and unlocking. When the speed of the vehicle reaches 9 miles per hour or 15 kilometers per hour, all doors automatically lock. 
if an event causes the airbags to deploy. All doors automatically unlock but remain latched, opening interior doors with no power. If the vehicle loses power, every door can still be opened from the interior using two pulls on an interior door handle. If the child locks are engaged in the rear doors, they cannot be opened from the interior. If the vehicle loses power and the doors are locked, they cannot be unlocked or opened from the exterior until the vehicle receives power. You may contact Fisker via the Fisker app for assistance. Contact roadside assistance if you need to have the vehicle transported to a charging location. ADAS limitations. Warning, this manual does not include all of the situations that might interfere with the proper operation of ADAS components. Never rely on these components to keep you or your occupants safe. It is the driver's responsibility to remain alert and drive safely and responsibly at all times. Fisker strongly recommends always having your vehicle serviced by Fisker to ensure all of the vehicle's ADAS components are handled properly. Failure to do so can cause one or more ADAS features to malfunction. Caution! If a fault occurs with any of the ADAS features, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. There are numerous factors that can impact the performance of the ADAS components, causing them to be unable to function as intended. These factors include, but are not limited to, poor sensor visibility due to weather conditions, example heavy rain, snow, or fog, bright ambient light, example oncoming headlights or direct sunlight, Poor ambient light, example, at night or in poorly lit tunnels. If the sensors or cameras become dirty, foggy, damaged, or otherwise obscured, obstruction caused by applying excessive paint or adhesive products, example, wraps, stickers, or rubber coatings onto the vehicle, narrow or winding roads, a damaged or misaligned bumper, interference from other equipment that generates ultrasonic waves, or extremely hot or cold temperatures. Sensor and camera blockage. Caution. If blockage occurs with an ADAS component, attempt to clear the blockage. Remove any objects that may be obstructing the component, or clean off any debris by following the cleaning instructions in this manual. If the warning message persists, contact Fisker via the Fisker app. When the display detects that a sensor or camera is blocked, a notification displays on the driver display. And that's the owner's manual. If you've made it to here, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to know what I found interesting about the owner's manual, that video is here. Subscribe for more. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.